chat i look like trash i've even got you're hearing my white noise machine i had kind of a late night last night exploring a very deep rabbit hole on this guy on this guy destiny actually no it wasn't even on destiny it was destiny's friend fresh of oh, fresh and fit if you missed it um it's still up it's still a vod late night stream but yeah i just feel like i don't know i wanted to present you with an amazing like peppy sylvia style chart like a uh you know like the the reference from the um it's always sunny and um all i have is like the disheveled hair i don't even have the cigarette What I'm talking about, Chad, is a kind of a unified tipster theory, right? Just like tipster is the Nicola Stiorio for the gays, just like Nicola Stiorio is the tipster for the straights. Just like Chad Logic is the tipster for the for the anti-SJWs, 
Like everyone and everything has a tipster. It's tipster tivity. It's tipster cube, if you will, right? But yeah, I am. I am just tired. And I hope I don't look too tired. But if I do, that definitely fits the, the meme. So yeah, we're going to be talking about um, so many different things today. We're going to cover some um, Alec Gunter stuff that... This stuff has exploded, right? The thing is, I was aware of, of Alec Gunter before like anyone else was. I think I saw a video of Alec Gunter's that I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, like your intro, like your style, right? And then, and then, and then I just started seeing stuff that was ridiculous. Like, oh man, friends? You think Friends is a dog whistle? Oh, that's that's ridiculous. You think everything's a dog. And it was like, no, you're, you're like literally wrong. And from there, it just got worse and worse. Um, but yeah, we've got now a debate. That, like, look at this, right? Look at this. What does this tell you? What does this look like? Because to me, it looks like a trap, right? This is Jubilee. They put together these panels. Like, and some people think they're just, they're just like, you know, shit storms on purpose, right? That it's the a whole idea. It's just, um, create a lot of drama, create a lot of noise, create something that is, you know, a train wreck. But I feel like there's a gen an agenda. I feel like there's a certain like thumb on the scale. I feel like, uh, you know, despite the fact that you get the feeling from, um, Jubilee that they don't really have a ideology they're not about ideologies they're about promoting good conversations between people of different political views if you watch these you've known that there are very few good uh conversations they're very there's very little middle ground that's what the show is called middle ground right and you know it's kind of set up right when you when you're when your premise is black conservatives versus white liberals right um yeah It's going to be rough. Last night's stream. Yeah. The one thing I like about the late night streams is they're kind of vibe, right? They're, they're kind of vibe. I don't know. Like, And everything else is morning to me. I don't know. I just keep on. I keep on adjusting to like stay up later and later and wake up later and later. And it just makes my morning stream suck. And it makes my night streams kind of cool. Oh wait, sorry, I gotta make this work. Oh my god, everything's giving me problems today. Let me show you what I'm looking at. Properties and refresh. There we go. I'm looking at uh Schmegley's uh chat. Been a little down more than usual lately, so I haven't been in chats as much, but last night's stream did something for me. Nice, nice. That's what I'm talking about, right? It's like uh it's kind of uh kind of vibe. Uh, Crafty says last night's stream was interesting and it's funny to see Destiny insert himself and be a train wreck everywhere he goes. It really is. It really is. In some ways, chat, Depst Destiny himself, I almost said Dipstiny. Dipster. Dip Tipstiny. Tipstiny. Everybody's a tipster and they don't even realize it. They don't even realize it, right? Everyone is a tipster to someone, including me. Wait, what am I the tipster to, though? What would I be the tipster to? I think I had it earlier. I, I had a pretty strong concept of like, yeah, yeah, even I could be a tipster to someone or something. Okay, I absolutely can't do this without music. At least to start the show. I'm just tired. Do I look tired? Incre impressively horrible and rage inducing. Those are his best features. Bad takes, Denny. Yes, bad takes, Denny. Anna Kasparina was home with her husband on the night of January 7th of 1969, was not near any of the places where the Zodiac murders took place. Okay, your honor. 
And furthermore, those were short stack goblins. Olivia, what are fast church headphones? I don't I guess I don't know what that means. Wait, dogs can tell if food is poisoned? Is this real? I'd be scared to test it out. I find it so hilarious that people were calling out uh, Norm for yelling at Destiny when he's obviously baiting people into those reactions. And Daisy shut him down so hard every time. Daisy is like his kryptonite. Yeah, like this is the wild thing, right? I've seen this go down so many times and it usually ends in the same result. The, usually the result is that, you know, some whoever's come out with an accusation gets smeared. Whoever's got the accusations against them, if there is one little thing wrong, with the like the, the you know with the accusations then the whole thing is thrown out and the the guilt reverses and instead it's like oh my god you fucking bitch you were trying to ruin this guy's life when in actuality it's like no the dude is scummy the dude is scummy like regardless the dude the dude is very scummy but you know it's a question of how scummy <laughs> and and that's why i always you know kind of like with the chud logic thing like i, I just i face palmed when i saw that happening right because i could tell that, yeah, like, there, there's something there, you know, and the something there is that Chud's, Chud was using his uh, Discord as a, um, as a Tinder, as a Tinder app, like, right? The dude was literally, like, scouring his Discord for Discord uh, kittens and, um, you know, didn't really... <sighs> Instead, it got, it turned into, like, he's a PDF, and that was a bridge too far, and that was something that couldn't be proven, and... Because that was the allegations and the people that were making the allegations just did not have the wherewithal to be able to keep what they're saying to what is provable. Like it became it became essentially a vaccine for Chad, not just like a, a like like a um, not just not just like out of this like scandal. It's just like now like he, the dude is Teflon. The dude is Teflon because people uh, made overwrought accusations against him. And though there's another issue. There's another situation where Destiny stepped in. And like, you can see where his empathy goes every single time, every single time Destiny's empathy is towards the, uh, not towards the victim. <laughs> but yeah, it's not just Destiny, it's Switch Bowl in general, and it's a sad story. This was different though, this was different. Daisy did not get destroyed, Daisy did not wither, um, Daisy, uh, persevered. No wonder he lost it on her the moment she was off the stream. Yeah, that was funny. Mr. Spermacelli. Mr. Conalinguetti. Mr. Tepsteretti. The straights aren't real and neither is Nicholas Diorio. Nicholas Diorio is a psyop, okay? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm going with. You wake up tired every single day. That's too bad. Yeah, me too. Last night's stream was so amazing, though. Excited for today's as I watched TYT almost religiously during the pandemic. Actively uh, watching their hard turn right. That's that's really frustrating. Yeah, I think a lot of people are frustrated. What's even more frustrating, though, is to see how many people that are fans of TYT are like, no, no, that's co totally cool. If anyone wants to, like, attack trans people instead of defending trans people, like, I'm here for Anna. I I'm not here for the progressives. I'm not here for any sort of like overriding like you know meaning that they were uh claiming like right the home of the progressives I'm, I'm literally here for anna and jink they are my mommy and they are my daddy and whatever they say is right and if they tell me that ben shapipo is actually a good dude and i should listen to what he has to say then i will listen to what he has to say like they're um uh, all trying to talk about something genuinely affecting their lives. And Destiny is talking about some fantasy. Exactly, Crotchy, you are you got on it. Destiny is talking about some fantasy in his head about what he imagines her life is really like. Yeah, and you see where it comes from. It, it's lit I mean, like people joke around about like divorce Destiny, but that I mean like that's literally where it is, right? It's it's like this 
abiding um, hatred and distrust of women. Right? So people are asking if Destiny was red pill last night. I don't think so. I think there's a distinction between what he's doing and, um, you know, what Fresh and Fit do. But, like, I like to say that he gargles the red pill, right? He doesn't swallow it. But it definitely touches his uvula. It, it definitely touches his... It tickles his uvula. That I can guarantee you. How are we doing on uh, the quality of the stream? I gotta know. Because I'm seeing some sort of worrying numbers as far as frame rates go. <laughs> Last night's stream was the beginning of NCC Investigation Series Episode 1. The tipster tales wait last night's stream no we were talking about um brush and fit last night actually and destiny and so many other things you're not bad when it comes to humor it's just hard to keep the stream straight right um the fast uh charging right wait uh with tyt fast charging headphones wait why did i read those as, as church headphones somehow i like totally missed that I, I thought I saw the word church. Maybe I'm just tired and I'm like missing words, missing meaning. Uh, no matter the situation, Destiny will uh, find a way to be wrong. I mean, with with, you know, a few exceptions, like I feel like I've seen a few thick, uh, clips of him talking to Jordan Peterson where, you know, jo Jordan Peterson, like he stakes out his claim on the wrong. And he's not giving any ground. He won't let Destiny like sneak around him and uh, and, and flank him on the right. That, that's not that's not going to happen with Peterson, right? He's too intent on his milking machines. But yeah, like the like literally, Destiny is like calling, um, you know, Daisy like the the Chinese milking machine, the CCP milking machine, right? Like it's just like it was so messed up. It was so messed up in so many ways. So dehumanizing. And just so unnecessary, right? And like it, it, it doesn't even work for what it's supposed to be. Like he's trying to convince people, like Destiny, the way that Chun and Destiny like work is they want to come into a situation and um, be seen as the fair, unbiased arbiter, and, and be seen as like you know, well, I'm not about this idea. I'm not going to decide this on ideology. I'm going to decide this on like what's fair and what's true. And and that's how their that's how their communities think of them. In reality, these. Dudes could not be more biased, you know, they've got huge chips on their shoulders when it comes to women, when it comes to black people, when it comes to trans people in, in Chud Logic's um, case, because, yeah, the people leading the charge about, like, Chud's Discord logs, you know, have happened to have a few trans people in them, and now he just hates all trans people, it's weird. But yeah, he, Chud is the tipster of anti-SJWs. Chud is the tipster of, of Twitch polls. Essentially, essentially, what, let, let's get down to what do I mean, right? Because this is good to become like slivy toves and mome rats if I don't define my terminology. What is a tipster? Who is a tipster? Why is a tipster? Those are the questions that we're going to ask today, and hopefully we're going to answer them with a little help from uh, Anna Kasparian and uh, Alec Gunter and uh, several other, you know, hilarious people that are hilarious in spite of themselves that's part of the equation though to a tipster a tipster is funny but not because tipster is trying to be funny a tipster is funny in spite of not trying to be funny a tipster is at his most funny when he is at his most serious right that's one of the you know that's one of the characteristics of a tipster the other characteristic i'd say is somebody that says like i am going to take my marbles and i'm going to go home right they're they're playing uh, they don't like the results of those games. They 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 fashion themselves as a, a ironic, um, you know, commentary bro. And and it turns out that the other commentary bros decide to pick on them. And so then they're like, I don't like this game. I don't like this game. I'm leaving commentary, and I'm gonna be like Keffel's right hand man. Yeah, when you when you're when you're changing your um perspective changing your ideology not based on any kind of like heartfelt um realization of anything but rather uh based on uh getting shit from your own side right and i've gotten shit from my own side too i've gotten you know some of the uh most 
unmoored things that were ever written about me were written about pe me by people who, who claim to be uh, on the left. There's some real, you know, questions about, like, how on the left are they when they're working with aristocracy? <laughs> Right, but um, but but you know that being said, like I, I'm uh, it's not gonna change who I am though, and that's what makes me maybe not a tipster. But I'm sure I'm a tipster in some light. Like like that's my theory. It's like everyone and everything is a tipster to someone or something. It's a, it's tipster relativity, special relativity. That's what we're talking about here. Um, I feel like we gotta start with a. Like, I, I, I need an unbiased... I need, like, an unbiased, um... God, Turkey Tom. There we go. That's unbiased. Um... Like, I need a tipster video that's gonna just give us, like, the whole lore of tipster. There's a lot of Nicholas Diorio videos here, I'm noticing. Nicholas Diorio, yeah, the tipster of the... The tipster for the straights. Making fun of the tipster for the gays. Oh no, is Chud Logic really our best bet on this? Oh, that's a long video too. We got a, like a we got like a tipster re retrospective. This is the one thing that I didn't really search out before starting today, and I feel like it's uh, kind of instrumental. Yeah, this is the problem that I have with um, the commentary community. It's like it's it's difficult to truly find an unbiased source. It's also difficult to find a succinct, uh, you know, and I'm like one to talk, right? I am, I'm really one to talk. Like when it comes to being succinct, circumspect, when it comes to brevity, that's, that's a real like L for me, dog and cat. Oh my god, you know what we might do? <laughs> What's my source for tip on Tipster? Let let's let's go to Tipster himself. And then we'll we trust me, we'll go to uh, Anna and we'll uh, finish up with what what's going on with Alec Gunter. Because it, it's pretty interesting. Oh my god, this is like disclaimer. Before we get into the fun and games. Okay, so this is Tipster himself. Wait, do we need to do some Tipster memes first? Like we need the Tipster soundboard to be active and um Before we start with all the fun and games. Cheers, my dude. Love ya. No homo. That's right. Something we have to talk about. There's something we have to get out of the way just right away there's something i need to address that uh i'll be honest if it were up to me i'd rather not address it at all addressing the drama addressing the drama or in the words of uh bow blacks wait let me do should i turn this down before i even uh play this here let's try to do with this without killing your ears talk about the allegations is that better i know everybody hates that um everybody hates that soundbite because it's too loud i need to attenuate that volume hmm but it's the kind of thing that if i don't address it people will start speculating and people will come to their own conclusions of what happened and whatnot and yeah i want to know what happened i want tipster to talk about the allegations so uh we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about it here i'm actually going to mute notifications 
so we can have this conversation. And I just kind of want to put this out there, put out my side of what happened, uh, and uh, kind of share my story. Now, most of you guys probably already know what happened, the reason why I kind of stepped away from the internet for a little bit. Okay. But for those of you guys who don't know, um, unfortunately, I had a falling out with a friend, a very public falling out with a friend, uh, and that friend decided... Oh my god, is it, who is this? Nicholas? That uh, they were so upset with me um, that they would they would leak some of my private conversations with them. They would release them. And uh, I'm just going to be honest. Like, a lot of the shit that got leaked was, like, really fucking embarrassing. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. Me, like, confiding my personal feelings about things to them. There was an embarrassing story that I shared with them about me ripping my pants at work. Yo! And, uh, you know, most of it was just, like, me expressing my emotions to this person about things that were bothering me. So it was kind of like an invasion of my privacy in a way. Uh, but the other thing that was shared was some screenshots that, without the bigger context provided, uh, admittedly didn't look very good for me. Uh, essentially, the picture that was being painted based on these screenshots that were released was that I was some kind of uh, creep or that I was someone who was unfaithful to my wife. And... Um, it, it was it was a really interesting situation. To so this is, I think, where the goth mommy memes come. You know, tipster likes goth mommies. I think this is where the uh, the couples is uh, tipsters. Uh, why, like, you know, t couples is married to tipster. I think this is where the, all that stuff uh, comes from. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Tipster's married, and in some ways, he acts very differently than you would expect, like a married dude to act. Right? You you'd expect a married dude not necessarily to be, um, you know, pursuing. Uh, the, the goth mommies with such uh, vigor and such... Um... It was a situation that I never thought that I would find myself in. Yet here we are. This is the situation uh, that we found ourselves in. So uh, I understand that this person has had the ability to share their side of the story. And while I've been away from the internet, I haven't really had the chance to share mine. And so this is my opportunity to do that. Now, originally I had uh, something more, uh, I guess you could say elaborate planned out. I was going to work on a video, uh, that I had like, you know, I, I downloaded my Twitter data so I could have my side of the screenshots of this situation or my side of the discussion with the situation. Uh, I went through that stuff. I was picking through there for research and all this stuff. I was collecting receipts. I wrote a script and then I kind of decided like, why am I going to dedicate this much time to something? Because when you kind of look at the bigger picture of things, like who are the people that ran with this narrative? It was people that didn't like me anyway. So I'm like, why am I going to invest so much of my fucking time working on this video only to have people who didn't okay. like me to begin with and ran with this narrative to begin with? Um, they probably weren't, it wasn't going to change their mind anyway. There was only one situation where someone I actually give a shit about their opinion uh, kind of, I guess you can say entertained the idea that this was like legitimate um, was Augie. Augie actually did a live stream covering this situation. I want to preface this by saying that I don't mind commentators covering the situation. I mean, at the end of the day, they're, they're cringe. I'm, I'm glad I thought it would make for, you know, a funny story for the other commentary channel. So I did kind of expect people to cover it, but I didn't expect someone that's my friend to entertain the idea that, oh, this is like legitimately flirty DMs that Tipster was having with someone that wasn't his wife. Uh, and before anybody jumps to the conclusion that, oh, uh, Tipster's doing a call out of Augie like this. Uh, Augie, Augie RFC, Shakespeare, that's that's who we're talking about. Um, I don't know much about Augie RFC. I know that they're a commentary creator who had some kind of kerfuffle with kerfuffles and uh, just ended up embarrassing yeah it was like there was some kind of conflict between keffels and and tipster and augie rfc and oh that's what it was there was something about bo blacks right bo Blacks said something keffels took it out of context to to mean something more insidious right and bo blacks i mean like look i am not like bo blacks is you know bestie or anything like that i'm not here to defend bo blacks um, I, I will say that like he's one of the less right wing uh, people in, uh, you know, in that section of the commentary uh, community. But I'm sure Boblax has, you know, his 
problems as well, right? But I feel like this thing that Kuffles accused Boblax of doing was something that he actually didn't do, right? So, so um, yeah, I think that's how this started. And then Augie RFC and Nick Diorio came on and they debated with like Kuffles and, and Tipster. Maybe we can like look at a little bit of that. We don't have too much time. We got to get to the Anna, right? We got to make sure that we save time for Anna Kasparian. The end of August. save time for Alec Gunter because these are our true uh, these these people deliver. Augie and Tipster's friendship. Uh, no, I talked to Augie about it. I shared my feelings with him on it. I was like, hey, dude, I don't mind you covering the story. Uh, I just don't mind. I, I don't appreciate rather you entertaining the idea that I was legitimately flirting with this girl, um, and that this was something that it wasn't. Uh, I don't appreciate that, and I think Augie understands where I was coming from for that. So we already talked about it. We already have a mutual understanding and we're good. Okay. Like I got upset with what he had to say, but we're, we're fucking good. All right. So anybody who wants to like, Oh, tips are just burn the Brit. No, that's not what's happening here. Okay. I was upset, but we talked about it, but yeah, I started working on a video and collecting receipts and stuff. I even showed some of the stuff that I had to Augie and Augie was like, dude, this is fucking brutal. And I see truth sleuth in the chat alley, the truth sleuth. I showed some of what I have to her. And she's like, bro, like you can rake this girl through the coals with what you have. And originally like, that was the idea. That's what I planned to do. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to do what I do best. I'll light up a live stream. I'll share my thoughts on what happened. Uh, kind of give my side of things and uh, just kind of, if anybody's now, got, thing I want to say before we even get into this, um, if anybody's got a video that they can suggest on this topic, right? Because it was so peaceful up here, but now they're freaking communist invading. Right? There are, yeah, they're all over the place too. Oh my God. Car uh, rant, dude. Thank you. Uh, no, <laughs> thank you for bringing me more communist invading radicals. No, uh, thank you. Uh, Sarah odd Tarka. Thank you for the, uh, thank you for the sub. Before we even get into this. If you, I'm going to ask you guys. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm arring, um, you know, any, any other videos, like just, just send me the name, suggest the name of a tipster video that you think is good, succinct, succinct, succinct and unbiased, something that we can dig our teeth into to really just get to the, um, cause that's what we're going to try to explore. And like over the next few days, I'm going to give you, uh, my, uh, theory my uh of general tipster tivity right my unified tipster theory or tipster cube you might say right the 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 way in which um there is not just one tipster but there are many tipsters um for everything there is a tipster and everything is a tipster to something else right that's that's what i'm going to try to do is unite um you know the electromagnetic uh force with the strong nuclear force uh using tipster that's what that's the goal know who this person is this ex-friend of mine that did this please don't name her in the chat and the week i really don't want to nuclear bring attention to her all that other I stuff also don't want people to seek her out and harass her uh, anything i showed did you i guys, say electronegativity i think i mean electromagnetics today i've redacted her name from it just because i don't want people bothering her we've got quantum mechanics and we've got newtonian man mechanics and where they meet is the tipster point that's the tipster point. Not to be confused with the Trumpster point, chat, because that is different. That is different, okay? So just don't fucking do it, okay? Um, but I do want to kind of share my side of things. So uh, I actually want to bring up some stuff on the screen. I, I want to talk about some things right with you guys. And, they indicted um, me. and just kind of share my side. So essentially who this person was this is someone i was a friend with i will admit i thought i was friends with them longer than i actually was um but this is someone that i was a friend with okay i established a friendship with them oh god we're gonna you we're gonna we're switch uh well. scenes here we let's try a lot of things we talked about uh you know politics we talked about trending news we talked about things that were happening in the community who is this overall, we talked about our families like the time kind of things that friends talk about but the narrative became that this was just some random e-girl that I just randomly- Oh, it's the goth mommy. Yo, this is the goth mommy. Flirting with her. Could this be Anna Kasparian? And that is just simply not the case. That's not what actually happened. So we're not going to go over all the DMs that were released. A lot of that stuff was just like legitimately embarrassing stuff that like- Okay, let me read this. Uh, I don't give this to many people, but if you ever need to talk, don't hesitate to call or text me. I'm a busy guy, uh, so I may not respond immediately, but I will respond. 
Goth Mommy says, gotcha, thank you. Uh, Tipster says, anything for a pink haired hot Goth Mommy, Lamau, JK. Lamau, JK. <laughs> That's like, there we go, Lamau, JK. And then uh, the crying, uh, laughing emoji from Goth Mommy. Uh, tipster says, what can I say? I got a thing for goth chicks. Again, this is this is what people this is where people start to have so, their suspicions in that like this maybe is not what like a married, uh, you know, it's, it's weird for like a married guy to be tweeting like this or tweeting uh, DMing DMing. This isn't even tweets. This is it. The sliding into the DMs, sliding the, just the tip into the DMs and uh, and, and talking about how uh, you've got a thing for goth chicks shouldn't have been put out there it's an invasion of my privacy it's out there now if you want to seek it out you can seek it out uh i have nothing to hide but it's just embarrassing but the big part of the narrative came out because of these flirty uh dms and so i kind of wanted to share some things with you guys wait there's this more was this wasn't flirting these were jokes these, these were jokes it was a joke i get it adults they were like it was a joke made to a short stack goblin entering with each other okay that's what this was i've joked with several of my friends like this i i, I make jokes with friends like this all the time male and female by the way and uh, if anybody had ever told me that they were uncomfortable about this situation like if i made a joke like this to them and they're like hey you know what i'm not really comfortable with that i would absolutely stop because it's not my goal to make anyone feel fucking uncomfortable that's not what I do, right? So at no point did this girl communicate to me that, hey, I'm uncomfortable with this because I would have stopped. I would have apologized and I would have stopped, right? I'm not trying to make anyone uncomfortable. But anyway, um, that's what this was. These were jokes between two adults. And keep in mind, these jokes were a very, very small portion of our conversations. When I was going through the DM archive, I got from Twitter, so peaceful we here, had sent between the both of us over 2,400 messages with each other in a seven to eight month period. And of all those conversations, she produced four to five screenshots that are being interpreted as flirty or creepy, right? But I wanted to take a look at some of these with you guys because unfortunately there was some context that was removed. In these and i wanted to share that context with you guys so we're going to do that now uh one of the dms and questions is this one here in this one you can see me saying i don't give this to many people but if you ever need to talk don't hesitate to call or text me i'm a busy guy so i may not respond immediately but i will respond and that's me sharing my phone number with her i gave this girl my phone number which admittedly like okay like tips are my what's the story tips bone I've been down bad with this girl if he was willing to give her his fucking phone number. I mean, that's at least the narrative that many people were running with. She responds with, gotcha, thank you. Anything for pink haired hot goth mommy laughing my ass off, JK. That's what I said. She responds. See, it was, it was, it was LMAO JK, so. Three laughing crying emojis. I say, what can I say? I got a thing for goth chicks, ha ha. And she says, don't we all? Now I have maintained that these were jokes. Yeah, no, I think I can prove that we all do in fact have a thing for uh goth chicks let me see if i can find this i, I i'm pretty sure this is true like I'm, I'm finding some yeah there we go i, f I feel like this is proof right here if anybody wants to know do we have a thing for hot goth chicks the answer is yes, especially at one o'clock in the morning. At one o'clock in the morning, yeah, goth uh, IHOP opens up and uh, we all go there. So yeah, we, we do in fact have a thing, that that, that part's true, yeah, and uh, we all have a thing for, uh, you know, femboys at, at Hooters and, and goths at IHOP. Um, uh, what else? A tomboy uh, Outback Steakhouse. What is the, De MILF Denny's? Is that MILF Denny's? Hooters, but entirely, entirely staffed by uh, femboys. Yeah, this is the kind of food that you get there at Goth IHOP. You can see, you know, the the uh, black uh, pancakes with blueberries. And what is this sauce? Oh, my God. What is this sauce dripping down it? That looks delicious. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, especially in March of 2020, May of 2020, 
April of 2020. Uh, February of 2021. Yeah, like it's cyclical. It's cyclical. It looks like our, our interest in, in uh, goth chicks is, is kind of cyclical. Um, but yeah, no, this part's true. This part's true. I'm going to I'm going to agree there. We've all got a thing for uh, goth girls, apparently. Between two adults and anybody that I've had conversations like this with, I can see some of them in chat. They can tell you I've had conversations like this with them as well. Ooh. And again, power bottoms at Taco Bell. It's understood. Oh my God, that's bechamel. At any point in time, any that's dark chocolate pancakes with bechamel. Wait, you know what? I've never tried chocolate pancakes before. I think the closest I've ever had is like I had this friend, uh, you know, growing up, and like he, he was like, <laughs> this is embarrassing. He was like the rich kid, so everyone would play over at his house because he had the best like video games and stuff like that. And like I don't, I don't know. He wasn't exactly the most popular person, but. I do remember him uh, being like, you know, talking about stuff like chocolate, like he went to like nice restaurants or, you know, better restaurants. And so he was like telling me about like, you know, I went to this place and they served you like chocolate pancakes. They had like chocolate embedded in the pancake so that it melted, you know, within the pancake. And I mean, like, that sounds kind of good, but this is different. We're talking about a fully chocolate, a fully chocolified pancake, right? That's that's something I've never heard of before one that I ever joked with like this told me, hey, I'm not comfortable with that tipster. I wouldn't do it. I don't even engage in these kind of conversations unless I seem to think like based on like my communication with the person that it's like, hey, um, they seem like they're comfortable with this sort of thing. And that's why I engage with it. Um, but if at any point she or anyone else had told me, yeah, like, you know, I'm not comfortable. Wait, the chocolate pancakes are, yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm wondering, Raven. Like, I mean, I want to try them because they sound pretty good. But A, I don't really eat pancakes, and B, um, some things are, yeah, chocolate does not necessarily make a thing good. Like, for instance, the, the thing that comes to mind for me is chocolate ice cream. Now, I like chocolate, and I like ice cream, and if you give me chocolate ice cream, I will eat it. But, uh, if it's vegan, <laughs> I'm such a high-maintenance bitch, Chad, I'm sorry. But, but you know, th that aside, right, um, I prefer other kinds of ice cream. I like chocolate, but I don't necessarily like chocolate to be the flavor base for my ice cream. Do you got me? Anymore, you know? But taking a look at this screenshot, <clears throat> there is context removed. Now, I mentioned that I acquired my Twitter data. I acquired the screenshots. And the one I'm about to show you right now is actually the one I showed Augie, where he's like... Uh, strawberry syrup? Yes, but also blueberry syrup and huckleberry, huckleberry syrup. If you can get that, if you can find that. Isn't that the thing with IHOP, though? I haven't been to IHOP in forever, but I remember something about them having like various types of uh, because what makes it the international house of pancakes? Chat, that's a question I ask you. What is international about it? And I, I always thought it was the syrup. I always thought that the, the the fact that you don't just like if you get pancakes, you don't just get one syrup. You get like four syrups, and if you ask, there's more syrups in the back. Right, it's a pain in the ass. Right, I've worked at IHOP. Uh, don't abuse. You know, be not be nice to your um, you know, wait staff. Right, you know, because they're 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 very busy. There's a lot of things that they've got to do. They got to prep a salad over here. They got to get drink orders for table four. Uh, they got to help the uh, you know, kitchen out with with this or that. They're, you know, your 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 wait staff is doing a lot of different things. So don't be like you know, don't do this at a busy IHOP on Sunday morning. Okay, but maybe if it's late night and you're like the only one in the IHOP, ask for some. You know what what else? What do what do you got in the back as far as syrups? Because you might find. That there are different types of syrup that is just like you know, like boysenberry. What the fuck is? I don't even know what a boysenberry is, but it sounds delicious. It's kind of brutal. So I maintain. Ooh, oh my god, Chad Alpha, dark chocolate and pan banana pancakes are so good. Blueberry pancakes, I also like. Um, Andy Rooney. Uh, oh my god, Vest Demon. Thank you for the bitties. Vesty. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vest Demon. That's very sweet of you. Um, uh, and reminding me that I don't ever do my pitch. I'm supposed to do a pitch, chat. That's a professional streamer. You're supposed to supposed to give your pitch. Jokes. This wasn't legitimate flirting. Oh shit. You know what I will pitch though is the uh, top of the hour ad break because that's coming at you in just a few minutes. 
Um, not so much the top of the hour ad break itself, which is not great, but the fact that you could possibly avoid that top of the hour ad break if you find a way to get yourself a sub. How do you get yourself a sub? I'm glad you asked. You get yourself a sub in many different ways. One of those is free, right? If you've got Prime, if you're paying for Prime, then you are also paying for a free sub to use on the streamer of your choice. If that streamer turns out to be me, not only do you have my undying appreciation, because I know you only have one, but also you'll no longer see ads in my channel. You can also get out of the ads in my channel and get yourself weasels uh, by paying $5 for a sub, or you could possibly uh, be gifted a sub. That can happen. That does happen. Uh, I mean, Twitch is trying to mount a comeback, right? Twitch is trying to compete with YouTube, which is amazing, right? Because Twitch as a platform for, for politics has absolutely fallen off. Unless your name is Hasanabi, uh, you know, you, there's not, a, there's not, I don't, I don't know what's going on, right? People don't want their politics on Twitch. They, they want their video, they're back to video gaming on Twitch or, or whatever, right? Uh, but yeah, YouTube is trying to mount or Twitch is trying to mount a comeback after YouTube kind of took over and, and absolutely trounced uh, Twitch in the horse race. But uh, but we, we we are getting some level of parity these days. So there's a possibility that somebody might uh, gift a sub that can happen. That does happen. But it's more likely to happen to you when you're active in the chat. This wasn't legitimate flirting between me and this girl at all. These were jokes. Ooh, crepes, but crepes are hard to make. Afroponic says, make some, me some crepes. Um, okay, look, first of all, I'm better at galettes than crepes. And second of all, the first crepe is always for the dog, right? Because the first crepe, I don't know what it is about it, but the first uh, crepe that you make um, in, in a pan, it like it never turns out right. It always gets all crumpled and and like you want the, the you want those immaculate crepes. So uh, you give the first one to the dog and then after that, and you can actually see after that, it's all you at the bottom here. She cropped out something. The last message in the conversation. So on my Twitter data, I have what that conversation right here. You could see it reads from bottom to top. What can I say? I got a thing for goth chicks. Just like, wait, I thought you were going to say, I've got a thing for bottoms for a second. No, that's Alec Gunter. What can I say? I got a thing for goth chicks. She responds with, don't we all lol? Don't we all lol? And she cut this out. All jokes, obviously. We both married, and I ain't trying to fuck that. Yo, yo, you know what he said? You know what he said? Look, this guy's the king of caveats. I gotta say, like, listen to this. Listen to this clip. Cheers, my dude. Love ya. No homo. We gotta have a caveat, right? Just in case, cheers, my dude. Love you. Uh, came across like I am uh amorous towards the 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 bro that I'm drinking with in a homosexual manner just just in case like that that might have been communicated accidentally he just makes sure to qualify that with a caveat to say no homo just like you know cheers my dude love you which obviously is what gay dudes say to each other right no no that's not what gay dudes say to each other okay well tipster thinks it is it might be something a gay dude would say to another gay dude and he wants to just make sure that you know that he himself is uh is not a gay dude and he does not mean this uh love ya cheers my dude in, in a homosexual way right so he's got the caveat here too and he's like he's like oh my god i can't believe that she cut out my caveat i can't believe that she thought that was bullshit this is hilarious. This is so funny. This is the, this is what people love about Tipster. Oh, but homegirl do be rocking that pink hair like a G. She wanted you to believe that this was legitimate flirting. Yo, what the fuck? No, it's just sus. It's sus. That's all it is. Okay. Um. And I've maintained in my defense this whole time that these were jokes. I will maintain uh, that if you want to let somebody know that you are there for them in a platonic sort of way that that, you know, maybe uh, I've got a thing for goth chicks, right? Like if somebody if I was having trouble, right, it, you know, in a couple of years ago, I was I was getting some, you know, really nasty harassment from some really nasty people and somebody wanted to reach out there and they said then they got in my dms and they were like hey if there's ever anything that you need i'm here for you if you need to talk i'd be like oh that's very sweet and the next thing that comes in to, out of their mouth or that you know the next thing they type is besides I, i've really got a thing for for chicks with butterflies in their hair right 
that you're that's not doing the job of making that person feel safe right it's like even if you afterwards just kidding i'm totally married and i would never you know actually have sexual intercourse with you uh, that's not what i'm saying here like that almost makes it more sus that almost makes it more me think thou doth protest too much tipster and she literally cuts out the part where i clarify that it's a joke oh before i get ahead of myself before i get a holy shit I almost went, got ahead of myself. There's the ad break as now. As if to rub salt in the wound. There's the ad break now. As if to rub salt in the wound. As if it wasn't bad enough that she cut that out. She actually likes that. That's what this is right here. This is her recipient ID. You can't see it because, again, I've redacted it because I don't want anybody bothering her. She liked it. That's almost like she's acknowledging that it's a joke. And she knew it was a joke all along. It's almost like she's looking for any kind of relief and, and to like, you know, like, like, hopefully this is not like, I'm not getting, you know, hit on here. Like, it's stressful. It's stressful. It's stressful when you get like unsolicited, you know, shit into your uh, inbox. And, and, you know, it comes in a lot of different forms. And sometimes it's a little bit of a Schrodinger's douchebag. Sometimes you get the feeling out tweet where they say something that's a little bit like, you know, besides, I really have a thing for goth chicks. And then if you don't respond immediately, they're like, oh, psych, just kidding. I'm married. Not really. Not for real. Right. I don't know. It's 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 tough. It's stressful. Right. She actually liked it. Another embarrassing DM that leaked out in this situation. It was like the middle of the night. It was like 3 a.m. her time, as you can see by these screenshots. 322, 323, etc. She sends me this picture in DMs of her and a girl, and this girl's doing her hair. I think she's like dyeing it or styling it. I'm not really sure. But she's with this girl. And I tell her that, you know, the hair looks nice. Also, your friend kind of cute, winky face. And she says, Ayo, she's 16. Now, admittedly, really stupid on my part. I Sorry. take ownership oh, shit, oh, that what I said here, like... I mean, since you're not going to do it, Tipster, I will. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Yeah, that's definitely an oh shit moment. Commenting on this girl, not knowing how old she was. Really fucking stupid. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, this, like, this is exactly... Oh my God. Wait, do we have this? I just want to cross-reference this with a couple of other things. Yeah, this one. This one, right? The conversation with Alec Gunter. Sense that, like, I don't think that that stuff makes him, you know, who people try to make him out to be. And then I also... So we're talking about Vosh. I don't think that the... I don't think that the short stack goblins, which he clearly thought they were, I don't think that makes Vosh uh, what people are making him out to be. Well, um, he claimed that... I go around harassing e-girls, which isn't true. And then on top of that, he tacked on like a new claim that apparently I go around sexually harassing trans women, which also isn't true. So you can always tell when you've struck a nerve with someone when they resort to- Again, like I, I'll refer you to Chud Logic, right? I'll refer you to Chud, Lo Chud Logic as being the, um, the tipster for uh, anti-SJWs. And, and maybe that sort of thing, tipster, might be more in Chud's wheelhouse. Literally parroting or making up lies about you. So, you know, I said what I had to say about Oh my god, variety streamer, based memer, and Lord of the Goth Mommies. He's embracing it. And it just kind of is what it is. That's ridiculous. I've, I've seen, there was that one video I watched where, uh, I think you were there for that, about, like, they were trying to say that you're harassing girls or something. And, like, the worst that they showed, like, taken out of context, uh, okay, like, the, the, the absolute worst thing that I saw, if I may say it, was, um, like, there was, there, there may have been one time where you accidentally got into the, the industry, um, like, an underage girl. Was that DJ, uh, Dogeable, I, I gotta give you, uh, I gotta give you a cheers. I gotta give you a... Cheers, my dude. Love ya. No homo. I mean, it's, um, for, unfortunately, that's the only way that, uh, Tipster, uh, gives cheers. But there, there's your cheers, uh, nonetheless. Cheers and happy Sunday to you. Correct. Um, I don't believe, no, that doesn't ring a bell. I think that what you might be referring to, okay. well, well, tell me what you're referring to first. Maybe I can but, Yeah, my it. understanding was, okay, so there was like a time, well, oh yeah, no, I remember, you were in the inbox of somebody, and then you said that somebody that that person knew was cute, and then that person right. responded that that person was 16, maybe? Is that correct? Yeah, so essentially, like, what happened is I had this friend that I used to talk with uh, pretty regularly, and uh, we had a falling out, and they ended up leaking a bunch of DMs out of context to make me look really bad. They tried to make it look like I was trying to flirt with them and stuff like that, uh, and ultimately what it was is we were just friends, and we were kind of goofing off and with each other. It was nothing. Mr. Garrick, what, what evidence do you have to sign? I mean, I guess so. He's married, right? I, I mean, I don't want to think about uh, Tipster's uh, sex life, but... But one of the DMs yeah. that came out was uh, she had sent me a picture of uh, someone doing her hair, and this was at, like... 
two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, something like that. So I'm like, oh, who, who's your friend? They're kind of cute. And keep in mind in the picture, which I'm not going to show the picture because it's a minor. So I don't want to put a minor's picture out there, but you can't even see their. Thank you. Thank you for not putting out a picture of a minor. That would be so creepy. Their face is covered by like their hand. So I just made like a joke comment of who's your friend. They look kind of cute. And she goes, well, she's 16. And I instantly, oh my bad. I, I had no idea. My apologies. But of course that part doesn't right. get shown because it doesn't fit the narrative, right? So, but yeah, it was a stupid comment I made and I can admit that it was a stupid comment I made, but like, is it an indicator that I'm like a pedophile or something? No, but that's what they want you to think, you know? Man, I've always stuck by, listen, if you find interest in a girl and she turns out to be 16 or 17, guess what you do? You apologize and you walk away. That's it. Like, it, there's nothing more to it. it. It's like one of those things where, you know, I forget what I was referring to, but recently on stream, we were talking about a similar topic where the internet is so quick to jump to the, this person's a pedophile or a creep sort of thing. When like ignorance can be like the easiest explanation for what's going on. Uh, and I equated- That's why we have to have a name for it. We have to talk about uh, pedo jacketing, right? And if the jacket fits, the jacket fits, okay, you must not acquit to like let's say you're in a public place like a mall or something like that right and you're a younger guy in your mid-20s you see a girl you find attractive you spark up a conversation with them hey why don't we go on a date sometime and they say oh i'm sorry i'm 16 or i'm 17 and you oh my god does this have this sounds like a common experience oh my God, i didn't know i'm sorry and you move on nobody yeah. would call that person in the real world a pedophile but on the internet you absolutely would call that person a pedophile it's pretty insane it is very insane it's gotten warped to the extent that people have actually forgotten the purpose of why we don't go after people who are underage which is the fact that they cannot consent okay it's not it has nothing to do with how they look it's the fact that they don't have the brain development yet to consent okay so if you have somebody like, let's say that you have, uh, you know, like, a, again, a 16 year old who looks like she could be 23 or 24. You know what happens? And then you, you go up to them not knowing their age. So now if you if you are like a therapist, right, or if you're studying to be a therapist, uh, this is the behavior that Alec is engaging in right now is called normalization. All right. That's one of the things that you do when you talk to a, uh, a client as, as a therapist is you try to, you know, normalize. They might be feeling some anxiety about, you know, certain things, certain experiences they've had, certain things that they've done that they think are, are like not normal and you got to let them know that like that's understandable that's totally like understandable um but there's like some limits to it there, there's some things that that you would not uh normalize i would say that maybe this might be one of them but here we have uh alec not you know to my knowledge uh you know studying for a uh any kind of uh you know psychotherapy degree or, or anything like that um normalizing uh tipsters like normalizing like not a, a a very normal situation which is like you know going up to a, a 16 year old for uh to, to riz this person up and then finding out that uh that they're 16 right it was so peaceful up here but now there are freaking communist invading radicals it's not as normal of a situation as, as a tipster wants to make it out to be right take an interest in them and then they and then you discover they're 16 that's the point at which you walk away you know, and I know this is a tangent, but I feel like this is very important to point out. Like if you get into the mindset that even just approach, like you should be able to tell that somebody is 16 or 17 just by looking at them or whatever, you forget the point that it's not about how they look. It's about the fact that they cannot consent. So once you find out that right. they're 16 or 17, that's when you walk away. And I feel like that's when you walk away. But anyway, uh, I, but you're not a creep yet until you it, like, I, I, de I definitely agree with you on that because like, it seems like, look, if somebody's being a predator and they're using their platform to prey on, you know, people, I'm 100% in favor of that person being outed in order to protect other people from becoming victimized by those people or targeted by them. Um, but it's become... Look, so just to be clear, I am not portraying uh, either Alec Gunter or Tipster as being a uh, PDF. Like, a, they're not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, a, I'm not asserting their file type at all, right? That's not, that's not what I'm trying to do here. Uh, this is, this is such shit. It's, it's... It's off. It's sus. It's it makes me uncomfortable. But no, it's not fucking evidence that like, you know, you couldn't take to like, I'm not like, I'm not calling the FBI in to like, look at these people's hard drives. Right? That's that's not the point. It's just like, what the fuck did you just say? That's the point. That's the point. The point is, what the fuck did you just say? Let's get back to um, addressing the a drama or as Boblax would say. Wait, I got to every time I'm going to play Boblax, I got to turn it way down. As Boblox would say, talk about the allegations. We're going to talk about the allegations. The goth mommy files. On my part, okay? Then I say, oof. I was only joking. Can't actually see her with her fingers in the way. But I guess I kind of set myself up for that one. Sorry, lol. Big fuck up on my part. But I have to ask, okay? I understand some of this conversation she shares some private information about this 16 year old girl and that really shouldn't be put out there for the public to see so i understand kind of blurring out some parts of the conversation or removing some parts of the conversation like i get it i understand why you would do that 
not okay to put some 16 year old girl's private life out there. Okay. But I have to ask this. Why did she edit out the part where she acknowledges that this was an honest man? I love that he's got like the code up there. Mistake. That was part of the conversation. The conversation progresses further than those initial. Wait, so the, the question I'm going to ask, right, is was there. Because I guess like editing out. Part of the conversation, like, right, it, it, it was this at the end of the conversation? Was this at the end of the uh, screenshot that Tipster showed us? Or was this in the middle of two things, right? Are we actually editing something out of the midst of, you know, what screenshot? Or is this just like the, uh, like, like it, this sounds like Voshkobe, right? This is what Vosh and his fans will always tell you. Any, any clip that comes down the line where he's saying something objectively fucked up, right? They'll always tell you that it's a clip chimp. They'll always tell you that it's out of context and that, they, that if you watch a little bit longer, you, the context will become apparent and you'll feel silly for thinking that Vosh was sus at all because actually the thing, and like, look, the, there are things that you can say at the end of a statement or at the beginning of a statement. Like if you say, like, this is what a PDF file might say and then you say something, right? That doesn't, you know, cutting, cutting the beginning part of that, you know, if you're characterizing something in a certain way and then that uh, characterization gets cut off, right? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's dishonest, right? But this is, this is a little different. This is them taking that phenomenon and trying to use it um, to cut, to, to, you know, essentially take something that, that is indeed sus and make it seem not sus based on the idea that, oh, yeah, no, these, this is a Nazi that uh, made the clip and it's out of context. And, you know, it's, you show the whole context and it gets worse half of the time with Bosch. Screenshots. And she edits out the part of the conversation where she acknowledges it's an honest mistake. Why? Why remove that? Is it because it makes that screenshot look a lot worse if you remove it? Sure seems that way. Now, a lot of people really hinged on this. They, they actually made it seem like this was like legitimate and flirting or whatever, because I was referring to her as goth mommy. If you look through several of these screenshots, I'm calling her a hot goth. I'm referring to her as goth mommy. Goth mommy could get it. I made that. Oh, oh. in other screenshots. Uh, hot wait, goth wait, wait, mommy. what? Re wait, you're trying to wait. Are you still trying to defend yourself here? Because, like, G Goth Mommy can get it is a little stronger than anything you've said so far. Repeatedly, I'm referring to her as Goth Mommy throughout these screenshots. And a lot of people saw that as, like, look, this is, like, proof. This is definitive proof that Tipster's, like, down bad for this girl. She's not just a friend. Like, like he's filling her. Cause no, no, no. Okay, that's not how I interpreted it. I, I didn't interpret this as, as Tipster is, you know, filling anyone uh, necessarily, right? I interpret it as tipster is thirsty. Tip, tipster is thirsting. Tipster is testing the waters. He's dipping his toe in just the tip, mind you, just the tip of his toe into the water to feel it out, to see like he's 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 reading the room. He's trying to figure out if, uh, you know, like he he's saying like God, mommy could get it is definitely, you know, a weather balloon that he's sending up and he's seeing, you know, does the balloon get popped immediately or does the balloon start to fly? Uh, you know, like, is she going to let this balloon fly? That's what he's doing. Pet name. Like, that's, I actually heard someone refer to it as that. Tipster. But yeah, Raven G, down. you're right. I think it's inspiring that he gets laid. Actually, yeah, I don't like this discourse of, like, yeah, people are, like, unfuckable. I mean, that really lends into, like, dis, like, incel uh, discourse, right? And uh, just goes into, I mean, you, you know about incels. Like, it goes to a really dark place with them. I'm bad for this girl because he gave her a fucking pet name. But again, there's more context missing here because I didn't give her that name. I didn't give her that name at all. In fact, she got that name from someone in my chat. I have a clip from my stream where she was on, she had face cam on, her and her husband were on my stream and she had the face cam on. And someone in my chat gave her that name because when she had the face cam on, she had done her makeup like goth style. And so someone in my chat called her goth mommy. 
But you said goth mommy can get it. And she liked it. She liked it so much that as you'll see in this clip, she decided to rebrand all her social media as goth mommy. Let's roll the clip. Oh, he's playing Sonic. The fact that Chad is calling me goth mommy is really making, like, I am living for that right now. Right, let's go. Let's go. See, the chat was going wild for her earlier. She's the goth mommy. I am the goth mommy. I'm going to change my name on Twitter to goth mommy. Goth mommy. Let's go. I love it. Just like. It's such an unenthusiastic let's go too. Dude, they are loving the goth mommy. That's your new name from now on. It's goth mommy. God. Yeah. Hey, goth mommy. She's about yeah. to. She about to rebrand everywhere, just everywhere. She's goth mommy. Dead ass, dude. Like, well, my thing was already mommy with a question mark on a lot of shit. So mm -hmm. it was either mama or mommy. So I like goth mommy. Goth mommy. Oh, yeah. we we know you love. Goth He's missing the point. For somebody named Tipster, he sure does miss the point an awful lot. Yes, hashtag goth mommy. I like, I like Corey. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a name. I, I didn't give her this name. This is a name she got from someone in my. Oh, good point. Yeah. She, yeah, Jewel says who you find cute and who you don't find cute. It's one of those things that maybe you shouldn't uh, tell people. Yeah, definitely like not without, you know. Not without getting some sense of, of reciprocity. She did her makeup up to look kind of goth and someone called her goth mommy in my chat. And as she says in the clip, as she says in the clip, she rebranded all her social media to that. As you I love how he's like, this fucking clears my name. I just said goth mommy can get it. And clearly I'm not at the, like, he thinks the point is that like people think that he named her goth mommy. And it's not the point. The point is the got the can get it right can get it right when you say somebody can get it for those of you who don't know uh this this phrase right it is implying that they can uh that you would be if they were interested in uh being amorous with you that you would be um absolutely compliant to uh to doing right like that's that's what can get it means right can get you know sex potentially i hear or look at one point here's one here's the, here's the okay so you look at two meanings for it right one meaning you know can get it can get with me right and the second meaning can get it speaking to a part of one's anatomy all right i've heard both so it's unclear it's unclear which one uh tipster means but either way it's just inappropriate and cringe i don't know on my stream she called in via discord and again goth mommy so so many people hinged on that as if that was like legitimate proof like absolutely uh irrefutable proof that i was like down bad for this girl and I i'm sorry but that's that's not the case this is someone that i met on tiktok they tagged me in a tiktok post and we started talking and you know like sometimes when you meet people you just click with them and we just clicked and we became friends we had a friendly relationship. Like I said, all of this stuff, all these flirty DMs were a very, very, very small portion of our conversations. We talked about politics. We talked about the news. We talked about our families. We did a lot of talking about our families. Now, I'm not going to put any of that stuff out there because of the fact that it, it, it's private conversations. Maybe she didn't have respect for my privacy when she leaked these messages but unlike her, I have respect for hers. So I'm not going to be putting that shit out there. She confided it. She confided it in me when we were friends privately. And out of respect for her, I'm going to keep it private. Now, I understand she's appeared on a podcast where she said that she regrets doing this. And she's sorry. Thanks, I guess. Show I, the podcast. It, it doesn't reverse the damage that was done. Show the podcast. As a result of this shit. Because what happened as a result of this shit, people who don't like me jumped on this shit and started spreading this narrative that Tipster's a creep, uh, Tipster's unfaithful to his wife. There were literally people saying that Tipster's wife should leave him or that Tipster's wife is going to divorce him as a result of this. Meanwhile, you dumb fucks, my wife's been supporting me through this whole fucking thing.
Yeah, um, Afroponics says, I don't know, I flirt with everyone, uh, everyone over, <laughs> um, of age at least. Um, so like, look, there's a difference between like what the whole point of flirting is, is like feeling out if like, you know, like if, if your interest is, is shared, right? And, and I got the feeling, Afroponics, that, you know, if it wasn't, if you weren't getting those signs, right, if you weren't getting that feedback of like, yeah, mutual, that's how flirting works out. It's, it's supposed to be, um, you know, barely perceptible, right? And, and yeah, it's very much about like reading the room, not the room, but reading the other uh, person and, and how they're responding. And if your, your response is that the other person is like shutting down, right, obviously, that's going to make you, you know, back off and, you know, maybe even uh, apologize, right? But the problem is, is that tipsters going in a little full hog here. He never left my side because unlike the internet, she knows the difference between what's a joke and what's real. I've made jokes like this on my stream while my wife is in chat. I've made jokes like this in front of my wife, IRL, and she doesn't give a fuck. Uh, Jules says, uh, so if you never discover their age, is it all okay? Uh, that would be chud logic. I understand people's relationships think so. different boundaries and shit like that. And that's fine. You know, obviously. You must say, oh shit. I'll give you an oh shit for. Oh shit. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Since we're watching Tipster, it's appropriate. See, if you're in a relationship with someone who isn't okay with jokes like this, don't make jokes like that. But my wife ain't like that. My wife married me because she likes my sense of humor. And she's okay with my sense of humor. Okay? Just because you don't get it, and maybe your relationship's not like that, doesn't mean that our relationship is like that. And I've seen so many ridiculous narratives coming out of this shit. You know, I gotta be honest. More so than her putting my private information out there pissed me off. The way people talked about this pissed me off you know we went in on the t community for like a fucking year right and again i don't mind people talking about the situation there's some really embarrassing shit she put out there there's some really fucking cringy dm she put out there if you want to cover this story and laugh at my expense go right ahead i've been doing this commentary shit for a few years now i know how the game is fucking played all right i have no problem with someone covering this story no problem whatsoever so if you want to cover it, go ahead. But like some of the bullshit that I heard coming out of this is ridiculous. I heard people saying that this was some random e-girl that I just randomly slid in her DMs and started like flirting with her. That's not what fucking happened. This person was my friend. The funniest thing about seeing people spread that narrative is that my falling out with this person was extremely public and a lot of people seen it. They seen this public fallout. Oh, good point, Ophelia. I like to flirt with everyone a little just for fun, but there's a difference between friendly flirting and like, I am interested in you flirting. Yeah, and like, you know, X can get it. I mean, that's that's a little that's a little bit of the latter. But then this shit comes out and all of a sudden it's, it's just some random e-girl who's tip, tips her slid into her DMs and started flirting with her. No, that's not what fucking happened. I had people saying that she's the one that told me to private my videos and I was just following the orders of some e-girl and that's why I privated all my old videos. No, I made that decision on my own. I made that fucking, I don't know where that narrative came from, but that's not what happened. I made that decision on my own because at the time it seemed like it was the right decision for me to make based on the way I felt at the time. And again, I saw people questioning my marriage, which I'm sorry, but for me, like that crosses line. I get that I'm a public figure and I'm subject to criticism, but my wife's not a public figure. My wife never asked for this shit. And now there's people on the internet questioning the status of our marriage. My marriage is no one's fucking business, but mine and my wife's. So stay the fuck out of it. Like I said, we went in on T channels for spreading all this stupid information and shit like that. Oh, T channels. Fucking okay, chat, we gotta stop and take a minute to like discuss this because like this is something that I don't understand. Um So you got these different terms, right? For channels, for YouTube, for niches on YouTube, for different sections of YouTube, different groups of channels, different people that you know are in a community. Like we talk about the drama community, we talk about the commentary community. 
and we can talk about the tea community. My question is, what differentiates the tea community from the drama community? Because it, it like seems to me like that the drama community, like the only thing I can think that really d differentiates it is that the drama community slants like, you know, towards towards like, you know, masculine. Right. And the like, I don't know, like the the tea, you, it just almost feels like they, they call you like drama or tea, depending on um, like your, your gender or something. I, I don't I don't know what it really is. It maybe there's something I'm missing here. Anybody, anybody got insights? Uh, the tea community says bipedal meatbag is not directly involved in the drama. They just hear about it. Okay, so the drama community is like if somebody. Oh my god, I need to catch up with chat. Uh, drama and commentary is when dudes do it. Tea channels is when women do it. I mean, I don't know. It feels it feels like it tends that way, but. There's definitely some exceptions. Uh, T, T community is not directly involved in the drama. They just hear about it. Okay. Whereas with the drama community, it's like they want to. So wait, if you're a drama, yeah. Sorry, if you're a drama person, you're you're like trying to start shit up. If you're a T person, you're just talking about stuff but not getting involved. Is that the distinction? Uh, tipster used to be best friends with Keemstar. Yeah, that's the whole thing about Tipster, right? Is there something kind of disingenuous, right? That he was with all these toxic people, you know, people that he calls toxic, people that I would agree. And if I feel like it's not a spicy take, if I say Keemstar is toxic, I don't think a lot of people, even people in the drama community, are going to disagree. Like, there, there's not a lot of, like, you know, hard, like, Keemstar uh, defenders out there. But the fact that, you know, he was okay with them when they weren't going after him, when he was not the subject of their um, drama discourse, right? He was okay with them. And then when he was and he started to get made fun of and he started to become a laughingstock of the commentary community, that's when he switches up his whole, like, what, ideology? Not just his niche on, on YouTube, right? But his his ideology and it just seems to come out of nowhere and it just feels like it feels like he is searching for a place where he is can go from being like a known quantity to being an unknown quantity right that that's what's disingenuous about uh tipster year and so many people jumped on this and spread this bullshit without a second thought it's funny because it's like i've made jokes like this publicly on twitter and people would just kind of like quote tweet it and meme on it and it was a joke it was a joke they all acknowledge it was a joke. I've made jokes like this on my stream. And again, people would clip it and they'd beam on it. And hey guys, it's a joke. It's just a funny fucking joke, right? I've had a friend of mine with my permission that I make these comments in their DMs with them, tweet out screenshots of these conversations. And again, people just kind of laughed at it like it was a fucking joke. But some girl that I have a very public falling out with tweets out four or five screenshots and all of a sudden it's not a fucking joke anymore all of a sudden it's not a fucking joke anymore how does that make any fucking sense it literally doesn't make any fucking sense now i can't blame all of this on this girl and i can't blame all of this on the people who crystal Sapphira says random small streamer gothic mommy chick yes i can't I have fault in this too. Um, I made myself way too fucking accessible for a content creator with a platform. I made okay. Now too fucking accessible. this is this is this is big. This is big, and this this is like I think that um, he's actually uh, on to. I think he's on the right track here, right? Um, you gotta put some line between yourself and your audience. I get that it's different when you're a smaller content creator, right? When you're um, streaming to four people on uh, on Twitch, it kind of feels like a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know where the line is, but I feel like at a certain point, you've got to draw a line between yourself 
and your audience, right? That like sliding into somebody's DMs, especially if there is some sort of interest, right? Especially if you are saying things like goth mommy could get it, right? Is is like inappropriate. Like when you're a, a you know, a hundred K um uh channel like like tipster is, right? There is gonna be like an imbalance there. And uh any any sort of like you know relationship that uh you're pursuing even uh you know to so, like i don't know it's it's weird right because there's there's probably like you know um exceptions and you know it doesn't mean that like you can't like you know there's something about that like one-on-one -on -one interaction when you're talking about like a larger um streamer that is like it's it's inherently slanted in terms of the power relationship that doesn't mean that like if somebody dms me on uh on twitter that i won't re i won't answer them right but I i'm generally not going to try to you know you know strike a of a conversation like with 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 you know somebody uh dming me i've i found it necessary to draw that line and the times where i have uh, have like you know failed to draw the line you know it's it's always kind of um it's it's been a bad thing accessible i was way too trusting of people i'm the kind of guy that i wanted to be friendly with everyone uh i wanted to uh you know see the best in people uh i wanted to fucking uh i i didn't want to think the worst of people and so i gave a lot of people access to me that i probably shouldn't have and that's my fault that was a learning experience for me like let me tell you this whole situation has made me extremely fucking jaded like on the plus side, it's given me a, an I don't give a fuck attitude, which is a good thing when you're in this community. Um, and it's, if I didn't have trust issues before, I fucking have them now. Um, but yeah, I made myself way too fucking accessible. Uh, a lot of you guys may have saw, I deleted my Twitter. I deleted like my Facebook, my Instagram, like all my shit, just because like I use those platforms to make myself way too accessible to people. And I can't fucking do that shit anymore because look what happened. I was having private conversations with someone I thought I could trust and I couldn't fucking trust them. I had to learn the hard way to make myself less accessible to people. And it's unfortunate that it had to be like that. The other thing I learned is that, you know, just because someone may be okay with these kind of jokes doesn't mean they're... I mean, do you remember when Xander Hall was talking about... So, I do want to... Do you remember way back, like, I don't know, it was in December, the Xander Hall Keffel's uh, drama where, where Xander Hall, like, started talking about the fact that <clears throat> Keffel said something like, Xander Hall, I don't think you have friends, or something like, like implied that, Z that the Xander Hall didn't have friends. And Xan's response to that was like, listen, I can go in my general chat on my Discord right now and, like, get, like, you know, like five friends right now like right and it was just kind of like wait a minute what 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 you can recruit friends from your audience is that what you're saying i mean i guess you can but um interesting that uh he said probably shouldn't have Like, I think my my initial, um, you know, disposition, right, uh, coming from being an extremely uh, small streamer chick, right, back in the day and, and literally having an audience of like four people uh, for, for, you know, a short amount of time, like ha has been to be a little bit slow to, to recognize that that is a line that needs to be drawn and, and like how important that is. And I've had it. I've had situations, right. Where, like, you know, for instance, if somebody's, you know, DMing me and I'm DM DMing them back regularly, that, that sets, it sets up an expectation that then when I get busy and I can't DM them, you know, they, they get really disappointed. I've had people, you know, kind of blow up on, uh, on me for things like that. Like some of the, you know, drama, you know, in my community has, has come from, you know, people that didn't quite, um, perceive like the the line that I try to draw between you know audience and uh, and a content creator because you've got to understand that uh, you know uh, the sort of um, like we all enjoy like parasociality in some way, but I feel like it's got a real downside to it, which becomes apparent when 
there's not a realization of the difference between the content creator and the person that steps away from the screen, right? That that's where it really comes down. Like interacting with uh, somebody as who they are on stream is a uh, you know it's an it's an illusion, right? It's, it's different, and uh, and I feel I feel like you know like Colleen Ballinger, right? You know Colleen Ballinger's like weird group chats, you know what I mean? With with like a bunch of like I don't know like twelve to I don't even know how young the people were, but right, she had these like group chats that uh, you know where she just like hung out and like oh god do, do we need to watch the colleen ballinger thing again will i get in trouble if i um will i get copyright claimed by like i feel like there was some pearls in here Okay, we'll do the Vosh version just to make sure I don't get copyright claimed. Hey, it's been a while since I saw my face. I haven't been doing so great, so I took a little break. This always makes me sad. A lot of people are saying some things about Lee that are... Okay, wait. Let me try to come to the part where... Oh, here we go. This is, the p this is what I'm talking about, right? I used to message my fans. Uh, but not in a creepy way, like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way. But I was just trying to be besties with everybody. It's kind of like uh, when you go to like a family gathering. And then there's a weird aunt there that keeps going up to you and going like, Hey girl, what's the tea? And we're like, uh, That was me. But in group chats with my fan. It was weird. I've been sharing my life online for over 15 years. I've poured my heart out to you, and because of that, I feel like I'm talking to my friends. But, but in the beginning of my career, I didn't really understand that maybe there should be some some boundaries. boundaries. Yes. There were times in the DMs when I would overshare details of my life, which was really weird of me. I haven't done that for years, you see, because I changed my behavior. And I took, took accountability. accountability. Okay, there we go. That's that's what I'm trying to get at, right? You know, there's there's actually some wisdom in that song. I say that. If there's anyone else I've made these kind of jokes with and you felt uncomfortable by them, I apologize for that. You know, it was never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable when so I made these kind of jokes. Here, so if I have ever made these jokes radicals. to you, if any of you guys happen to be watching this, like some of my friends that I've made these jokes with and I've made you uncomfortable, I sincerely apologize because that was not my intent at all. Not my intent at all. So... I don't know. That's really all I have to say about this. It's it, it was a really fucked up situation. I think that this. Oh shit! Uh, I haven't been checking uh, shorts chat, and I should have been. Uh, Vodka's got some insights on uh, T channels versus drama channels. Uh, Vodka says T channels, and again, chat. I'm sorry that like I want to unify the chats. Like I want to, I want to, I want to be like everybody to talk to everybody else. Uh, hopefully, eventually, YouTube will implement that. But right now, what they do is there's two separate streams, right? There's one stream that's you know. And, and because of that, I, I can't put, I've either got to put like the main chat on uh, Twidget or I've got to put the um, shorts chat on Twidget. I can't put both for whatever uh, reason, but I do try to read both chats as, as much as I can. It's a lot for me since I have ADHD. Anyway, let's just read what Vodka has to say here. T-channels are called that because they're mostly focused on the makeup community influencers that uh, were... Quick to make 10 minute long videos on a trivial shit during the drama get in, which proved to be lucrative. Okay, so you're saying that it's like you could see it's an outspilling of of like make the makeup community. Uh and and there there was like drama. Yeah, because there's drama in every community. That's the that's the thing that makes drama kind of weird, is that like, you know, it, it like you could find like tech tips channels and there's gonna be drama there. You could find Minecraft channels. Well, we know about the drama in Minecraft channels. There's too much drama in Minecraft channels now. All the drama's coming up from uh the Minecraft uh, channels, but um but yeah, this is uh the the T uh community per se, right? Is you know something that if it's like an outspilling from the Makeup. There's no difference uh, when the com commentary community uh, does the same shit. Is what is Tipster a wannabe boogie? Um, 
God, that's a deep question. I don't know that much about Boogie. Um, Conquistador? Conquistador? I, I, I don't know. I don't know, actually. I don't know enough about Boogie to say that for sure. Uh, Vodka says, Tipster was a big name in the commentary community until he decided to leave for quote-unquote mental health reasons, only to join up with Caffles after an entire year of the community uh, going to war with her. Yeah, essentially, I feel like it's this, right? That um, Tipster... It, like, okay, so there, there is... <sighs> I don't want to paint with too broad a brush, right? Because we got the drama community, we got the commentary community, and it's not all the same thing. You can't like be like commentary. So you mean like Dom Tom Dark, right? Well, no, uh, Danny Gonzalez is not like uh, Tom Dark, right? There's you can think of you know you can think of commentary channels that are that are not like that, right? But there are there is like it's a, th a recurring theme that there is like a, a like a, maybe a meanness and a bullying that is kind of part of the commentary community uh you know sometimes it kind of goes both ways sometimes it's just people with a beef or a rivalry that bully each other right but in this case like tipster you know after being part of the bullying became the target of the bullying and and which which is kind of like you know if you're going to do that kind of commentary you got, you got to sort of accept that that can happen, right? You got to roll with the punches. And uh, Tipster didn't want to roll with the punches. So instead, he found a community that, like, perceives those people as a threat in, in a way that he could sort of get away from his reputation, right? That he's got, he doesn't have a reputation with, uh, you know, leftist channels, which I guess Keffels used to be way, way back. It's funny to think of Keffels as a leftist channel because it's just like anything but these days, but... Um, she, he's looking for a new start essentially, but he still wants to like talk shit about the commentary community. Of course, when you do that, you're going to add fuel to the fire, right? Anybody in the commentary community that's getting big numbers off of making videos about tipster is going to then take what tipster says about the commentary community and be like, take a look at this, take a look at this. He's still obsessed with, you know, uh, whoever. And, 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 you know, that's, that's kind of what happened, right? No one says butterfly clip. Woo having errors uh subscribing to your channel no that's not fair maybe it's because you're called no one maybe maybe youtube doesn't realize that you are a person which it would be terrible um wait what happened delight loves movies i was subbed to over 400 channels and now only 104 youtube uh changed something um i've heard people say this also, uh, welcome, Captain Conundrum. Thank you for the follow on Twitch. Where are we at? We're still a ways away from the top of the hour ad break. Uh, the group chats where she'd use minors as therapists through her divorce. That's yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's what happens when there's no boundary, right? You d you definitely don't want to be like you do not want to be, um, you know. And I mean, I guess like you know the, the the place where their confusion can come, I think, is like really early in your career. Right. When you are um, not even expecting to become a public figure in any way. And, and a, a, to a small degree, you know, you do become some sort of niche micro celebrity. And th th within a certain community, there is like a power to that. If You don't recognize that power and you don't like, you know, draw boundaries, you know, accordingly. Then, yeah, you you could end up, you know, do, doing exactly what V's talking about group chat where uh, use minors as therapists through her divorce yeah you that's that's you hate his voice well it's okay it's an AI voice of which you can hate even more but for other reasons too uh do you have an elevator pitch for my I feel like I'm on a job interview chrono true I feel like I'm in a job interview it's it's difficult to say right because like with a live stream and we're trying to talk about Tipster. We're trying to go through the origins, the lore, right? For those who don't know, what is the deal with Tipster? Why do so many people make videos about him? Why up until very recently were you unable to find a Tipster's channel by typing the name Tipster in there? Because there were too many videos on like Tipster Exposed and and, and stuff like that. But yeah, my channel uh, is a commentary uh, channel. Like I guess it would fit into that, uh, that niche, uh, so to speak. Uh, we talk about... Uh, politics. We talk about uh, commentary. Uh, we talk about um, YouTube. I I don't know. It's like uh, uh, vodka says the commentary. But good good thought though. Uh, maybe I should develop an elevator pitch because that's like a like a, what is it like an eight to fifteen second um summary right that when you're going like on a job interview like right let's say that you're uh you know going for a job interview and um 
you happen to get in the elevator with somebody that's like the you know head of hr or the head of the company right somebody that could get you hired right and they take an interest oh what are you here for oh i'm interviewing oh what are you interviewing about well you know now you got eight seconds before that elevator door opens to try to tell that person uh why maybe they should you know intervene right because you know a powerful person that you might be sharing an elevator with could be somebody that can talk to hr or or who is hr or whatever and uh you know make the hiring process so much easier than the whole thing of like you know submit the application then you come back for the interview then you come back for another interview and you come back for another interview right if you get somebody's attention that's powerful in the company they can be like no 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 fuck that fuck that we don't need eight interviews we're gonna we're going to hire this person because I talked to them in the interview and they were cool. Vibes were immaculate. So uh, anyway, yeah, it's kind of strange how much uh, how much how much doing a stream can feel like a, a job interview. Sometimes uh, commentary and drama are not the same, but they are merging together slowly. Yeah, just me's got a good idea here. As uh, long as they uh, they're as they input their personal opinions and uh, there is not many facts, I consider it drama. Try you're gonna try subscribing with another account. Yeah, we'll see if it works. Uh vodka says commentary and drama is the same. Diorio, Tipster, Augie, Blow Blacks, Bo Blacks, and the rest are drama commentators. But everyone just calls the sphere commentary and have been doing it since the leafy days. Oh my god, Leah Leafy. Uh that that comes up. That's gonna come up in a second when we watch the um we're gonna watch a little clip to introduce Alec Gunter for anybody who's uh, your mom says, uh, YouTube has been removing subs. It's weird as fuck. Twitch does that too. Twitch does that too. I, there's, there's people, and I'm not going to mention any names, right? Uh, just in case they, they really are that indecisive, but there, there's people that I see like that follow me on Twitch. And then a few days later, they'll follow me on Twitch. And then a few days later, they'll follow me on Twitch. Now, I don't know what that is. It could be they're indecisive. It could be they come in here and they follow me and then I say something that pisses them off and they unfollow me. But then I'm talking about something that they like, like tipster. So they follow me. You know, like, who knows? Right. Uh, so I'm not going to mention them by name. But yeah, that happens on uh, that happens on. Um, that happens on Twitch, that happens on YouTube. And it's annoying. It's very annoying. Why does the YouTube show me these? <laughs> Are you talking about tipster? I'm sorry that I'm covering tipster, uh, Joe Canales. Much love and support. Yeah, good good luck. I hope you're I hope it, it lets you subscribe because that's ridiculous that you're having trouble subscribing. Uh oh yeah, you were able to subscribe. Nice, nice, good job. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna get to Anna Kasparian in case that's what you're here for. Uh we are we're 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 working our way uh for towards there. Right. I'm trying to start in on my unified tipster theory, right? My uh you could call it like a uh a tipster cube of sorts, right? It's a, it's a theory of uh, tipster tivity about how um, everyone is, is tipster to someone or something. And therefore, um, tipster is the tipping point. Like, right, it all like what we're talking about is like quantum theory, for instance, and um, Newtonian uh, mechanical physics, right? And uh, the people have not been able to resolve these two. But I feel like we've got the answer. We've got the, you know, the answer is tipster, right? We can bring it all together uh, by 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 understanding uh, relativity with with tipster. Got angry at me based on understandings on both sides. Now that I'm kind of reflecting on this situation, it looks like there were things I said and things she said that we both misunderstood about each other. And it's unfortunate that it kind of got as far as it did. Um, and it's unfortunate that a friendship end ended. But it kind of is what it is. And uh, this is kind of where we're at. So I just wanted an opportunity to share my side of things uh, because in this whole situation, you know, they got an okay. opportunity to share their side and I haven't really got. So I feel like we got through the goth mommy drama thing. I want to give you a little um, intro to, uh, you know, we, we got a little bit of Alec Gunter earlier uh, talking uh, with Tipster. Uh, but this is this is what he kind of got famous for, right? Alec Gunter uh, blew up and it's not for his uh, Jubilee uh, appearance, which we'll be watching later today. We're going to be watching uh, Alec Gunter on uh, Jubilee. 
He's uh, one of the white liberals that they got to come on and debate with the black conservatives, which I don't know. We'll talk about that, too. We'll talk about that dynamic. Um, and uh, or or the uh, Matt Walsh, you know, him, uh, you know, yelling over Matt Walsh at a uh, event, the Young America Foundation event. Uh, right. You know, these are the things that Alec Gunter wanted to blow up for. He unfortunately did not blow up for these things, but instead he's blowing up for this. Let's take a look. How old is this guy? He looks underage. He looks like he's like 14. Okay, you take it up the ass like when, when nobody's looking and you you deny it at every point when nobody even brought it up. You're like, what do you mean in the ass? And they're like, I, I, I asked you what you wanted for dinner. OK, well, just so it's clear, I did not get in the ass like that. That's the look that you're giving off. How's Mrs. Tip think about that one? What? Dog, where's your husband? Dog, you're 14. Shut up. It Go back to school. Highly... Like, he, he looks like he's 14. Some 16-year-olds look like adults. The problem with pedophilia is not finding somebody who is underage attractive, okay? If you find somebody who happens to be underage, who's like 16 or 17, attractive, that's not a big deal. It is not a fucking... Yeah, yeah. So V says homophobic, right? And that's an issue. That's an issue when you're talking about, like, a leftist content creator, right? And like he goes for a dunk against uh, Lyrix uh, because Lyrix is doing a video uh, on Tipster, right? So, you know, like this is this is what happened. Alec decided like Tipster's pretty cool. I want to be friends with Tipster. I want to get to know uh, the tip. And, uh, you know, like like he's kind of trying to become like, right? So, uh, you know, a as uh, Tipster is to Keffels, right? Um, Alec Gunter wants to be to Tipster. Right. The tipster, you know, he essentially is trying to be like the I don't know, the white knight for for tipster. Right. So he's the tipster to tipster. And that there's something there's something kind of weird about that. Right. So he's um, found this video by lyrics. Do we all know lyrics, 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 commentary, uh, content creator? I don't know that much about him, but yeah, he did a video, you know, like everybody does videos of, of tipster exposed and uh, Alec Gunter found it and decided he was going to clap back on Tipster's behalf. And in doing so, what are his criticisms? A, that Lyrix looks 14 and, and B, that Lyrix looks like he quote unquote takes it up the ass, right? It's not just homophobic, it's also bottom shaming. And it's weird coming from a, a dude with like a trans like heart on, on his shirt. Big deal. If I go up to somebody, some chick that I think is attractive, okay, and say, hey, you know, you look great. Why don't I take you to dinner sometime? Okay. And then she turns around and says, hey, I'm 17. I'm here with my mom or whatever. And she's in the other store. You know, if this guy who already looks like he would fit makeup very well, makeup and a dress, I, I, I'm, I'm serious. Like he look, he would look good with makeup and a dress. Not kidding. Maybe you should try it. You know, now I know that you are a virgin. I get that. But now that you know that, maybe so. Yeah, just a, a little, a few more facts about um, Alec Gunter. He is a um, you know self-styled uh, leftist, a former conservative, and uh, also a uh, a big a big Vosh supporter, a big Vosh defender. Also uh, has his website on Vosh's network. He's a, a white leaf uh, creator, right? Which means that the server that Vosh uses for his website for VGG is like also used by orbiters of Vosh and Alec is one of these orbiters. So uh, now we've, we have gotten a community post from Alec after the uh, the lowly horse incident where he says like he really can't defend uh, Vosh. Uh, apparently he's banned discussion of Vosh in his community and he, he's basically saying like give him a little while and he'll decide maybe he's going to distance himself. Um, he's still on Vosh's server. He's still he's still he's still using that white leaf uh, website as far as we know. So, yeah, he hasn't distanced himself, uh, you know, at least financially um, from Vosh. So next time you can avoid making this dumbass comment that only a 14 year old would make. All right. Not only do you look like one, you also think like one. What? But I wanted to end off this video on one good note with one final statement Obvious from Tipster joke. himself. When you got a coom, you got a coom. I coom. What? This guy doesn't coom? Is that? Yeah, he goons. He's Alex Gunter. That's your problem. You got big ass blue balls, man. Go, go whack one off. I promise you'll feel better. Maybe do it to uh, somebody fucking your ass. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the look, Chud Dunk, Chud Dunking is fine, but when you're doing like homophobia, ugh. 
in order to dunk on a chud, which I, I don't know, is, is lyrics really, uh, I don't know. There, there's just so much off about this. There's so much off about this. Uh, not uh, not as off as the top of the hour ad break, which will definitely make you feel off if you are having to spend three minutes watching ads on Twitch every hour. That really takes you out of it. That's really sometimes you even get the same ad twice in a row, right? If you've been uh, upset by that, if you've been bothered by that, if you've been, uh, dare I say, triggered uh, by the uh, top of the hour ad break, just understand that it is somewhat optional, particularly if you have a Twitch Prime, right? If you got a Twitch Prime, uh, you've got a free sub to give to the streamer of your choice. If that happens to be me, then you will no longer see ads in my channel. Amazing how that works, right? You can also get out of the ad break by paying $5 to Twitch to get yourself a sub. You could also possibly get out of the ad break by being gifted a sub. That can happen too. That can happen. That does happen. That is more likely to happen though, if you are active in the chat. But yeah, mods, thank you for, Jules, thank you for letting me know. Uh, Alex Gunter, that's what we're dealing with here, right? Uh, this is, you know, a new uh, a new tipster just dropped a, a tipster to tipster. And this is going to fit into my general theory of, of tipster relativity or my uh, unified tipster theory is what we're we're working on this chat. Eventually, I'll bring you um, a full uh, Pepe Sylvia chart complete with red yarn, tying this all together and making it all make sense for you and letting you understand why Anna Kasparian is the tipster of turfs. Why Chud Logic is the tipster of anti SJWs? Why I might even be the tipster to someone or or something once we figure out what that thing uh, is exactly. Uh, anyway, let's get into the uh, the meat and potatoes. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this right now. I can't quite do the Chud Logic voice, but I feel like I sound a little bit Australian. Uh, I just want to take a look at this and see what we can find here. So this is middle ground, right? This is a Jubilee show. Uh, this is Alec Gunter. Wait, can you see? You can see part of it. I have to scroll. I have to scroll. Uh, um, so just so you can. That's Destiny. That's Alec Gunter. They're going to be on Middle Ground together. What's Middle Ground? Middle Ground is a show by Jubilee. And uh, Jubilee is a, a shit show a panel, right? There, it's, it's, it's a panel show. Uh, it's terrible. It's a train wreck. It's hard to watch. It, it tries my patience uh, every single time I have to watch it. And uh, I would say it's a little bit right wing too. They don't acknowledge that they they're trying. They, they would they present themselves as like we are the middle, especially middle ground, as like you know this is a place to come and talk about you know our differences and try to work them out and try to understand each other, right? In in reality, what they're doing essentially is like anti SJW content, meaning meaning that if you are Destiny, right here, or you are Alec Gunter over here, you are the lol cow. You've agreed this you're you're coming on Lolcal Live. Let's call Keemstar, right? Because that's what you're on. You have agreed to be the laughing stock. You have agreed to be the point of interest for the show because that's what Jubilee does. And like, look, I you know, there, I think some good people go on Jubilee. I don't think that going on Jubilee, you know, means that you are, you know, I don't, I don't know, complicit in any way or or, um, you know, that that I don't want to make fun of like everybody who's been on, on Jubilee because I know there's been some good people that have gone on there thinking that they can make a difference and not understanding who Jubilee's audience is. Scroll down to the comments, right? If you want to understand who's watching these videos and you're going to find a bunch of right wingers being like, yeah, that fucking detransitioner was awesome based base shapeshifter, right? You know, you're going to find stuff like that. It's good. That's who the audience is, right? And that's who they're playing to. And so when you come on their show, even if it's called middle ground, it is not middle ground. It is dunking on the uh, blue haired. Let's to go back to destiny. The, the blue haired SJWs, you know, are going to be the subject of uh, of much uh, derision. And uh, in this case, uh, Alex Gunter in his Hunter Biden hat in his Dragon Ball. No, it's not Dragon Ball. It's uh, One Piece. How how dare I mix up um, two uh, great anime legends? But uh, we're going to watch a little bit of this. Now, there's a, a conservative video that got put out on this, right? Like, like a right winger made a video about this, too. It is like, despite the fact that it comes from a right winger, a pretty good expose on uh, Alec Gunter. I don't even have that much of a problem with their critique, despite them being, you know, very different uh, ideological, uh, ideologically uh, from from me because a lot of the problem with alec gunter's appearance on this is in what attacking the black community that some of these 
like um you know uh, black conservatives represent he ends up doing just classic white liberal racism in in so many ways right and they call him out on that and they're, they're right to call him out the only thing that i really have a problem with, with is where they call him like autistic and shit like you know what i mean there's 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 a few points in the in the video that i'm just not uh super appreciative uh to so i wanted to give this is the source material that the channel has i don't know that's four hours though okay so just for let's let's take a look at this wait 45 minutes that's how long the um debate was right that's how long the the middle ground was and uh we got we got four hours and six minutes my question is this this all okay maybe he talks about some other stuff let's see we do it looks like uh he's doing it looks like he's doing about an hour and 30 minutes of uh you know reacting to his own uh debate here I don't know, chat. We might we might have to go. Uh, we we might have to watch the other video just to get through this. But this is gonna be wild. This is gonna be yeah. Get ready. buckle up, buckle up. Get your tea. Get your snacks. Um, get your four twenty blaze it. Get whatever you need. Whatever you need to enjoy uh, this debate because or, or I don't know. I don't know how much we're gonna enjoy it. We'll see. Into my editors and the amount of time that it takes to do this stuff is very much not worth the money that is being generated. Okay, we've got to get the word out. Okay, so go tell all your friends Hunter Biden 2024 shop on Etsy. Okay, I'm linking in the chat. Go get your merch anyway. Okay, enough dawdling. We must get to the meat and potatoes. Oh, I said it. Did I call it or did I call it? I'll, actually, there's your ad break now. Fucking God, I'm so nervous. I am so goddamn nervous. All right. Let's do this. Oh, boy. Oh, I already left a comment because I was just like, I'm going to watch it first. Yeah, I left a comment. I was like, oh, boy, I can't wait to see how this turned out. I'll edit this comment as soon as I give it a look. Thanks so much, Jubilee, for having me. So... I can only imagine what the replies are like to that comment. Nice to see a young black woman like Destiny speak for her people. Oh, that's so good. Uh, what a banger comment. Fantastic. Here, let me put this up here. Banger comment. Yes, Ufmi is indeed famous. This is correct. Hold on. Why is the, uh, why is the chat doing that oh for some reason the chat on screen is really delayed i don't know why i'm hoping you use good logics against them we'll see we'll see I, i'm okay before we begin a few uh what do i want to say you know uh, what, no we... uh zane uh Akwe says american politics aren't mainstream the way you think they are uh globally actually yeah i mean i, I you're not being rude. No, you're not. You're not. Um, that's a perfectly, um, I have no disagreement with your comment. Again, let me do a little dedication. Okay. This is dedicated to all of my viewers out there. Viewers like you who make this show possible, uh, just by being here, I don't make any money. Well, I do make a little bit of money, but the amount of money that I pay into my editors and the amount of time that it takes to do this stuff is very much not worth the money that is being generated. Okay. So I very much do this for passion. I do this because I love it. I do it because I'm an attention whore and I'm trying to. Okay. Sorry. I'm not trying to dunk on a fellow small streamer for small streamer problems. Here we go. I love this guy, uh, not so very fond of her, and I'm neutral about this guy. Neutral about Destiny, uh, not so much, right? We've got a, we've got a picture of him standing with Destiny at the Progressive Victory canvassing event. He was part of that, apparently. I've heard some bad things that he's done, but it's nothing's personal. Anyway. Apparently he changed his mind. I was chosen to read the following prompt. White Americans have way more advantages than black Americans. Okay, here we go. I think I'm a rarity here. It would seem so. Do white Americans have more advantages because they're white 
Or why Destiny look like a divorced dad? Uh, he does kind of carry that energy, doesn't he? Or do just white Americans have advantages because of historic factors? Um, I think that people there's want to the boy. There's me. The I'm blocking him. Look. Look at my stance. Even the camera was like, well, you know, this guy's too great. We have to put him in the foreground. <laughs> He's tall. Me is tall or he is tall. Destiny? Because I'm the tall one. That's awesome. Uh, no, what's really awesome is down here, if you look at this in the corner, in fact, I'm going to have to move this around so you can see this on the uh, Shorts channel, Destiny White Liberal. I feel like you should go with that. That's that. that that, that, that describes everything. Or not, I take up like 50% of the frame while Destiny's past, talking. And that's how it kind of carries over to today. Also, is the video loud enough? I feel like it's a little too quiet. Even in times of the United States history where black people tried to build wealth. Let me know if there's any technically the, the, the technical difficulties. Where, yeah, they, that this wealth has been destroyed. And something that's upset. <laughs> I look so unimpressed. I'm not looking at him as though he's wrong, though. Um, like, I agree. Jesus is a king and he loves you. He's a king and he loves me. And he wants to spend eternity with you. Is he good at snuggle? Is he a short king? That's what I want. Is he? Is Jesus like a short king? Um, we can't blame the past for what's happening in the present. That is true to some extent. But then the next breath, they'll talk about how important it is to have dual. I know you're a big man, but damn, you're huge. Thank you. I'm actually the shortest of my brothers, if you can believe that. Uh, I have a sister who is my height. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Ohio Germans, man. Okay, I don't know if we're going to get through this. I, I hate to do this, right? I purposely avoided wa uh, watching... Th there's so many videos about Tipster, right? There's so many videos of, about Tipster that come at it in a mean way. Because like I said, uh, the commentary community, the uh, drama community, there's a lot of bullying that goes in there. There's a lot of ad homs about people's, you know, d d different aspects of like who a person is that don't really... Like the, the problem with Tipster is, is how he acts, what he does, what he says, right? That's the problem that I have with Tipster a lot of times. With these commentary videos, you get it mixed in with a bunch of ad hominems. I'm not really interested in that. I'm not trying to, you know, dunk on uh, Tipster or Alec in in that level. I was trying to find, you know, a video that's not, you know, uh, like I was hoping we could watch this. Um, it's just it's just gonna be long. It's gonna be really long. Maybe we'll do it for a premium streamium when I have more time. I, I I'm afraid we're gonna have to go to the other video on Alec Gunter, not the video by Alec Gunter. This is the one that everybody's been watching. This is the one from the, you know, Alec Gunter, um, Jubilee. Let's see if we can find. There it is. Coming up on rhetorically. Okay, so I'm going to caution you, right? There's some low blows here. I'm going to tell you what they are and I'm going to debunk them, right? Because like as bad as this performance is, as misbegotten of the whole idea of, of going on a middle ground uh, jubilee panel called white liberals versus black conservatives, right? Some of you in chat, we can't forget Anna. That's true. Yeah, Anna's coming up next. Um, so the, um, wait, what are we at? Are we at, we're at hour two. Okay, we should be, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll make this short and sweet. We'll make this short and sweet. Some of you might know already, right? Why? You should never respond to a solicitation of like, hey, uh, we're doing a white liberals or white leftist or white lefties versus black conservatives panel, right? Some some of you might have figured it out, right? In the 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 crux of the matter is, uh, you know, these people's conservatism about their own community, right? Dis disagreement with with other people, you know, in 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 their community. Some of some there's probably like a non-zero amount of self hate mixed in here too with with black conservatives. But who is the right person to call that out? A white liberal? I think not. I I think not. And I feel like there's very few uh, white liberals that can engage with people like this without some implicit bias coming out, right? Um, I, I think that implicit bias, especially anti-blackness, is uh, extremely common. I feel like it's not, it, it's also present on the left, unfortunately, right? If you're talking about like Vosh's community and, and Destiny's community, it's very present on, 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 on those parts of the quote-unquote left, right? And, and so, I mean, there, is this a setup? 
this is a setup. This is an op, right? And you responding to this shit to get your name out there, which is this is what Alec Gunter is trying to do. He's come along, you know, after Vosh, after Destiny, trying to follow in their footsteps and trying to get himself some attention, trying to blow up by going to these real life events. And putting himself out there and then like getting, you know, like Vosh or Tipster or whoever to react to the video to be like, oh, look at this. This is me going after these uh, black conservatives. Right. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, like, the, like, <laughs> there's so much wrong here. And, and like, I am going to say that I, I think that there's it's it's not just like you know, you'll see some mistakes that he makes here. But I think that the whole thing was a mistake. I think that him agreeing to be on this like was a mistake. And, you know, Alex is Alex getting he's getting played here. He's getting played. So let's take a look and uh, watch this and we'll get to Anna Kasparian, tipster of the turfs after this. Effective. There's no meritocracy yes, in this country. Is. You look at Elon Musk. He's destroying Twitter. There's no meritocracy. That's ridiculous. Like I said, <laughs> They're all really judging me. Look at them fucking staring me down. Fuckers, dude. Fuckers. Fuckers. OK, so now right there, right there in the in the sizzle reel, right? That's a spicy clip. Does it look does it sound to you like Alec just uh, called these people the the N word? That's what the person making this video wants you to think. Now, I am good faith and I am going to like just. I'm, I'm going to start that uh, I'm going to debunk this from the start, right? He says a different word. They they mute the beginning of it. And it makes it sound like he, he's saying something different here. Anyway, you're, you're, it's, it's clickbait, basically. Fuckers, they fucking hate me. I have a savior complex as an older brother, and I will save you whether you like it or not. So that's just me. You want to be a savior. Like, so in other words, chat, he's bad. He's cringe. He's, he's getting, you know, played by a jubilee in this video. But he did not say the N word. He did not say the N-word here, right? He didn't do a strategic, uh, you know, N-word a la, a la Vosh. That's one way that hopefully uh, Alec will not follow in the footsteps of his hero Vosh. And you're using me to make yourself feel good. That's, no. That's what I'm How I am I hearing. hurting you? You're, you're not letting me have my own voice. You're not letting me speak. How? You're speaking now? No. You're cutting I, her off. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I feel like I have to. This isn't about love. This is just about making the world a f***ing better place. This isn't about me personally loving this bitch or this c okay? Like, I don't love these people. I hate these people. A white man elevating himself above a black person. I'm that's he what called happens. me a bootlicker. That's, sorry. That's, that's what, he called that's me a bootlicker. Oh, no, I what, triggered what, them all. I'm sorry. She approached me in the parking lot after we finished. Is it true that that Alec guy was calling one of the black conservatives a bootlicker? Yes, but I think they apparently they edited that out of the Jubilee video. Earlier in the conversation, this guy revealed that he has six friends who are police officers, okay? And he says that like these police officers like quit during the the black lives matter shit right or some shit like that and i was like the black lives matter shit right or some shit like that and i was like geez six police officer friends that's that's a lot right that's a lot of police officer friends so he said this and i replied with my guy you have six cop friends i guarantee you there are six very clean sets of boots right now so he's So like the reason that we're seeing this is because Alec felt like this was an epic dunk that he got on these black conservatives, right? You got six cop friends. I bet those are six very clean sets of boots somewhere, right? You're licking their their boots. You're cleaning their boots with, with your tongue, right? And they took this out. Jubilee took this out either because they thought it was like too offensive or that they you know, thought that uh, it, it portrayed Alec in a, in a bad light, right? Uh, even Destiny kind of recognized they're, they're, they're sort of like saving him from that. But what we're seeing is from his um, his review of his own debate. And, you know, he's like, oh, I can't believe that they cut out. They did me dirty. They did me dirty. I, I fucking owned this guy, right? He doesn't get that, like. Calling a black conservative a bootlicker is is not is not pushing the needle in the way that you want it to right you're just kind of confirming like you know what what even you know um you know black conservatives will say about white liberals is that like you know there's 
in 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 it in it like attacking uh, racism or, or attacking like self hate, right? From black conservatives, the, the the racism like comes out, and like I said before, implicit racism is pretty ubiquitous in uh, like American society, especially like in the form of anti-blackness. So right with uh with almost any you know white liberal, white uh leftist, white moderate, um you know there, there's gonna be like a non-zero um level of implicit racism. So I'm saying that this debate is set up. From the very beginning, from the very beginning, as, as you know, like it, it, as an attack on the left, right? And like, you got to recognize that. You got to see that, right? And the person that doesn't see that, unfortunately, is Alec Gunter. Is, is somebody who, that unironically, and you're going to see what he says, right? Unironically calls himself a white savior. He's peeved that his joke that the black man cleaned these cops boots which means that he licked them clean which means he's a bootlicker he's like they didn't include me dishing out this banger line of this black guy licking these cops boots clean because he's friends with them i can't be i can't believe they would leave that out they really they really screwed me over by not leaving that in maybe they were trying to help you alec and they took that out of the final cut Oh my God, they did me so fucking dirty. All right, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll get over it. And he said, they took out your bootlicker zinger. And I'm like, I know, I know they did. I'm so pissed. Ah. I see, I see you once again, uh, ele elevating yourself above the rest of us. Bitch, you are a bitch. You are a horrible fucking monster. Okay, fuck off and particularly at me, a white man elevating himself above a black person. That's he what called happens. me a bootlicker. That's, that's, sorry. That's, that's what, he called that's me a bootlicker. Oh, no, I what, triggered what, them all. I'm sorry. I, I'm oh, sorry. I'm, I'm okay. chilling, buddy. Yes, so you are. The black man says, I'm not triggered. I'm just chilling, buddy. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Not I'm okay. chilling, buddy. Yes. But Alec keeps him in place by letting him know, yes, you are. Well, it's just so funny. Even in his even in his response, even in, even him reviewing his own debate, right? He's 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 losing it. He's losing it on this, like, you know, like when somebody is polite, but, but maybe wrong. And your response is like, this, this woman, but now there are, that's your response. And your response is, but now there are communists invading radicals. No, when somebody's like, you know, being polite, even if, you know, wrong, right. In a debate and your response is. This is a bitch. She's a bitch. She's a fucking monster, right? I don't know. It's just like, I don't know what optics you were going for here, but this ain't it, chief. You are triggered. No, I what, triggered what them I all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm chilling, buddy. So what I hope comes oh, out of this chilling. conversation is that we're all Americans. I'm very glad that they kept that in where he addressed the hat because it's so obvious that that triggered him. You know what I mean? Even if they themselves are a black person, they're, oh, they're just a self-loathing black person. They're yeah, calling her a bitch and a monster is, uh, yeah, way too far. And it's, it's so, like, I don't know. Racist black person. If they disagree that with prosecutor me, they're racist. That doing his job. That's, that's my policy. If they disagree with me, they're racist. Yeah, that was supposed to be a joke, um, but it didn't land. People disagree with you. They're racist yes. just in general. I was just kidding. He's just, yeah, yeah. Uh, you never know. Just like that. Kind of Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? She she is so good faith that she's like, he was kidding. He didn't mean it. You know, she's not a, she's not going for his jugular, which is massively exposed here. Right. By the very nature of this of this panel, by the very nature of this panel, he is exposed here in, in a way that I don't think he even recognizes that he is. Right. This is um, this is bad optics from the very beginning. This is the, the only way to win, Alec. This game that Jubilee has challenged you to is literally not to play, right? You, the the uh, the white liberal is not the person to criticize the anti-blackness of the black conservative, right? There are <laughs> this is when you need to like Vosh. Oh my God, if I can find this clip, does anybody know what this clip is? Vosh talks about like the idea that uh, th that he thinks that that leftists think that there is a racial bonus to uh or, or or like you know like like an rpg thing right that like uh same thing one s s thing said by a white person uh you know it, it's the weakest attack ever then it gets said by you say the, the a black woman says the same thing and it's boom 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 like critical hit right and he bitches about this he, he complains about this he's like that's 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 terrible that's bullshit i'm saying the same thing i should be able to uh, say the same thing and and it, it he doesn't recognize that it's like you you don't even have the insight to say the same thing right there are people 
calling there are black people calling black conservatives out all the time right and they the problem is that often they don't have a platform uh, a black conservative like you know candace owens for instance right will get an audience will get a platform uh you know with uh you know with conservative with you know racist white people a lot easier than a uh you know a black leftist is going to gain a platform with white liberals and th there's your problem right there there's there's an example right where the fact that um that 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 you know black leftists don't have like the same reach by virtue of them being black right they 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 don't they don't um you know it, they they don't get the same exposure as as like a, a white person uh, saying the same thing, and that actually hurts the entire movement, right? So Vosh will present this to you as you're hurting the entire movement because he's the edgy boy messiah, and he's getting he's getting hamstrung for the fact that he's not a black woman, right? For the fact that he's not like more of a marginalized person, right? And that he's got the answer and he's got the solution and he's got all the lines, and if we'll just let him cook then we'll be good. And he's wrong. He's wrong. There are people that we need to let cook. There are people that we need to platform. And, uh, you know, he's got a, he's got a, a, a much less uphill battle than like, a, you know, a, a black leftist trying to make it in like the, you know, in, in the world of political content. I'm sorry. You made no, a point. Yes! You made a point. I, I don't know where that, oh my God, I got to find that uh, clip to show you. Uh, uh, I really don't care what you think I am. Yeah, Ram says the white moderate will free black people. I wish I had, like, direct- I wish I had backfired, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. It definitely backfired. I know you meant to say fired back, and you're so cocky and think you're so smart, but you don't realize how much of a lol cow you are, and you were like, yeah, you know, I wish I had backfired. <laughs> how is this real? Uh, I really don't care what you think I am. I wish I had like direct. I wish I had backfired. You know what I mean? Grew up conservative, but I the did have. That was actually smug and 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 cringe from the uh, the maker of the video. Oh my god! I can't believe you said uh, you said backfired when you meant fired back. It's pretty cringe there. Yeah, no. I mean, so like. Oh, they're so pissed. About, like, I have six children, and uh, two boys, four girls. And uh, <clears throat> all of them went to. I feel so bad for them. This oh, fuck, They're all judging me. Look at them fucking staring me down with that. So, do you remember the beginning? Do you remember the beginning where it looked like uh, Alec was saying the uh, N word, uh, was yelling the N word at these people? Dude, daggers, daggers, daggers. They fucking hate me. Okay. That that's what he really said. That that's what that's what he actually said, right? So yeah. I really care about homeless veterans, right? That's, like that's just you a don't you don't support. Idea. You don't know me. Like all your arguments. <laughs> he tells the black guy that he doesn't care about homeless veterans. <laughs> okay, but you don't really Precisely. care about homeless veterans, right? And then when the black guy says, "You don't know me," yeah, you don't know me. Like he just starts laughing and <laughs> he just starts laughing. You homeless. don't know I feel like me. You're all your arguments. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, that that's always going to fail. That's always going to fail when you accuse a, a random stranger of not caring uh, about, you know, like a, a certain issue. Right. You just you, you there's no way like you don't have anything to go on. Right. If this was somebody that does content. Right. And, and you're familiar with this content, then, yeah, maybe you could be like, oh, you know, I can show where you've never talked about this issue once. I can show where you've been dismissive towards this issue. Right. This is just some dude. Like I, I say that, though. And, and I realized that I might be wrong. Uh, Jubilee also has a habit, right, of, uh, you know, like I said, they put their thumb on the scale for the right because that's their audience. One of the ways that they do this is a lot of times they'll bring on a um, conservative the person who has more media training, who has more expertise, who is like not just some dude or just some chick, but it's rather like you know, this is not just some person, right? This is somebody that is, uh, you know, engaged on social media, somebody that's kind of a ringer, right? Because like the idea is supposed to be we get random people from different backgrounds, we put them together and we see if we can find the middle ground. And that's not really what they're doing. They are they are putting their thumb on the scale. And you can tell that in the their recruitment, right, of uh, very often they'll have like a recruit. They'll recruit like public uh, figures from the right and they'll recruit Alec Gunter on, well, who technically, you know, trying to, you know, trying to grind his way into that uh, Sigma lifestyle. So mad! Ah! Oh! I did so good. I so mad! Ah! Oh! I did so good. The color of our skin. I mean, as Martin Luther 
King said. <laughs> he also yeah. did not like capitalism. I think something that's really. <laughs> She's so pissed! Ah, look at her! Not by the color of skin. But Democrats are gonna fucking slave on it! I hate these people. This isn't about love. This is just about making the world a fucking better place. This isn't about me personally loving this bitch or this cunt, okay? Like, I don't love these people. Did I earn this position myself or did my ancestors' suffering earn this for me? And too, I've seen it in the- Who fucking cares? I, I love how the black guy is like, did I earn this position or was it given to me? And Alec comes in with, who cares? Why do you care? You come from thousands of years of cave people. What do you give a shit? Your ancestor suffering earned everything for you. If your ancestors hadn't done what they did, you wouldn't be here and you certainly would not be enjoying the fruits of their suffering. Regardless. So again, I don't think that that's what um, Alec was trying to say here, right? But he he opens himself up. He puts himself in a place where, you know, all kinds of you know, because of the amount of implicit bias that he is already showing, it's really easy for the person making the video to put like a little extra to, to add a little extra on there because it's already, you know, it's, it's already there. Right. Uh, I don't I don't think he was trying to say that. I think he was trying to say that. Um, that when, in him saying who cares, right, he's trying to say um, that I anything that somebody gets from a program like affirmative action is going to be a drop in the bucket compared to um you know compared to the institutional racism that they're facing so so there's a point even where where alec isn't necessarily um you know i mean he's not he's not it's not a winning um you know take it's not a winning uh statement to say who cares right that kind of just makes it sound dismissive but uh, i don't think he's trying to say what the words that the uh, the person making the video is putting in his mouth, but it it makes it so easy for for the person making the video or anybody on the panel uh, to do when he's dis displaying so much, you know, just like white liberal bullshit, right? It's really easy for people to put other white liberal bullshit on him as well. Or black, white, or whatever. Okay, D you. It's and again, Alec, the, with with this kind of shit, the only way to win is to not play, not play this game. Do not play Jubilee's game live in a society that began being built like thousands upon thousands of years ago they all suffered for your benefit that's such a stupid way of looking at this that's such a weird way to say it it's like why the fuck do you care i mean the black guy cares that's what the conversation is about affirmative action and i love how alec makes up an awful argument and then goes what a stupid argument that is that i just made up what an idiot but let's get a little more intimate with alec let's see where this all started and how far he's come in his political journey. Uh, sometime during college and then afterwards, especially during COVID, um, my sister actually indoctrinated me into uh, a more leftist uh, position. And uh, I overcorrected a little bit. I started becoming pretty cringy as far as like, you know, sit down and let, you know, let the minorities all talk, right? Um, don't say anything, don't speak over them, et cetera. They would, you know, it was like the whole, you can't speak over Candace Owens, even if she's literally a Nazi kind of thing. So, um, He's literally, that's Va, that's a Voshism. He's literally pulling this from Vosh, right? This is literally like what Vosh says. Listen to black people? Listen to which black people? Do you mean I should listen to Candace Owens? And it, like, he's confusing the, uh, like, listen to with, uh, w w with like automatically agree with, right? Nobody's asking you to fucking agree with Candace Owens. Like, you know, one of the most like mask off, like anti-Semites in the fucking uh, world right now. One of those prominent mask off uh, anti anti-Semites and, you know, like, right, you know, yeah, Candace Owens is full of shit, but if you're trying to speak on issues involving black people, you're not going to do a good job given the fact that you don't have that lived experience. You can look at, you know, this from the outside and, and try to make some kind of meaningful comment, but your comment's always going to be missing, um, you know, what is essentially the text for the subject and the text exists in you know the uh in, in the in the life experience of, of of people who have actually lived that life right that's what that's what listen to black people means not like agree with candace owens but like alec thinks he's cooking he thinks he's cooking he has seen vosh do this shit and he's gonna do the same shit and he's gonna expect it to kill the way that it does with vosh's audience the way that it does with 
you know, Vosh's, um, you know, naive liberal audience, even though that's not the audience that you've got in front of you. That's not that's not who you're dealing with on this panel. I he's so mad. He's so mad. Ah, he's so mad. I'd, I stand by that. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of leveled out, thankfully, and I'm less cringe now. And... Did you? Are but, you? Do you do you see what he's saying? He's like, before I used to be like the kind of person that would like, I was an intersectional leftist until I watched Vosh and I realized that's cringe as fuck. And and obviously, you know, the Nancy Pelosi shit, the performance, uh, per, per, performative. Um, you know, uh, you know, like like bowing down and stuff like that. Yeah, that is cringe, right? White guilt, in general, is is cringe, right? But there's two ways that you could take that, and unfortunately, Vosh's way of taking that is that like, yeah, I should just not feel. Uh, I should just deny the 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 guilt, right? What you need to do is kind of like understand the guilt, work through that guilt, and and recognize that if you don't do that and you, you just do this like performative thing, right? It's fucking cringe. It's fucking when, when it's just like a pure symbolic virtue signal of like, oh my gosh, I am uh, benefiting from all this privilege, and uh, you know it's 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 hurting. You know, I I don't know. Nobody needs to hear that. Nobody needs to see a white liberal center themselves in the in the oppression of black people that's fucked up okay but like there's two ways to handle this and and like unfortunately vosh's way takes you in the exact um opposite uh direction yeah. this is level yeah. out imagine if we would have been here a year ago you yeah. can, i mean maybe maybe i am even destiny's dunking on him we did it boys we found it pure raw uncut autism I don't know. Oh God! There we go. Much lower. His See what I mean? This is this guy. The, the guy making the video is not good. Um. Yeah. Self awareness or the affect in his fucking face. They argue that it's more racist nowadays because it excludes so many Asian Americans from getting into universities. Right. Yeah, totally. They deserve a spot, and they can't get in because of affirmative affirmative action. Which, again, like you were saying. See, but that's, that's not, not true. true. They don't bar people who have higher qualifications from getting in. They don't do that. Student who self-identifies as Asian will need 140 SAT points higher than whites, 32, 320 uh, SAT points higher than Hispanics, and 450 SAT points higher than African American. Okay, so now he's looking at this like th this is what. Uh, so so what? Uh, what they try to do on Jubilee, on uh, I think spe especially on, on Middle Ground, is that when people are arguing about something, when people are talking about something, they'll try to find some relevant facts about that matter and put them up on screen but you see alec gunter here like you know it, encountering this discourse for the first time there may be a way to dis to debunk you know what uh what middle ground is trying to put forward here but that would involve more research ahead of time like right before he goes on before he goes on and uh you know less ego like like less centering himself less putting himself in that position uh you know painting himself as, as like this white savior right like this this would uh but y you can see where his interest lies right you can see that like what he wants to do is like um be seen as slaying the dragon right Th these you know black conservatives um you know they're 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 wrong they're cringe uh, let me go and uh, argue with them, and I'm automatically going to be seen as as a hero for doing that, right? That's not how that's not how it works. National study of college experience. Well, I don't know enough about that, honestly. They don't bar people. Then why are you on? Why did you go on this debate panel? People who have higher qualifications from getting in, they don't do that. I don't know enough about that, honestly. Why do you assume that? Just because there is a disparity means it's because of a oh, shit. issue. What else would it be from? Bitch! You are a bitch! So if you're going to what get the rid fuck? of action, what's the replacement? The meritocracy. Replacement is people need to There's no meritocracy yes, in this country. You look at Elon Musk. He's destroying Twitter. There's no meritocracy. That's it's ridiculous. Did this squid really just say, you think meritocracy exists? Look at Twitter! Because I would posit that the people who are least likely to have good outcomes in an academic setting are those who have to work. So I think I get what he's trying to say there. You know, uh, meritocracy is, is bullshit. 
Uh, you can see examples of, of people that have gotten to very high places, that have a lot of power, that have a lot of influence, people like Elon Musk, and they're not necessarily the most competent people in the world. However, like, that argument takes more than just look at Elon Musk, right? No, nobody knows what you're saying. Households, how important it has it is to have a strong family, to have responsibility. Power, I got to work out child. again. I've been and putting it off. The past that oh, sorry, the captions are way too big. The process has been severely disrupted. The funny thing is, is that agreeing with all these things is when I did my research when I was younger, which arrived me to my standpoint of being a conservative because I believed it was racist democrat liberal ideologies and policies oh uh, yes dating all the way back to the oh yeah he's a vax public. rebel i didn't say anything about the shirt but i did have people say things about the joe brandon or the uh, hunter brandon we have the 1960s and then it's really oh no it i'm like what's going on what the wrong video is playing there we go let's we're back two jobs these are the and, and have other stresses in their life they can't afford a doctor they can't afford a dentist they can't afford anything i had to do so that too though those are the that's people that's not just black people it's not just but like, it's over and that's the liberal by the way that's the other fucking liberal chiming in there she's like well, look here's the deal here's the deal like i said this is a uh this is a panel where the only way to win is not to play right black conservatives versus white liberals especially talking about issues of race is is inherently you know slanted against you right and you know it's it's done that way on purpose it's pleasing their audience right they want to see you fucking get owned they've set this up in a way where you're going to get owned and you're getting owned so hard that your own side like destiny you've seen destiny do this too right in an attempt to sort of like say i'm not with him because you're so cringe and you're like literally sitting in the center of this whole thing, right? You're the just like the they're trying to get away from the blast radius as you're getting nuked, Alex. And 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 you know, I mean that's that's what happens when you go on Jubilee, right? That's what happens when you try to use these like uh you know, these 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 events to sort of jumpstart your uh streamer career so that you can be uh the new Vosh, Vosh uh, 2.0. Oh, no. Oh no. It turns out that like <laughs> It turns out that it doesn't work for um, it, what works for Vosh doesn't necessarily work for Alec. I had to go through that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I was really hoping they took this question out. I went to sit down for this. No, 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 no. Don't do it, man. Don't do it, man. No. I think that President Trump supports. Oh, thank you. Wait, did they show what the um, the question was? Uh, does President Trump support uh, be black? God, okay. Oh. What is he saying? Oh. oh, man. So he thinks there's something cringe that he did that got cut out? I think they took out my Trump impression. So I don't see why someone would think that President Trump doesn't support black lives. Okay, so yeah, does President Trump support black lives, right? This is what... I've heard him say... No! It's a, no, no! Don't do this to me! No! Oh, God. So it's funny that out of all the stuff, all, all the fucking cringe that he posts here, this is the one thing that he's actually feels some shame about. Oh, God. It's going to be so bad. Oh, God. OK, just just play it. Uh, just he do knows it. all the best black no! people. He has all the best black friends. I, I do support black people all the time. Uh, so sorry, that was a very bad impression. But um, okay, it wasn't. Okay. That I, don't bad. Think okay. I don't think. Don OK, yeah, two things. Nobody has a good Trump. Uh, hardly anybody. Have you seen who they've got playing Trump on Saturday Night Live? It's fucking cringe, right? Uh, the, yeah, I don't know. Like, who has a good Trump? Maybe Hassan. I feel, I feel like Hassan can do Trump. Not, not many people can do Trump. And secondly, it's not as bad as you think. And thirdly, compared to some of the other things that you've said on here, no, this is not this is not what you should be worried about, Alec. Wasn't that bad. He's been speaking horribly to this black man the entire time and keeps calling him triggered after the fact. And look at the look in his face. Imagine how brave you have to be to say this to this black person's face because you're a leftist and he's a conservative. Isn't that so brave? Like Trump, he's an attention whore. He does the attention whore thing better than Elon Musk does. OK, let's just put it that way. He's like Elon Musk light kind of he's like a different flavor of Elon Musk. All, he he made all of the he made the economy good and so the economy then impacted black people. <laughs> he did he did do the things that make the uh, economy go go line go up line go up For white people latino people he made the it, economy it good everybody. baby but trump like who's the economy good for right now like if he made the economy so good why is it currently we are listening this is a little confusing for me i'm trying to place this in time i think that this uh interview or sorry this uh jubilee yeah seven months ago is when this video got made 
Uh, let's look at the uh, seven months ago is when uh, Jubilee posted the black conservatives versus white liberals. I, I think that this is what this is 2023 when this happened. And it's just it's just kind of weird to me that. He made all of the he made the economy good. And so the economy then impacted. <laughs> he did. He did do the things that make the uh, economy go go line, go up, line, go up. White people, Latino. People, he made the it, economy it good, everybody. baby. But Trump like. OK, I mean, like, look, there's there's something that you could attack, right? Trump has a net loss of jobs. Biden has a net gain of jobs. They both presided as president. You know, during uh, you know, relatively the, the 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 height of the the pandemic, right? There there is actually something that you could say here, but look where he goes. Who's the economy good for right now? Oh shit! Oh shit! God, I mean, I know it's a tipster reference, and we're all tired of it, but it's it's it bears repeating, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is a little bit of a complicated uh, matter in, in the fact that um, what do we mean by the economy, right? Because the standard thing that you get is stuff like GDP or, um, you know, figure, figures that have been massaged, like uh, even an unemployment rate, right, is, is a can be a little bit deceptive in that, you know, it doesn't measure um, everything about like the quality of the jobs that are available. Uh, you know, p job seekers who have given up on um, on trying to find jobs are omitted from the unemployment rate. Right. There's a lot about the unemployment rate that can make the economy seem uh, better than it ever is. And there's no reason that we can't have full employment for everybody that wants a job. There is no there's literally no reason that people can't work like 30 hour work weeks or something, you know, less than than 40 hours. And, uh, you know, I mean, like, this is the thing that you can achieve, not not with, you know, not even like necessarily with like, you know, uh, you know, socialism or anything like that, but with a uh, more, um, you know, a stronger uh, regulatory um, regime uh, of the government. Right. But instead, he's just like, who is the economy good for? Right. I mean, like compared to Trump, it's 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 better for everyone I, I still don't think it's good enough and i still don't think that biden is doing enough right but uh, you're like i'm not the one that's out there um you know canvassing for for the dude i'm not the one telling people you know who are disgusted by biden that they have to vote for him or else the evil trump will get in even if they're like they're like look at watching their tax dollars go to uh carnage that's going on in, in gaza right i am the one who's telling biden that he needs to be better if he wants to attract those voters back right because it's a lot easier to put pressure on a politician than it is to try to scold and shame voters who are disaffected disenchanted and frankly disappointed with somebody that they thought would be better um to, to vote for them again yeah if you want if you want if you want trump to be less likely to get reelected, right then it's incumbent upon you to you know help convince biden that shit is not okay that he cannot sail right he's not he's not winning like he's he's dead even right now uh with with trump in the national polls losing in a lot of battleground states right um, you know, the, the Hillary's big problem was that she assumed that she had victory and she didn't even go to Wisconsin. So but anyway, anyway, yeah, he's missing the point once again. Like if you made the economy so good, why is it currently we are listening to why are we talking about like uh, this is what I like if this would if this debate took place in like, you know, years ago, if this debate took place in like uh, 2021 or uh, 2020 or something like that. Like I could totally understand what he's saying. Right. The, the economy. um. But it's it's weird how he's actually facilitating. Like, I don't know what Trump taking credit for the recovery. I don't know what he's saying. Right. Like what? How, how are we linking these things together? Leftist right now process how the economy was good under Trump and now under Biden. It literally wasn't good under Trump. It's bad. We, this is the cognitive dissonance that has to happen to understand that. No, there's a there's a cognitive dissonance in in like, you know, uh, the perception of uh, things like, you know, like, like there's a classic like political question that gets asked. Right. It's it was more common, maybe, um, you know, in the 80s and 90s. But the idea is I, I, think, I think this has even been part of political campaigns. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? Right. 
Trump made the mistake of invoking this question. And Biden actually turned around, you know, to his credit and made an ad about it. And made an ad about it and reminded people of what exactly was going on four years ago. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Anyway, anyway, it's just weird to like have to like come behind these uh, anarcho Bidenists and 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 tell them how to correctly, you know, advocate for uh, the guy they're riding with, right? Wait, it's getting better right now, right? Under Biden, like oh, well, there we go, there we go. Came, yeah, labor union action stuff, but like oh, I mean, when Biden took office, the economy was in the shitter. Granted, it was in the the midst of COVID. To be fair. But it's not like it was so it was it was like doing so great right before COVID either, right? I'd have to look into it. And I was like, yeah, no, that's fair. I'm pretty extreme leftist. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm I'm not gonna back off of that. But I don't really care about the label. I just I believe in things that are good, and that's it. And then George Floyd dies, and initially oh, I was like enraged, like everybody else. And then it started to, you know, initially I acted normal about it, and I was like, yeah, maybe the police shouldn't kill people who are overdosing on fentanyl. How is being enraged about a news story normal? Especially during a global pandemic, as if you didn't have other things to worry about. Also, the cops couldn't have known that he was, I'm glad you said, overdosing on fentanyl. Also, George Floyd was six foot four and Derek Chauvin was five foot nine. Oh my God, see, see who we're dealing with, right? This is somebody that's got like some really, really bad takes. This is literally something, somebody that's trying to convince like this, this fucking piece of shit making the video. Is somebody that thinks that, like, what, Derek Chauvin did nothing wrong? Like, people had no reason to be upset with the, the murder of, uh, of George Floyd, right? It's so bad that this dude is getting dunks on, on Alec here. Like, when his, when his takes are so bad. That's like a fantasy fight in MMA, and George Floyd would have to know virtually nothing about fighting, and Derek Chauvin- Oh, okay, so I guess it's uh, justified for the police to keep on murdering- All right, all right, dude, this is, uh, <laughs> there's cringe on- This is the- this is the problem, this is the problem, like, when I have to uh, deal with something like this where, like, you know, there- there is- Everybody on here is fucked up. There is no one like good to 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 look at. Oh my God, Soul Life! Thank you for the five gift subs. Dusty Den, Computer Bailey, uh, Jesse, and and maybe uh two other people. You just got weasels. Uh, Advin, you got weasels as well. Benabel, you got weasels. We the weasel army is growing. Uh, thank you, Soul Life. Thank you so much. Right, you can support me in a number of ways. Uh, one of those ways, uh, Soul Life just uh, pointed out by gifting weasels, by gifting memberships to other people in the chat. That only not only helps me, but it helps out your fellow chatters. If you're on Twitch and you gift subs, that actually helps out. Oh my God, Soul Life says like the video. It promotes the stream. This is true. These are true facts. These are true facts. This is, this is, um, so, uh, yeah, the, um, yeah, the other thing you can do is, uh, if you gift subs on Twitch, right, it not only helps me, it not only supports the stream, it no not only allows me to keep coming to you with more content, uh, weekly and daily, uh, but it also, uh, lets, it, it gets people out of the top of the hour ad break, which is, where are we at right now? Oh, shit, we are, oh, shit. God, every time I say that. Oh, shit. Oh. That's right, we gotta hit the tipster button. Um, so yeah, the top of the hour ad break coming at you in, it looks like 10 minutes or so, 10 minutes. We're going to have no, maybe like less than that. Right. Um, so yeah, this is your chance to possibly get out of it. If you're over on Twitch, remember that if you don't have a little face by your name, you're subject to the top of the hour ad break. And that means three minutes of ads, possibly even repetitive ads. I've watched other people's streams, gotten ads and uh, seen the ad, same ad twice in a row. So if you don't like that sort of thing, if you want to get out of that sort of thing, you could do it possibly even for free by using a Twitch Prime sub. If you have Prime, you've got a free Twitch sub. You've got one to give to the streamer of your choice. And if you give that to me, if you give that, um, you know, that sub to me, it actually means a lot because I know you only have one to give. And uh, that well, that basically makes us besties at, at that point, right? You can also get out of the sub by uh, get out of the top of the hour ad break by paying five dollars to Twitch to get yourself a sub or um, possibly you might be gifted a sub over on Twitch. Again, 
uh, you're more likely to get uh, for that sort of thing to happen if you are actually active in the chat, because that way people will see your name. They'll see that it doesn't have a um, face by it, and they might take pity upon your soul. They might take pity upon your soul. Anyway, let's um, get... I would have to know virtually everything about fighting for that match to happen. Initially, I was like enraged like everybody else. And then it started to... You know, initially I acted normal about it. And I was like, yeah, maybe the police shouldn't kill people who are overdosing on fentanyl. Maybe that would be a good thing to do. Uh, or a, a good thing to stop. But then I was like, no, actually, I'm going to be a bad person. In second grade, when they taught us about slavery, almost every kid in my classroom would spend their entire time looking at black kids in that classroom. Oh, How was I supposed to... Yeah, actually, Roland in uh, Twitch chat is uh, making a comment that I don't know if you think I would disagree with this, but I th the economy was amazing uh, before. It was so peaceful. Oh, my God. But now there are freaking communists. communists invading radicals. Yeah, it was the economy is great until uh, Antifa arrived with their communist invading uh, radicals and they literally burned everything down. All the American cities, right? They're burned down now uh, thanks to Antifa and the, the communist invading uh, radicals and... Uh, Anyway, anyway, chat, this is, um, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack when we talk about an economy in terms of, you know, who's responsible for an economy. There's a tendency that Americans have to credit the president in power for the current economy, despite the fact that we should know that these things are going to be like a lagging uh, indicator. Uh, that being said, also the metrics that we have to go with as far as um, as far as things like GDP, things like um, the, you know, uh, unemployment rate are a little bit they're, they're kind of suited to supply side economics, like essentially like America has been brain broken ever since Ronald Reagan. Reagan proposed this idea, a narrative, right? And we've dealt with narratives before. What are the, what's the deal with narratives? Well, if it's just a narrative, it's fucking bullshit. There's no proof to it. There's no substance there, right? It's just a story that somebody is selling you. Somebody tells you a story and if it catches, if it, so if it sounds good, like you might believe it. There are fucking aliens in, uh, in Mexico and they showed them in front of the Congress. Oh no, they're not. Those were little sculptures that somebody made. Oh, well, that's not as interesting of a story. I want there to be aliens, right? So supply side of economics is one of these stories. Now, George H.W. Uh, Bush, the father of George W. Bush, actually ran against Ronald Reagan in the early 80s and called what his uh, his his policies voodoo economics. Now, like, you know, that the, the racism inherent in, in that description aside, what Bush was saying was that Reagan was proposing mechanisms which wouldn't actually help the economy, but which just sounded like. Right. You could tell in. You, yeah. You know, what? here's the deal. OK, rich people, job creators. Right. So where do we want to give the money? Do we want to give the money to poor people? Poor people, you don't create jobs. You're 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 parasites if you're poor. Right. You're like. Right. And the, it's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite. Capitalism is a mecha mechanism of parasitism. By which the rich prey on the poor. Far from being job creators, the rich are labor exploiters. They are fucking you on both ends, right? In terms of, that sounds way more sexual than I mean it to sound, but in terms of that you're getting your uh, surplus um, like labor value extracted, um, you're never getting paid the amount that you're contributing towards your uh, work, right? And you're also paying... Uh, more for products and services than than the actual value of those products and services. What is the what is the missing piece? That's profit. That's exploitation, right? So yeah, it's it's more complicated than than uh, people want to think. And you know, me going back and trying to correct um, Alec Gunter's um, advocacy for for Bidenomics is a little bit misbegotten when I myself uh, have a lot of uh, a lot of criticisms for uh, you know, the modern uh, Democratic Party and. And uh, and and Bidenomics and and like liberal um, liberalism in in general. That's why I'm not a liberal. That's that's why I am a post capitalist, right? That's why, you know, I I, I recognize that um, I recognize that capitalism replaced feudalism as a means of production, and that was a good thing. I don't hate capitalism. 
I'm not, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not about that, right? It's, it's better than some other things. It's better than feudalism, which, which is exactly what the far right wants to take us back to, but they can't get back because there is no getting there from here. You can't get to feudalism. What you get to instead is fascism. When they're promising you return to the good old days, when they're invoking Ronald Reagan, uh, when they're in invoking the golden era of America, what they're really selling you is a fascist future. But I, I would like to see uh, us as humanity move forward and evolve, right? Just like Twitch is always evolving. Maybe we could evolve the means of production into something better than capitalism. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be clear cut. And I don't have all the answers. All I can give you is basic bitch theory. But I feel like basic bitch theory is kind of necessary in an environment where there's no class consciousness. The very first step to any sort of revolution is, is class consciousness, realizing who you are, what you do, where your interests are, and where your interests are not, right? And so much about supply-side economics, so much about neoliberalism, neoconservatism, so much about all these bullshit capitalist political philosophies tries to convince you that your interests are akin to those of your boss, to the people exploiting you, right? And I'm, I'm here to say that they're not. I'm here to say that they're not. I'm here to say that we need to recognize that what we have in common as workers, instead of instead of being tricked by the right wing into focusing our hate and anger on the immigrant, on the criminal, on the unhoused person, or or on the uh, on on the like trans person or whatever whatever kind of whatever kind of um, enemy they want to throw up there to focus your anger on, it's always a distraction and it's always capitalism in a uh, decline trying to get you to you know attack each other instead of instead of attacking the the exploitative uh mode of production that we're stuck in right now anyway uh that that aside i did not mean to get into uh theory today but not think wow, it just happens it just happens every kid in my classroom grade. understood the context people so. hate feeling uncomfortable <laughs> obviously you don't want to see feel like when they give anecdotes just Fucking make shit up. That's exactly the opposite. Lie back. Just lie back. Just say no. In my second grade class, they all understood the context. We learned about slavery and everything was hunky dory. So now what? Now what? Now you have nothing. I thought that I came off looking pretty damn good. I think I did a pretty damn good job. And I think that those little snide remarks that I make were perfect for this, this format. If you're going to it would have been so nice to see Alec um, review his own uh, debate and, and start to learn something. But it's just self-serving. It, it's just a self-serving, like, ego self-suck. That's all we're seeing. To, you know, if you're going to, like, get a point across in a format like this, what I've learned from this experience is... All we're seeing is Alec Gunter give sloppy toppy to his past self. Those little quips are perfect because you don't have a guarantee that anything that you say is gonna be kept in. So if you like get a word in while somebody's kind of on a monologue, you just like throw a little quip in like, okay, but you don't really care about homeless veterans. Um, I think that that works very effectively. Of course you think that, but let's see what other people think about your performance. Why do you assume that just because there is a disparity means it's because of a racial issue? What else would it be from? I mean, no. upbringing, economic abilities, desire skills. to see this is the this is the point that if this wasn't if this was black leftist versus black conservatives these these people would get destroyed right go desire to I mean, so there's some there's some self-hate here is what i'm saying but like I'm not the person to call out that self-hate, and Alec is not the person to call out that self-hate. Destiny is not the person to call out that self-hate, right? The person to call out that self-hate is somebody uh, with a lived experience uh, of, of being black, right? That That's what is needed here, is unfortunately the thing that is not, like, the, 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 the thing that is not allowed in this debate. Because we got black conservatives versus white liberals. And the voice that needs to be heard from here 
is missing and i think it's purposefully missing i think that uh that jubilee set this up on purpose right to satisfy their right-wing audience play a lot if you grow up in a neighborhood that experiences a lot of trauma you're not as likely to do as well in school which means you're why did they grow up in a neighborhood that experiences a lot of trauma i mean lots of people do and you could sit around for as long as you wanted with your girlfriends talking about roe v wade and talking about overthrowing the patriarchy in the hope that one day you might get your pee pee touched she gave one Pipi touch. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, okay, well that's uh, that's uh... everything called um I think it's called fuck your face with facts on Oh no 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 sorry. It's not that that he actually can't see anything but racism. So the name of the show that I'm on is called um I think it's called Fuck Your Face with Facts on Oh no 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 no, no. sorry. It's not that one. It's not the fuck your face with facts and logic episode. It's called Middle Ground. That's the name of this show. It is wild to me. It is wild to me that even Destiny is is picking up on, like, you know, Alec Gunter's fuck up here, right? And despite that, despite the fact that Destiny absolutely roasts him in, in Destiny's review, because Destiny, you know, somebody else likes to uh, taste his own sauce too, and that's Destiny. Destiny's reviewing his own... A debate here honestly he's got to fill con he's got to fill a lot of content right so he's got to do something so he's he's reacting to his own debate here but even he is giving it to uh to alec gunter and yeah you know he's the name of the show is middle ground okay when you go on the show they tell you don't attack people let people speak our goal is to have a conversation and to try to find middle ground because that's the name of the show okay you can kind of see maybe why my intonation and my approach to the episode was a little bit more conciliatory than I would be on the fuck your face with facts and logic show. Okay. He's wanted to do to my people. I mean, and you know, you got the difference between De Destiny and Alec there, right? Where Destiny is like, yeah, no, I will be uh, conciliatory. I will be conciliatory. I will, I will, I will lay back and let like Jubilee do what they want. Uh, you know, use me as, as, as a wrestling heel. And, uh, cause I know the rules. I know the rules. And, uh, that's why I feel so strongly about it, because it is these policies that date back centuries that were built off of the death and poverty of my people. OK, so you, you this is something that we're sort of missing. Right. And this is you know what we don't get from not watching the whole debate panel. Uh, what Chandler is arguing here is something similar to some like I don't know if Dinesh D'Souza was like if this, you know, if Dinesh D'Souza was the first to use this line of reasoning? I, I suspect not. I suspect it's like a tradition uh, of seeing like social programs by, uh, you know, th through like LBJ, um, th through that that era of, of Democrats as as being a an attack on the black family, a as being a a evidence essentially that there's a continuity through the Democratic Party of old, in other words, the Confederate Democratic Party, the Dixiecrats, right, um, and the uh, Democrat Democratic Party of New, right, and that continuity is is racism. That the um, essentially, you know, social programs are, are a gender uh, gender a gingerbread house by which to uh, destroy the black family. I feel like what's needed once again is a strong black leftist voice, but instead we've got Alec Gunter. We've got Alec Gunter instead. Take a breath. So, sure. I'm breathing. Okay. Oh God, this guy's so condescending. Oh my God, he's so condescending. Oof. I just don't understand why you think affirmative action has accomplished its purpose. I don't see that. Um, why How is it affirmative action's job to completely and totally fix everything? <laughs> like, is that is that our standard for? Do you assume that just because there is a disparity means it's because of a racial issue? What else would it be from? I mean. This guy also is constantly trying to dialogue tree race realism. I don't know if how much that'll come through on this, but in the entire thing, he was constantly trying to dialogue tree. Well, if it's not that, what else explains it? Is it black genes? Is it black genetics? Is it black? Like constantly. What's the replacement? The Meritocracy. Replacement. So yeah, I mean, the what Destiny is. Uh, so if you don't know what a dialogue tree is, because you're not debate brained like uh, like Destiny or Vosh, like let me explain it to you. I've experienced this myself in my uh debate with um are, are relevant which um 
you know, the, the debate where our relevant was trying to uh, compare something like uh, gender self ID to essentially trying to compare uh, trans people to blackface, just really offensive shit that he did. But um, in order to try to get me, this is what they do, right? A, a dialogue tree is a series of questions. It, it's a it's a uh, simulacrum of the simulacrum is probably the wrong word here. It is a uh, it is supposed to seem like the Socratic method, right? It's similar to that, but with with a, a stated goal and and maybe with logic that's not actually sound, right? That's what I found in my uh, debate with our relevant on this subject um, that. Uh, you know, there, there was there were things wrong with his logic. I tried to point them out to him. And since he's using a dialogue tree, like, I, and I'm not playing along, you know, with this game, it's like, okay, so this is just like this, right? And I'm like, well, no, actually, this is not right, just like this. Because in fact, uh, not all forms of oppression are the same. You can't equate something like transphobia, um, you know, especially the, the transphobia that, that I experienced to something like racism. They are inherently different. They are not a one-to-one -one thing. If you want to make a comparison, of areas uh, that they're where they're parallel, where they're similar, you've got to denote the start and the stop of those areas because they are not, in fact, the same thing. It is not the same kind of thing. And you know, if you want proof of this, just ask a, a black trans woman. Uh, you know how the experience of of um, you know trans massage in OR, uh, you know, differs from an experience of, uh, of of just you know transphobia, right? It's a it's a different thing. It's and it's important to understand that. But a dialogue tree is essentially a, a, an attempt to walk you down a line of logic, say this is this is true, right? This is true, right? This is true, right? So therefore, don't you agree with me on the thing that you disagree with me on? And like every single step along the way, every single uh, question of like, don't you agree with this is an attempt to give somebody a, a choice of evils between um, going down the line where they're closer to agreeing with your viewpoint or biting the bullet and saying something truly odious. And that the bullet that our relevant was trying to uh, get me to bite on was the Rachel Dolezal, right? <laughs> Essentially. And it just wasn't logically sound. It just wasn't there. Like he hadn't, he hadn't really, um, you know, he hadn't really thought through this argument well enough to, to make the logic sound. So I got off the, the train before uh, we went to, uh, you know, agreement with, uh, with his transphobic viewpoint, Vil. And uh, and it really frustrated him. And that's that's why he put that thumbnail of me on, which implied that I did agree with Rachel Dolezal somehow, whatever. Anyway, that's in the past. But that's my experience with dialogue trees. That's what Destiny is talking about. He's accusing Alec of doing a dialogue tree uh, to these people to try to push them into endorsing something like race realism, because I think he uh, and, and, you know, he's correctly perceiving like some anti, you know, black, you know, sentiment within uh, these conservative uh, black people that he's debating. But again, I don't think he's the right guy to call this out. I, I think it, 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 it like it, it's set up to fucking make him lose. It's it's set up to cut against the left. Right. And it's set up that way because what do they choose? They choose black conservatives against white liberals. Right. Discussing you know, issues of racism like that is a game where the only way for you to win as the, the white leftist or, or white liberal is by not playing at all. And, um, you know, this is a, an area where, um, you know, different voices need to be brought in to um, combat, combat the self-hate in uh, in these people's viewpoints anyway. But instead, yeah, instead of like, uh, like I said, instead of like a, a, a strong black voice from the left, we have Alec Gunter. Need to There's no meritocracy yes, in this country. Is. You look at Elon Musk; he's destroying Twitter. There's no meritocracy. That's what a he, it's like! So, it's like everybody has the most soy random talking about. It's like, how can I shoehorn Elon Musk into this conversation? Like, bro, little bro, what are we talking about? Why? Uh, Zerus, Zerik says, "Trans massage noir is very different for sure." Yeah, in a way that I don't think that I could ever comprehend. Why? Because I don't have the lived experience. I've never experienced it. I can't experience it. I can never know what that's like. Right. So, you know, if, if that is the question that you're trying to interrogate, I am the wrong person to, you know, bring forward for that panel. And, and the, the right person is probably somebody who's being denied platforms all the time. It's probably somebody who, you know, has an uphill battle to uh, fight in order to just, you know, get the same, get, get close to parity in, in terms of, of reach, especially 
um, you know, considering that all, although, you know, the left is, you know, obviously uh, better than the right, it's not a, a racism exclusion zone, especially when you're talking about implicit racism. There still is, unfortunately, a lot of uh, racism uh, on the left. And, you know, watching uh, content from Vosh and Vosh Orbiters is, uh, it makes that quite clear. How? What? How, well, like, what is the rel- Why? What? Remember when Alex said, I thought that I came off looking pretty damn good. I think I did a pretty damn good job. And I think that those little snide remarks that I make were perfect for this this format. Well, he also said, if you just own the fucking savior complex thing, like it disarms them. They don't know how to respond to that. Because you could see they just turn into a crying, eh, you're speaking over me, eh, please, no, stop. Well, after a good night's sleep and several conversations in the shower, he managed to walk these things back on Twitter. But first, let's hear him really feel good about himself before I show you that. I did everything in my power to get as much screen time as possible, to get as much voice in as possible, to vocalize my opinions as much as possible, keep the camera on me, I'm the star, I'm the one with the right answers. Okay? Yeah. That was my goal, and I did it! Dude, totally. And I fucking did it. So cope and see. Yeah, man, I know. I've also been 13. Look, everyone's talking about me. Half of these comments are fucking about me, dude. How is he not the living, breathing embodiment of the meme of the guy who pees his pants? Rent free. Oh, no. Everybody. And then he's like, haha, rent free. They're thinking about me. Yes, you got up in front of everybody and you peed your pants. And now they're talking about how you peed your pants. What else do you want? I told y'all I fucking did it. I was the star. The next day on Twitter, Alec copes. On my Jubilee appearance, I think I did better than a lot of people would have done under that sort of pressure and in that format. But I was more abrasive than I initially intended to be. And I think that those little snide remarks that I make were perfect for this, this format. A lot of footage used was from the end of the shoot and I didn't have the same jokey energy. Also, Destiny being there was a huge surprise, and I felt like I had to outshine him. While that got me more attention, the trade-off is that I came off looking indignant and self-righteous at times. What I've learned from this experience is, those little quips are perfect. I had some good one-liners and managed to irritate them more than once. Moving forward, I want to put more focus on being funny and poking fun at conservatives rather than acting pretentious. So Alec, you wanted attention, and now you have it. Welcome to the channel. I have Stuttering John, Sam Cedar. I was okay. So this is the person. I don't know. This is like a you know kind of failing uh, right wing channel here, uh, trying to do the same thing as uh, Alec Gunter uh, with the uh, I don't know what Sam Cedar and uh, if you, Stuttering John. I don't even know who Stuttering John is, but they found their uh, liberal uh, lol cows, and it looks like they found one more. Uh, you know, they're not getting a lot of uh, attention, they're not getting a lot of views, they're not getting a lot of subs, but they got more uh, because they had Alec Gunter to uh, point and look at. Now, somebody did ask me earlier, um, and you're not going to hear this right now if, uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Developer, right? Mr. Developer is obviously watching the stream uh, way behind, is, is, is on a delay, so... Uh, Mr. Developer, uh, you're hearing me uh, much later than I'm actually saying this, but you're asking here, how is Elon destroying uh, Twitter? Give an example. That was Alec Gunter that said, uh, that gave the example of Elon Musk uh, being a counterexample of the uh, meritocracy proof that the meritocracy is not real. Like I said, he didn't really unfold that. But if you want to see how Elon is destroying the, um, you know, destroying Twitter, just look at the value of Twitter uh, when he bought it versus its current value now. I was looking for a third channel. Uh, I was looking for a third channel and you found it. Okay, well, good luck. Uh, good luck, rhetorically defective. Um, that's uh, that's all of you that we're going to watch today. But yeah, no, like, I mean, it's, it's terrible when even like a piece of shit channel like this has some valid points against uh, Alec Gunter because he is playing the game where the only way to win is not to play, right? D Jubilee calls you up in general chat. Like, I'm not like, I don't trust Jubilee. I can tell what they're doing. I can tell who their audience is. I can tell how much they put their 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 thumb on the scale between left and right. And, and you know, like I don't want to be part of their propaganda. I, I you know, like I, you, you would seem like a great opportunity. Oh my gosh, you can reach all these people. Yeah, I can reach a bunch of right wingers. 
who can harass me then no thanks no thanks no thanks right it's not a good idea now that being said i'm not trying to judge anybody people can point out in chat and i'm sure they have and they, i'm sure they will um you know other uh you know good content creators who have gone on um jubilee most of them did not have a good time most of them i think wish that they uh, hadn't and especially especially when the topic is black conservatives versus white liberals or white leftists and they're they're asking you it to come in as the the white leftists right that's uh that that is a losing game that is a losing game um anyway um let's see we i want to show you mr developer I, I yeah i can tell that mr developer is not is is behind uh is behind on the stream and is seeing me uh, way later than I'm saying this, but um, I would show you a chart of uh, of Twitter's um, you know value over time, and it, yeah, it's it's going it's going way down, it's going way down, um, and but uh, yeah, we got to get on to Anna Kasparian, we got to get on to Anna Kasparian. This is uh, it's time, right? You've been so good, chat. Uh, you put up so well with me. Um, Talking about a few other things, starting off with tipsters, since I'm comparing Anna Kasparian to Tipster, I might as well give you a little idea of what, a little taste of Tipster's uh, content, a little taste of Tipster's controversies, because you know he comes up so often now. I feel like uh, you know you you deserve to know uh, what the uh, the comparison is, right? Um, we uh, what we went through uh, Alec Gunter's um, terrible debate on uh, white liberals versus black conservatives. And, you know, I talked about why that was a mistake from the very beginning. Like, as bad as Alec did in this debate, as, as much cringe as he posted, I don't think he ever had a chance. I think that the second that he signed up for this uh, opportunity, which, you know, I guess it seemed like an op opportunity to him, um, you know, he's he that that's where he became a tool, a tool of uh, right wingers at, at Jubilee and, uh, you know, just functioned uh, quite uh quite well in terms of, of them being able to expose the racism, which definitely does exist on the left. That doesn't mean that the racism on uh, the right isn't uh, way worse, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a way for them to kind of distract from the issue. So, I have been meaning to get to this for a long time. Wait, did we just get a... a? I can't do it right, chat. Let me, let me. Uh, uh poor person. Uh, super chats, two dollars. Glad I caught the stream. Also, Waluigi is cute. I think so too. I think it's so too. And uh, thank you for saying so. Uh, thank you for saying so, poor person. And I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate your two dollar super chat. Wait, why is it not letting me put it on? Oh my gosh, there's something wrong with my... I would put it on screen, I usually do. It's just not working right now. Let me try something. Looks like I just need to reset my Twidget. Yeah, because I like to put the um yeah, I, I think there's like a limit to like like there's like so like right if you um what, I think it's like $5 or more. If you uh, donate through a super chat, it'll automatically um, put your um, super chat on screen and you'll actually get it read out by a sassy uh, British woman, which is pretty cool. There we go. There we go. Glad you caught my stream as well, uh, poor person. But yeah, I also like to uh, try to put everybody's um, um super chat on a uh, stream because i appreciate it remember chat it's only through uh donations whether they be super chats whether they be super stickers uh whether they be uh getting yourself a membership uh, or gifting a membership or over on twitch uh, getting yourself a sub or gifting a sub uh it's it's viewers like you that uh sustain the stream and allow me to come to you uh, week after week with more 
Uh, often uh, cringe content, but content that's enjoyable nonetheless. Immaculate vibes, at least for my uh, nighttime streams. Uh, tired vibes, maybe for my uh, for my uh, morning streams. But uh, you know, it's it's still a lot of fun, and I'm only able to do this through the support of viewers like you. Uh, whether it be um, you know through uh, through bits on on Twitch, uh, through the donation link, which is down in the description of the video if you want to donate to me uh, directly and, and bypass uh, YouTube and Twitch uh, through uh, uh, through uh, Patreon, uh, my Patreons who support me uh, monthly, as well as those who help me crowdfund the microphone that I'm looking forward to. Uh, I want w Waluigi one day, OK, because like, yeah, Waluigi is cute, but he would be even cuter if he was sitting on an SM7 and SM7 is a uh, XLR mic. It's a lot more professional. It sounds a lot better. And uh, so, you know, it's the kind of thing that I only have really stuff up on uh, Throne that could potentially improve the quality of the stream. So if you want to go over there and help me crowdsource those things, uh, much appreciation uh, to you and much appreciation to everybody who contributes to the stream, even if it's just through hitting that like button. It's more powerful than you think. And I do appreciate it. Understand. OK, so, yeah, we're um, on to the next thing. Catching up with Casparian. What has Casparian been doing? Well, she's been going on like any stream and every stream. And I feel like people have even mentioned like other streams, so other, other videos, other, uh, you know, other platforms that Anna has basically any small content creator who will have her on and be like, yeah, the left is really doing you dirty. Annie, Anna, and it's going to, and it's going to be there and it's going to be there. And, uh, this is a special place in hell. I think that's a reference if I'm not uh, mistaken to something that Hillary Clinton said. Uh, Hillary Clinton says a lot of things. Most of them are cringe. Uh, she said what there's a spe I think she might have even said this during the primary election that there's a special place in maybe it wasn't Hillary. Maybe it was like a Hillary supporter. Maybe it's like a like I feel like it was a senator that or Congress uh, person that supported uh, Hillary that said there's a special place in hell for women who don't vote for Hillary. So um, wait, is that an SM7B right there? Kind of looks like it. Wow. Even a special place in hell has better. Uh, better tech than I do. Anyway, let's uh, take a look, see what they have to say. See what kind of cringe we can expect from one Anna Kasparian. No such thing as a leftist friend. They will backstab you. They will this is the thing with leftists. Yeah, they will backstab you. Turn on you. This and sounds like the intro to the leftist mafia. It's a cult. Like, if you are not ideologically the same in every regard, if you don't agree with them 100% of the time, like, I love Jonathan Haidt's work because it it also kind of changed my perception, or at least the way... Anna, be careful. You're going to put Jonathan Haidt on, on the menu for my content. We may have to have dunk on that stuff, too. I approach human behavior in this realm. And... The left scores so, so low in the moral foundation of. Oh, my God. So like when you see all the infighting, he's got some kind of weird theoretical approach of like the moral foundation of what the fuck did she say? Yeah, this is. Uh, good stuff, good stuff from Anna Kasparian. Here, let's uh, I feel like that's a better. Uh, way to watch this now chat i am gonna have to take a pee really quickly uh don't worry i'm gonna you know be in a different room uh for that you won't have to I i'm not gonna be a psychic natalia and bless you with the with the sounds and the uh, of the of that but oh my god lasso uh uh flow flow seal thank you for the prime sub and much appreciation i love i love collecting primes i really do right it costs you nothing and it puts money in my pocket. And uh, I know you've only got one to give. So when you give it to me, that means something that actually uh, means a lot to me. Uh, thank you, uh, Flo Flo Seal. Left. I think that's part of the reason why, like to me, there's all sorts of people on the left that I am friends with, but I have some serious disagreements with. Right. I would never in a million years go on my show and be like, in the culture war, there are no winners, just podcasters. Only a few are willing to risk their lives in the face of some of the dumbest ideas to have ever captured human civilization. Oh, my God. We, Megan Dom and Sarah Hader, humbly accept this mission to bring you conversations that are equal parts. Uh, Sarah Hader? H-A-D-E-R? I'm guessing it's not Hater. H-E-T-E-R. Stunning, brave, and 
ideologically raptured. Welcome to a special place in hell. Whoa. And uh, we have a very special guest, Anna Kasparian. Hi. I mean, so this is just for the, you know, just for the nerds out there. Uh, this is a uh, 5,000 strong YouTube channel that uh, Anna is uh, is boosting through her presence, right? This is how low she's uh, willing to scrape to get, you know, some people to just, you know, kind of pat her on the back and be like, that's right, the left is so mean to you. I can't believe they were such, they're super meanie butts. That's right. Anna's got dealing with the super meanie butts. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave you uh, with Briska, right? My uh, other co-pilot, uh, other than Waluigi, hopefully these two will play uh, nicely, do we have the Vriska on uh, this? I'm gonna have to add that. I have to add Vriska in here somehow. Oh my god, we got like a tiny. There we go. There we go. NCC did nothing wrong, and and Vriska knows it, so. Uh, Vriska will will react while I am uh while while I am otherwise occupied. I'll be right back with a much relieved bladder. Hey, oh my god! Superstar, <laughs> Welcome. superstar. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't what? say all that, but it's honestly like such an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, we uh, couldn't believe you were um a, a subscriber. Sarah, I said, we oh, literally Anna. didn't believe it. I said, <laughs> I believed it. I said, Anna's a subscriber. And Sarah's like, no, that's not really her. I thought it she was would never some subscribe guy. To there are us. people who like, you know, use fake, you know, just to, I'm Batman, whatever. And that's what I thought yeah. it was. I thought it was just somebody pretending to be you. <laughs> well, there's someone on Twitter. Actually, I don't know if they still have the account, but um, they use the same photo that I have on my, you know, Twitter Abbey. Mm. And then they, um, have a similar like bio but the name is anal casparian <laughs> <laughs> so i don't blame you for being oh a little suspicious <laughs> that sounds okay. like a name of a porn movie exactly there yeah. should be yes. a porn star that uses that name anal that would casparian. be great you know for the seo i think right. <laughs> i think can, we found our show work. title for this okay. episode <laughs> great okay. thank you for helping us with that wow you're welcome yeah well we have a lot of questions for you um mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I guess Sarah had a, a really good well, question. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know where to start, but I have been, you know, like, I think Megan and I talk a lot about our generational differences, but one of the ones that if it feels very relevant to talk about now is just the differences in this online political commentary uh, landscape, which of which you are you are really a, a leader and kind of a veteran to the extent that veterans exist. Um, I was talking we were, to my, I was talking we're to the my Barbara Walters of, of that. Of yeah, yeah. YouTube. I was talking to oh Megan about it. Just my my younger siblings are like, oh, and like, oh, like from the Young Turks. Like to them, they were approaching it. Yeah, like Dan Rather, like that someone. Oh wow, who is really somebody. Her siblings are really young. Sarah's they're, they're the oldest. So to them, that's what you know, the Young Turks has been. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm kind of wondering what your thoughts are about it. Do you have any experience in working with um, like traditional media outlets and, mm -hmm. you know, is, is something you could compare it to and give me an understanding of what looks different from the perspective of a producer? Sure. I actually got my start in traditional media and mm -hmm. uh, I went to journalism school got an internship at a CBS radio affiliate in Los Angeles uh, called KFWB, which no longer exists as like a news organization. Um, but once my internship was up, they didn't have a place uh, available for me. So I just walked over to the newsroom, literally right next door for KNX 1070, which was also a CBS affiliate. And I said I would do any job. I'd mop the floors. I just want to be in the newsroom. As long as I'm in the newsroom, I'll be happy. Well, they got really inspired by the fact that I was like, you know, tenacious. So they hired me as an assistant producer, which was more than I could have asked for at the time. But I hated the job. Um, I was super grateful that I got it. But once I was working within a, a traditional news organization and I kind of saw how the sausage was really made, it was kind of uninspiring for me. I saw how 
the anchors operated. Basically, they would come in about 15 minutes prior to airtime and just simply read a script that was written for them by the news writers. And the news writers would just grab stories from the AP wire and then rewrite it for broadcast. And then that was the whole operation. As an assistant producer, I would take live feeds from field reporters as they were out on the field. But it's just, I didn't feel like it was enough to fully cover what was happening in the country. This is during the Bush administration. And I just felt like there were all sorts of war crimes being committed by our government that were not being reported on adequately enough. And so I was planning on basically going to grad school and then figuring out what to do from there, because I just realized if this is what my career is going to look like, I don't want to do this. I want to do something else. So I get accepted into grad school and- Oh my God. I'm like- now I'm wondering, chat, did I miss anything? Is there anything we need to go back over? Like I stepped away at probably just the wrong moment. Is there anything like amazing that I need to uh, that I need to rewind this? Oh my god, these these two are amazing though. Like I love the look on the looks on their respective faces. Did they really talk? Oh, is she talking about the the account? There's a there's an account called um, Anal Kasparian, apparently. That is, uh, it's not really her. Is that what she was talking about? Is that all I missed? I got a new throne donation, uh, but I you, there were no uh, didn't see or hear any alerts. I don't know how to set those up. I don't know if I set up the throne alerts. I do need to do that. Wait, something actually happened. Maybe. Um, were those just ghost? I think those are just ghost memberships. Were there some ghost memberships while I stepped away? We got an Anna Semp in chat. Shakespeare is asking me, do you get thrown notifications on stream? Um, oh, yeah. Wait, anti-corporatist. You're the one who was telling me. You told me about this KKF. Uh, uh, did, did I get the link to the whole KKF thing? I don't know what KKF is. Right. So I was I, I remember you saying that, though. I was like, well, I, I didn't remember who said it. But um, where would I have gotten the link from? Did you put it in the Discord by chance? Oh my gosh, the Discord's been busy. I, I appreciate all the stream uh, suggestions. I'm sorry I can't get to more of them. Maybe we should take a day and do like a a premium streamy or, or something and, and just like... KKF? I don't know what KKF is actually. Maybe if I type in a search, Anna Kasparian KKF, I'll find out. Wait. Oh my gosh. No, you know what? I think I'm just seeing, uh, I, maybe they weren't even ghost memberships. Maybe I'm just seeing the stream from, it, it's like on a delay, even for me. Uh, KKF is a Substack thing, uh, but it was a good interview. 
Crystal Kyle and friends. Yo, thank you. Thank you. Uh, FG. FG, you got the Rosetta, uh, the Rosetta Stone here. Yeah, I couldn't tell what was going on. Like, I think, oh, oh, I see. I'm just rewatching uh, a much earlier part of my stream, and that's when the uh, actual gift subs. So, yeah, we're, we're not dealing with uh, ghost uh, gift subs. Uh, Mars Falcon says liberalism, willingness to respect or accept behavior or opinions that are different than one's own, openness to, to new ideas, two, holding a political view. Are we, this is like a definition, right? That are pro socially progressive to promote social welfare. Uh, three, the belief that many traditional beliefs are dispensable, invalidate, uh, invalidated by modern thought, are dispensable, invalidated by modern thought, or liable to change. Four, political and social philosophy that uh, promotes individual rights, civil liberties, democ democracy, and free enterprise. See, that's the thing. They kind of bury the lead, don't they? Free enterprise, right? Tells you everything that you need to know about liberalism which is that it's actually a form of conservatism. Did I just blow your minds? You're not going to hear this on, on most streams, right? But yeah, liberalism is a form of uh, conservatism. Uh, what does conservatism conserve, though? That's the question. That's the question that we all want to know. You want to know the answer? I know the answer. It's hierarchy. Hierarchy is what it conserves. And even liberalism, which is a form of conservatism that says that we will get uh, we will catch more flies with honey than we will with vinegar. We can throw these uh, rubes some breadcrumbs. Right. And they'll go along with their programs. Hell, they might even adopt our philosophy and call themselves liberals if we paint it as the furthest left. But now there are freaking communists, communists invading radicals. Right. The furthest left in the Overton window that we can go. Right. They might even call themselves liberals. Hell. Right. If we tell them that like anything else is a dirty commie and you don't want to be a dirty commie, uh, then, you know, you could be a liberal and, and, and kind of think that you can regulate your way into a uh, decent life when uh, everything about capitalism is uh, just pulling that decent life away from you year after year using your very ancestors labor to hold you down because it's a process. It's a process for, of moving value from one pile to another from from the worker to the capitalist right that's uh that's what liberalism is and even though i will say it's probably preferable to uh i'm not an accelerationist so it's preferable to other forms of conservatism it's still conservatism at the end of the day anyway anyway um did i miss anything was there a consensus on that do, do does chat want me to go back does chat want me to, uh, we do need to watch the Crystal Kyle and Friends. Yeah, whoever, uh, AC, were you the one that came up with that? Does shorts have its own ghost? There were none in regular YouTube. No, I'm just, I was watching an older, I was watching an older, I was watching, um, it, it was showing me the stream from, like, I don't know, 30 minutes ago for some reason. It's just a YouTube glitch, that's all. It was, it was a glitch on my side, not on your side, uh, luckily, so you didn't have to sit through those. Uh, as well, because otherwise I'm always worried that people are going to get tired of the uh, wow, the, the wow soundbite. In the meantime, I'm planning this trip to Europe. One of my colleagues at CBS Radio approached me and said, hey, there's a temporary job available. It's a producer gig for this like startup called The Young Turks. Uh, are you interested? And I was like, what is The Young Turks? You know, like I'm Armenian. That name is very strange. <laughs> so I looked into so, Yeah, very strange or... or a little bit and i realized what the name means which is you know just you know rebelling against um norms and societal expectations i was like whatever it's a temp job i need money for europe let me do it i come in and i got hooked right away because you know jenk uger the founder of the company and the main host at the time came in and just starts telling the truth about what's transpiring within the Bush administration and what kind of failures. And also, I love it when he says, of course, uh, we're experiencing with the war in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And it was all stuff that I knew about because I was interested in it and had been researching and reading about it. But TYT at the time felt like. One yeah, low key. Anna was kind of like my role model. Like I can remember thinking she was really cool. Um, I watched the TYT, you know, I didn't always appreciate uh, Jink and, and like a lot of times, um, you know, what Jink would get wrong, Anna would get right. And and like I, I really looked, I can't I can't stress enough how much I looked up to her and admired her. The only places where, again, you were getting some adequate coverage. And so once that temp position was over, I was like, 
I don't want to leave. I'll do anything. And so I got hired for marketing, which I had no expertise in and really failed at. But I was lucky that the female co-host at the time decided to leave and go work at a think tank in D.C. And that opened up an opportunity for me to do some. On what was her name? Anybody? I, f I feel is her name like Jill. I'm trying to remember who the original um, co-host like for TYT was because there was somebody before before they had Anna. Oh my god, look, Izzy Sanchez, you said this like a year or more ago. You said this like before I, I went to the bathroom, but it's a it's kind of an evergreen question. Talk about Anna Kasparian. I don't know or care who Alec Gunter is. Okay, so understand this. You're watching a live stream. We talk about many different topics. One of those topics gets a thumbnail. One of those topics gets a title, right? And so if you're ever in a situation where you're like, but you're not talking about what's on the thumbnail, but you're not talking about um, what's on the title. Just just um, chill the fuck out, chill the fuck out and we will get to it. But good, good, po you know, good point. Good thing to bring up air stuff, uh, which at first was just entertainment garbage that I absolutely hated. But I worked my way to where I am now. Did it seem strange to you that you were doing a, a YouTube show? I mean, were people like, what is that? Or that's not a real job. Like, when did it start to feel like a quote unquote legitimate thing? Well, it felt legitimate almost immediately because we saw how there was like this market out there. Um, FG says her name was Jill Pike. Yeah, I think that that sounds right. I, I, I don't remember Jill Pike. Like Jill Pike must have been before my time, but. I do remember Anna and I do remember um, like she's what made the Young Turks bearable for me because sometimes Jink is just too much to take. We were looking for media that was doing what we were doing at the time. The thing that concerned me early on was, you know, I had training at a college for real journalism. And at the time, the idea that you would graduate journalism school and then immediately start sharing your political opinions while covering the news, like it was just something that we were warned against doing and i was doing it on a regular basis and i'm like am i destroying my career by doing this and it didn't end up destroying my career but i do think over the years what ended up happening with more and more digital media outlets and more and more podcasts basically you have all this competition and without even real um, good question mars falcon uh jill pike is actually not on screen right now uh, Jill Pike was the original host, original co-host, right? Originally, before it was, um, before it was uh, Jink and Anna, it was Jink and, and Jill Pike. And uh, I don't remember her. I, I remember hearing about her, but I never really watched TYT with Jill Pike on it. Um, these two are called A Special Place in Hell, which I think is a Hillary Clinton reference, if I'm not mistaken. Hillary Clinton said there was a special place for hell and or no, it wasn't Hillary. It was a Hillary fan that said it, there was a special place in hell for women who don't support other women, meaning like you should vote for Hillary. This was this was like I'm with her era stuff. So um, I guess they're saying they're, they're not fans of Hillary Clinton. Uh, this is Megan Dom and Sarah Hader. I believe Megan Dom is on the left here and Sarah Hader, uh, not Hater, but Hader with a D. Uh, is on the right. So yeah, they've uh, they've landed this uh, big interview with a superstar of uh, of epic proportions. Realizing it, I didn't do this intentionally. You almost become competitive in how pure you are with your ideology, right? And that led me astray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, it did because no one political side is always right, and. I had been. So what's funny is that she's in saying no one political uh, side is right. She's making an argument for centrism. Which is also a political side. Some would even say a fish hook. Uh, right. If if we if we take as a premise that our um, political our Overton window is manipulated uh, by capitalism, by by capitalists, right, conveniently so. Um, to uh, keep anything that might actually 
um, claw back some of the leverage that the workers have. Because remember, liberalism, the one thing that it doesn't do is claw back any leverage, right? It might make capitalism more bearable. It might make your living conditions uh, more uh, bearable, right? Uh, especially w when we're talking about like uh, Rooseveltian uh, liberalism or, uh, you know, liberalism that that emphasizes a strong social safety net obviously is preferable to conservatism that destroys that social safety net that tries to, you know, um, you know, I the, essentially, you know, it, it's it's anti accelerationist, right? Liberalism is uh, liberalism and conservatism are driving the same car, but liberalism is pumping the brakes, whereas conservatism is uh, hitting the accelerator. And where's the car going? Unfortunately for all of us over a cliff. So that's the difference between liberalism and conservatism. Fed lies that I totally ate up and believed because I just was in this bubble. But yeah, when you're 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 making an argument for centrism, you literally could not be more controlled opposition. You literally could not be stating more clearly the ideology that benefits uh, capital uh, and capitalists, right? Centrism, just agree that the like the left is fucked up and the right is fucked up and that we should meet somewhere in the center. Where one side is right, one side is wrong, yeah. and you're always at war with the other side. And that was so misguided. Yeah, well, okay, so that leads to the question of... But yeah, without realizing, she, she does have a point. I don't think this is a point that she means to make. But um, there's a point to be made that, um, yeah, neither like liberalism nor conservatism will get you to where you want to be if you are like the vast majority of people and you receive your um you receive your pay through uh through a wage and and even more so if you're paying for your um if you're paying through your for for your the place to live as rent right um how you got to a situation where you are talking to us so like what were some of those beliefs you've got to go outside that rubric you've got to go outside that eggshell you've got to go outside that artificial horizon that is capitalist realism remember capitalist realism something that mark fisher talked about the way in which it's easier to imagine the end of the world than it is to imagine the end of capitalism and that's like it is on purpose the um knowledge that we need uh, the solidarity that we need, the, even the recognition of our own self-interest that we need has been taken away f uh, from us systematically, has been alienated, you might even say, from us through capitalism. You were eating up that you explain your later. Explain your downfall. Explain explain yeah, what happened? You, <laughs> where did you go wrong? Can this be... Um, let us be... I'm sorry, I'm like eating a I'm like eating a the juiciest fruit like you could imagine while trying to talk, so it's, it's difficult. Let's be toothless says, Trump is really scary. Yeah, and that's why I'm not an accelerationist, right? That's not that's what that's why I'm not some there are some people out there that are that are, you know, call themselves leftists, uh, but they feel like the best way to get to a um stateless, moneyless society is actually to let conservatism have its way. And uh yeah, I I, I I'm not a I'm not an accelerationist. So yeah, I agree. I agree. Trump is very scary. Course corrected. <laughs> Well, it's funny because the first time I really realized, oh, my God, I've been spreading false information to my audience and I have to correct it was I don't even know how I came across blocked and reported, but um, I heard an episode. Oh, my God. About That's uh, Jesse Singal. This woman named Rebecca Jones. I don't know if you are familiar with her, but she was an. It's literally the turf pill. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, I, I didn't realize this, right? I'd heard her mention Jonathan Haidt before, and I I assumed that that was, like, because her story is this. Like, during the lockdown, uh, she got really into reading a bunch of stuff. She was reading, you know, stuff from other political perspectives, and that this Jonathan Haidt stuff really convinced her that um that the left didn't have the uh, answers. But now she's talking about Jesse Singal. Right. Who is a I don't know what you want to call Jesse Singal. I think gender critical uh, fits pretty well. I mean, he's not British, so he's not like turf in the uh, J.K. Rowling sense of the sense of the word. But he's somebody that a lot of turfs uh, listen to. He's somebody that Destiny listens to. Not that Destiny is a 
is a turf, but Destiny does have some pretty bad takes on on uh, trans issues. But yeah, that's who she's talking about, right? Jesse Singal, uh, somebody that got his start, I believe, at a small newspaper in um, in Seattle, uh, along with uh, Katie Herzog, and it was just weird. Like this, this is like a a a magazine run by ostensibly leftists, right? People that would put themselves on the left, but uh, they're they're more like fans of Foucault. If that makes sense. And I don't know, I don't know how this like alternative weekly became the nexus for the uh, the gender critical movement in uh, the United States, but it, it did. And it spun out both uh, Katie Herzog and Jesse Singal, if, if I re am remembering correctly. Third Archon, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Yeah, he is definitely a, a yeah, the, the trans. Uh, He's a transphobe. Uh, why I left the left? Left is not leftist to begin with. Uh, well, yeah, when people talk, yeah, we're not allowed to think about the left, right? Actual, like, it's weird, right? Because, like, I'll I, look. I'm um, as as far as uh, linguistics go, uh, I'm not a cringe prescriptivist, right? Prescriptivists uh, hold that words have meanings, and those meanings need to be upheld, and that um, if somebody's using the word in a different way than what it's like static meaning is, then that person is wrong and they need to be corrected. Right? I don't believe that. I believe that language is fluid. I believe that things uh, mean different things uh, over time. But yeah, unfortunately, the meaning of leftists, like because right wingers need a way to. I feel like they've overused liberal. I, fe I feel like they've demonized liberal. The liberal, like, you know, you, you got the conservatives, the proud, upstanding, America loving conservatives, and then you got the liberals, which is like a slimy snake or some kind of blob or some kind of ooze. It's a liberal, let's be liberal. You know, but like, it's just like they've, they've overdone it though. They've overdone it. And they had to come up with something else. So I guess leftist is what they came up with without realizing that leftist has a meaning, right? The, you know, it, if you go back to like old like parliamentary uh, systems, like you know, people that were uh, more radical like, at the time, you know, uh, would have sat on the left and, and people who were more reactionary would have sat on the right. That's, you know, where these ideas, you know, that's, that's where this left and right uh, thing uh, comes from. But yeah, the leftism. Uh, the idea that not only uh, should we not accept a return to the ideals of uh, hierarchy and. Um... Oh, thank you, Shakespeare, hierarchy and and, and such. Right. But but that uh, the mode of production under uh, capitalism is actually less than ideal and it's it's actually not sustainable. The seeds for its destruction, the seeds for its downfall are within the system itself. And if you want to see what I'm talking about, right, it's a little bit more than I want to get into right now while we're re like reacting to Anna Kasparian. But look up profitability crisis, right? Look, look up the profitability crisis and, and, and you understand. And it's pretty simple. If you if you heard what I said earlier about capitalism as a um, mechanism that takes things from the workers and redistributes them to the capitalists, to those who own the means of production, then you'll understand that you can't keep extracting labor forever, right? It's it's not it's just it's just not something that can work. It's just not something that can t continue. It, it's self destructive. And the dangerous thing about that self destruction is that when capitalism finally manages to destroy itself, very likely what will replace it it is something more akin to fascism. <laughs> like you want to talk about dystopian hell worlds, right? You talk about a, a fascist future or even like a, you know, uh, like, like, I, I don't know. I don't I don't think that society could really move back into into feudalism. But, you know, I mean, like you could imagine some sort of neo feudal state with which, you know, uh, the, the the liberals, the uh, the, the neoliberals of today would would administer a system in the future uh, when the shit house goes up in flames but either way either way it's kind of a um it's kind of a do or die situation you got to evolve you got to evolve the mode of production 
from something that's less sustainable, from something that's less equitable, or so, from something with greater hierarchy w to something on the other side of the spectrum. If you want humanity to, to survive, if you want humanity to evolve, if you want to reach that Star Trek future, the moneyless, uh, classless society, which Star Trek doesn't even actually, you know, if you look at Star Trek, they don't, e it, it's not, it's not even really like that, right? Because it's so hard for people to break their mindset out of capitalism. It's so hard for people to imagine um, an end to capitalism, an alternative uh, system. That's part of the, that's part of the issue. If you ever want to get to that place, then um, it's got to, it's got to evolve. Employee of the state of Florida, she claimed that she was fired and her house was raided by DeSantis because she was accurately reporting the real COVID numbers. It turned out all to be a lie, and um, I had to make that correction. But once I heard that episode, and I realized, oh my God, I got this story just totally. Wow. Uh, Chat Alpha says Vice giving us. Uh, oh my God, I, this is such a good comment. This comment goes so hard. Oh my God, why am I not seeing your good comment? Ugh, I'm sorry, Chat. That's my technology that's not evolving. So somehow, oh my God, I really wish the person who uh, made Twidget would would fix uh, fix your app. It's a good app. I got hooked on that podcast because they focused on some of the culture war issues that tend to be presented as black and white. And I just wanted to know what else did I get wrong? So that was part of, I guess, an awakening that I had. But the other stuff was what I experienced firsthand. Wait, we got some subs and donations to Throne. Um, I need to integrate that. I, there should be a way to do that. In my own personal life and how I was getting gaslit by some elements of the left on those issues, whether it be crime, whether it be some of my, you know, concerns about whether right protocols and guidelines are being followed when it comes to, you know, youth, gender medicine and all of that. I'm obviously not at all anti-trans, but there were certain stories. Of course not. Of course not, Anna. ...that were kind of being buried. And I think it was because the press was worried about like this onslaught of hate and harassment. And so once I started diving into those stories, I was like, oh my God, there's a lot of misinformation that's being spread, whether it's wittingly or unwittingly. So it's just all of this stuff kind of started to come together. And at first I was struggling with it totally privately. It was like an internal thing. I have a very close friend named Tom, who's very, very smart. And there were a lot of conversations that we had where I was just struggling with extreme guilt because I don't want to do harm to society. And I felt that I had been doing harm without even realizing it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we don't have that experience. We feel as if we've been doing right from day one. Yeah, I don't know anything about these two. I would love for them to give their story. We know we know a little bit about Anna's story. Uh, you know, we've heard a little bit more about her transformation, right? She's uh, now emphasizing people like Jesse Singal, which, you know, I mean, like, I called it. I fucking called it. When I first heard Anna talking about birthing persons and all that shit, I was like, this this feels like Jesse Singal. Like, it was almost like the Jedis, right, where you feel the presence of Emperor Palpatine, but you don't see Palpatine. It's it's palpable, but you're not palpating the Palpatine until until he comes out from behind Anna and hits you with the force lightning. Right. That's that's Jesse Singal. I, I, I can just totally agree. I feel as if we walk down similar paths. A lot of people have this. We've you know talked to a lot of heterodox people and there's sort of a, a moment in which you look around and you find that maybe you haven't been seeing things as they Oh, were. um, Miss Anita Bump says, uh, one of these people has me blocked. Uh, one of these people is, wait, is unlike the others? Wait, are you saying Anna Kasparian has you blocked? That's a pretty, that's a pretty cool block to have if, if that's what you're talking about. There's this drive to correct and do something about it. And what's interesting about the space you're in is Ooh, Izzy Sanchez says her ideology shifted after, oh, I got it right. I, I called it, Miss Adita Bump. I called it. I thought I knew what you were talking about. Her ideology shifted after her debate and interview with Ben Shapiro.
Mars Falcon says, you got gaslit by the right on crime, Anna. That was her no other, like, you know, that, that was her other turning point, right? Was that, uh, you know, she had a personal experience uh, with, with crime and she seems to be taking it out on, on, you know, not just with like supporting this law and order, essentially broken windows policing, a failed strategy, a failed strategy for dealing with the very real um, upswing in crime of the uh, of the mid to uh, late 20th century. So in other words, like, you know, if we look at crime rates and I have a, I'm, I've been meaning to talk about this, I want to talk about this. This comes up a lot with Anna. Um, listening to Anna's coverage of crime, you would get the feeling that we are in near a record high of incidents of crime, particularly violent crime. However, when we look at the statistics, we find out the exact opposite, right? There were, you know, very high periods of very high crime in like the 70s, the 80s and the 90s. And crime has plummeted has plummeted uh, since then for a variety of reasons. But um, I, I don't think you can really um, credit like broken windows policing with that. What broken windows policing is, is it's essentially a tough on crime approach that says that um, the the police and, and law enforcement and criminal justice should come down really, really hard on minor infractions, such as people that, that break windows in order to disincentivize like, you know, more you know, dangerous forms of crime. And it's, it's, you know, it should be consigned to the dustbin of history. But unfortunately, you got people like Anna trying to bring it back out of there, right? You got what, what do you do when you take a situation where we're near a record low as far as crime, as far as violent crime, and you, you try to distort people's perception of that to make them think, oh, no, it's really fucking dangerous. It's never been more dangerous, right? You're justifying Further militarization of the police. You're justifying ridiculous budgets for the police. And what do those ridiculous budgets do? Where does that money come from? It comes from social programs, which could make people's material conditions better and could re could uh, result in lower crime numbers without having to have a giant militarized, scary ass police force, which itself is a vector of violent crime. That's what people don't seem to. Uh, realize particularly people with some degree of privilege, whether that be economic privilege or, or white privilege, right? Uh, you're less likely to see the police as the vector of violence that they actually are. And you're more likely to look at the unhoused as a vector of violence. You're more likely to look at the, the immigrant as a vector of violence. In other words, you're more likely, likely to look in the wrong direction and, 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 and advocate something profoundly unproductive and punitive rather than something that might actually help us out. So yeah, there, there's uh, my take on Anna Kasparian's um, tough on crime stance. Is that it's not this traditional media, which has the pull of prestige, you know, really pulling you in one direction and kind of forcing you to stay within these certain lanes. But because of this, these, this wild west kind of a space, YouTube space that we're all in now. Um, I feel like we're not held back. It's the Wild West. But we are influenced. Chat, I really need a, like a sound bite that's just like wickety wild, wild west. Do you think I could get away with that? I feel like it's short enough. I feel like I could just have wickety wild, wild west. Anytime somebody says wild west, I want to. I want to just throw it to that. Maybe I could get my dad to to say it and, and record him <laughs> record his cringe uh, rendition. I our audience in a way that I think that if you work for, you know, in the New York Times or a kind of an outlet that in itself, you know, they're they're the public face, really. And you're just part of that team. Now you can see people messaging you, talking to you, talking about you, um, kind of giving you a little bit of critiques. And it's the audience capture thing is yeah. a very real problem. Um, so I wanted mm -hmm. to get, you know, your thoughts on that and like it, are there any strategies? I feel like with the Young Turks, it might be a different kind of audience capture. So something that I, I don't remember who it is that touched on this, but somebody smart did. And uh, credit to them. I'm not trying to take credit for this myself. I, I did not come up with this idea. But TYT uh, essentially throughout the uh, early 2010s and, uh, and 2020s, TYT was becoming more and more of a punching bag and a laughing stock for the right. Um, I can remember going into their chat before they had mods and, you know, just having people be like Trump, 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 Trump. They, they were just like, they were 
they were they were getting eaten alive by trolls, right? Right wingers were very aware of TYT. Right wingers did not like TYT. Right wingers frequented the comment sections of TYT, and right wingers were constantly making fun of, of TYT. And while the rest of the left, like you know, w w online, when you're talking about like BreadTube or um, the debate sphere or or other you know um, other parts of the online left, were starting to really get recognized and, and starting to, um, you know, uh, really rise up. Uh, TYT was just like, they didn't, they weren't exciting a left-wing audience because they were never, they never even came close to entering like sort of, you know, uh, advocacy for any kind of post-capitalist, um, you know, ideology. Right. So they weren't exciting the left. They weren't revolutionary anymore. But they were a target for the right. And I think that some, you know, like according to some people like Anna and, and Jink were just getting sick of this. Right. They had an audience, a very large hate audience. Right. And usually when we're talking about audience capture, you're talking about like, I don't know. You're talking about a content creator who doesn't agree with a certain viewpoint that their audience has, who comes to endorse that viewpoint nonetheless because of the uh you know it's preponderance like like how common it is in the rather than fight their audience they're they're going to embrace the uh, viewpoint that they think is wrong right that's usually what we mean when we say audience capture in this case it's it's almost like a capture by their hate audience it's almost like they started to believe the the toxic garbage that was being uh filtered into you know through their through their youtube comments and they were like okay fine we're not going to be soy leftists anymore. We're not. Gonna, we're going to go right. Please, any way that you know th that you have found helps in preventing that, or you've is done it... a very good job of maintaining your integrity. Integrity, being, yeah. you know, very clearly on the left, while able to kind of like look honestly at the nuances and the places where you were wrong. You know, you have really done a self interrogation without you know, leaving your lane. You're not one of these, like, I didn't leave the left, the left left me people. <laughs> right. And I, I mean, and I know you've talked about this, that you know, it's very easy to, you know, go too far to the other side, or you know, I think a lot of people get burned or they get hurt very badly and then they react and they become too much on the other way. So how do mm -hmm. you kind of thread the needle? Well, let me just start off with the issue of audience capture, because I definitely think it's real. Um, I don't think that I was a victim of audience capture, though, because I, I, this is very bad to say, but it's just the truth. I don't care if the audience doesn't like what I have to say, because I looked the way that I see it is I chose a career path that's actually not very lucrative. And in fact, I have decided to forego opportunities that were far more lucrative in order for me to be able to say what I need to say freely. What I was a victim of, in my opinion, was a media filter bubble where all of the sources that I trusted, all of the sources that were served up to me had one narrative and one perspective and demonized any other perspective. And I didn't realize just how honestly ignorant I was about the nuances of various issues. I think a very good example of what's happening recently is the migrant crisis, right? If you only trust left-wing media and left-wing politicians like AOC, for instance. It makes it really hard to throw uh, vulnerable people under the bus for political points uh, from the right. Yeah, I know, Anna. Joe Biden agrees with you. You would definitely believe that there's absolutely no migrant crisis happening. And the only reason why people on the left, broadly speaking, Democrats, um, have been kind of forced to accept that reality is because now all of a sudden the migrant crisis is hitting their sanctuary city in the middle of the country, <laughs> whereas before. It oh, you mean because like Ron DeSantis and Governor Greg Abbott are literally shipping people into these cities? To try to augment the idea that like, you know, like, like literally like overwhelming their, um, their infrastructure by, by just, yeah. You, anyway, anyway, she's leaving out some important stuff. So I, I just think it's important to like actually hear out all perspectives and all sides, understand the nuances of these stories and just be humble enough to understand you're not always right and your side is not always right. And it's better to be fully informed about what's really happening and what the world is as it is in reality, as opposed to just 
wishing the world is one way and then pushing that narrative onto your audience. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, in terms of how I've been kind of dealing with, you know, the changing messaging, I guess, that I've been sharing on the show, there's been backlash from the audience for sure. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I deserve the backlash because remember, this is the audience I built by spreading <laughs> unwittingly half-truths, you know, misinformation, only one side. So I I hate it. I, I It's uncomfortable and I don't like when they're mad at me, but I totally expect it and I accept it. And I, in fact, think I deserve it as long as I'm doing the best I can to set the record straight now. And I'm also hoping that it builds a broader audience of people who know that they can trust me in being a good faith actor rather than someone who's just there for a political agenda. Um, I'm, I'm less interested in the activist component or the advocacy component and more interested. Okay. Shakespeare, sure I get the stories, right? I think I've got it. Now. That's, that's the important thing. Yeah. So you're in sort of an abusive relationship with your audience at the moment. <laughs> sounds like sort of, sort of, but I mean, I think for the most part, the majority of the audience appreciates the honesty yeah, yeah. and they, they value it. And so we didn't lose a ton of viewers after I've had my like come to Jesus moment, I guess. Um, some portion of our, you know, paid subscribers. Okay. I almost want to check in on this, right? Cause we, we got some metrics. We got some ways of looking at this. Like, uh, obviously, you know, um, something like social blade is not the be all end all. Some people think it is right. It'll also give you a, a, an estimate of like how much money somebody's earning off of social media. And it's massively off either like under or, or over in terms of its estimation of people. But we can actually objectively look at uh, TYT and see if Anna might be. Yeah, that's right. Autumn Leafs, all your mods quit, Anna. The people that were the backbone of your stream quit, Anna. Uh, yeah, Shakespeare, you know how you were telling me I should integrate or you weren't saying this, but like, I don't I haven't integrated uh, Throne yet because I just couldn't I, 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 I but I, I went I found it. I found it. Wait, let's test it. There we go. That's not a real gift. Right. That's not a, a real like, uh, you know, uh, that's not that's not that's not a real like. Um, throne alert, but. um. That's what it'll sound like when anybody uh, donates to my throne, which uh, we're trying to, uh, if you don't know, we're trying to crowdsource a new uh, place for Waluigi to sit right now. He is sitting on a very uncomfortable USB mic, a very, a very cheap and uncomfortable uh, perch for Waluigi. If you want Waluigi to have a more comfortable place to sit on an SM7B, on an actual professional XLR mic, uh, you can contribute over there on throne. And if you want the link to that, it is down in the description on YouTube or on my about page, I think, on, on Twitch. Uh, but yeah, ma massive appreciation, uh, Shakespeare, for uh, contributing to that. I'm sorry that I didn't have the integration uh, that uh, would have would have recognized uh, your gift. But I, I recognize your gift. And uh, the next time anybody contributes to the crowdsourcing of the uh, microphone or anything else on throne, it's going to it's going to do that's going to make this noise. Wow. Members decided to quit after they were convinced that wanting to be called a woman is the most transphobic thing on the planet. So, I mean, if that. Anna, there are people that struggle to be called. There are women out there that struggle to be called a woman. You're not one of them. You're not one of them, Anna. In fact, you. You're attacking them with bullshit like this. Yeah, nobody ever refused to call Anna a woman. They just acknowledged that it's more than just women who have the capacity to give birth, right? There's trans guys that can give birth. There's non-binary people that can give birth. And unless you want to bite that transphobic bullet, which I've never actually heard her to, because she's playing this game of at least pretending defense ride, right? Where she's like, oh yeah, you know, trans people are, are valid, but also... When we're talking about pregnancy, we should say the woman, we should say the mother, we should gender the fuck out of all these terms to make sure that that people that don't consider themselves, um, you know, women, people that don't identify as as uh, as a mother. Right. For instance, have to have that fucking label jammed down their throat nonetheless. So it's really ironic how Anna's um, 
going on off here because like the the persecution that she's claiming to experience is not real it is stolen valor right and the real persecution that's going on to trans people is something that anna is aiding and abetting here that's how they feel it's how they feel i can't change that but i'm not gonna lie to my audience about a what the facts of the stories are but more importantly what i genuinely think about the topics at hand yeah yeah how has it been with staffers at the at the company because that's often the case even more so than the audience i mean you see this in in media in you know mainstream media all the time publishing company it's not that they're afraid even as much they're not as afraid of the readers and the audience as much as they're afraid of their rank and file you know people on staff just walking out so how has it been like mods at the like office? mods so right now, for the most part, people at TYT work remotely, like the graphics artists, the editors, um, some producers like to come into the office, but only a handful. So I haven't had any like uncomfortable confrontations in person, uh, but there have been some, you know, contributors who have quit because they don't agree with my political opinions. I, I mean, I would. Uh, thank you, at least, Anna, for not. Uh... Last time she talked, she like mentioned uh, Benny, and I feel like she probably sent more harassment Benny's way. Uh, but that that's probably who she's got in mind when she's saying contributors. Or even consider quitting over a disagreement with another host. And in fact, there are hosts in the company who have political views that I disagree with. But it's their right to share their point of view, and I would venture to say it should be my right to be able to share my point of view and luckily you know the one thing that i give not one thing i give him a lot of credit for a lot of things but you know jake uger is very much in favor Look, of protecting let me be real with you like anna alluded to the fact that she had like more lucrative possibilities on you know than 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 working at tyt and that's not just true for her that's true for anybody who's working um you know for for any kind of like uh any kind of like new media um you know that that's not subsidized by and like tyt you know they have they have gotten some money from some people right but it's nothing compared to like what the daily wire for instance gets so anyway that's what she's alluding to she could get paid more uh for the daily wire that's probably true anna um, but so could the people that are working for TYT, right? All of their, all of them have talents, whether it be, they be graphic artists, whether they be, um, you know, sound or video engineers, um, whatever uh, they're doing for the for TYT, they could probably do it somewhere else and get paid more. And there's a reason they don't, Anna, and that's because they believe in what was TYT's mission. They wanted to be part of the home of the progressives. And when you do this fucking heel turn and start grifting to the right, how does that feel for them to have like, you know, TYT as their place of work, right? You start to put them into a position where instead of contributing to something that they feel like is helping make the world a better place, they're now contributing to something that's making the world worse, right? And you've put the mods in that position and you've put the staff in that position and you've put everyone in that position. How are they supposed to feel like she is so good at centering herself in, in this whole thing, right? While like. Uh... Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and will not allow anyone to kind of dominate what the messaging has to be um within the company or among the hosts so i have a lot of loyalty toward tyt because they've given me the freedom to speak my mind like i feel like anna would feel feel differently if it was like a more you know, i mean there, there's definitely some viewpoints that i hope at least like i hope that if there was a tyt contributor that was like jqing that anna wouldn't just be like well you know everybody at tyt has the right to free speech and that's cool and if you know part of tyt is going to be um you know, being actively anti-Semitic, I, I feel like Anna, at least in that situation, would probably be like, you know what, I feel uncomfortable. Can we not have Nick Fuentes as a con contributor? Can we not can we not do that? Right. I feel I feel like there's other examples where, you know, Anna would, would absolutely eat her words here. And I'm that's a hard thing to find. I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, for sure.
Um, so we were um, watching a little bit of your videos with Ben Shapiro. Is this the is this the birthing person show? I don't know. I don't know. Can somebody tell me about this? It's called um, Special Place in Hell. And I really don't know anything about it. They're a small uh, YouTube channel, not that much bigger uh, than my own. Remember, we are growing uh, really quickly now, actually. So so we'll be, we'll 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 be bigger than them uh, before too long. But uh, yeah, Anna's, you know, uh, decided to uh, grace them with her presence and uh, probably get them a few more views than they're uh, used to getting. I don't know much about them other than that, like the the reference sounds like a, it reminds me of like a Hillary Clinton reference. Uh, the, the the time that I remember most recently hearing special place in hell was when somebody was suggesting that uh, women who don't support Hillary Clinton deserve a special place in hell. So I don't know, maybe are they hillbots? Are they turfed up hillbots? Is that what we're dealing with? Um, and those were really excellent. I have to say um, mm -hmm. both of the, the the debate, but also the when you're just one on one when you sit down with him. That's a really just outstanding um, piece of video. Uh, but we were also noting that, like, you can sit down with Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro because your liberal bona fides are unassailable. Like, you are still... No, this got clipped. This got clipped and it got posted to Twitter because this shit right here is cringe. Your liberal bona fides are unassailable. Well, I mean, I guess. Can you be liberal and be, be a turf? I, I guess, right? Your progressive bona fides, on the other hand associated with the left people know that you're on the left like if sarah or or i sat down with ben it would be sort of like oh well of course you no know, those so you've missed your opportunity you're supposed to you're supposed to pretend to be a lefty and then uh wait for the money offer to come through and and then you know sell sell us all out right you didn't do it right you you, you didn't go you you sold out too early who sold out a long time ago or we all we always knew they were secret you know conservatives and and that kind of thing so i mean what, what do you think of that that kind of dilemma i think i want to be stuck in whatever internet bubble you guys are in because i'm not no, reading don't. that no, no, my no, sit down don't. with ben shapiro was totally okay <laughs> in fact i get a lot of backlash from the left about how i'm a secret trump supporter I'm actually a secret right winger. Some people have accused me of being alt-right. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I got in trouble for fairly recently was, uh, I don't know, I just think asylum seekers or people who are here um, with undocumented status should be deported if they're committing crimes, right? Like, I don't think that makes <laughs> okay. you anti-immigrant. That's fascist. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, but honestly, the left, like, the, and I'm saying the left generally, but honestly, it's like a slice of the left. They will call you anti-immigrant or xenophobic, bigoted, whatever, anti-immigrant for just wanting to have law and order yeah. in society, you know? And law and order is important, not just for, you know, in their minds, like the wealthy elite. It's important for everyone, including kids who need to walk to school safely or, you know, people who want to go enjoy the outdoors without worrying about, you know, getting confronted by a robber or something what like the that. Fuck? I just I think that the complete downplaying of the negative impacts that crime has on society has like really pissed me off with the left. Like that's the main thing. Do you I see what she's arguing though? Like right the, the her her reporting would have you believe that crime is an increasing problem. It's getting worse. But she's trying to straw man her detractors who are saying, actually, Anna, when you look at statistics like, you know, crime is it's getting better. If you look at it compared to the like 70s, 80s and 90s, there's no comparison. It was way worse back then. If you look at it, even compared to the like height of, of lockdown and everything, it's it's gotten better than that. Right. So in terms of like where we're at, what the trajectory is, right, we're, we're going towards you know, a, a safer, you know, society when it comes to crime. But what she's trying to say is that her detractors are like, no, actually, crime is good. We want crime. We want there to be more crime. People should get away with crime, especially violent crime. Crime, 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 crime. We love crime. We love the criminals. I'm dressed up like the Hamburglar because I love crime so much. That's what I'm advocating for. I'm advocating for a Hamburglar based society where we all go to McDonald's and we steal a bunch of hamburgers and we go robble, robble. Anna Kasparian, you are literally arguing with a motherfucking Hamburglar. Get over. It's yeah. so incredibly gross.
Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I felt a similar thing um, myself because of what attracted me to the left in the early, early days of my, like, just seeing, looking around and seeing politics, oh, this, is, this exists, and, like, figuring out who my tribe might be. It was the people who were paying attention to the suffering of the working class Americans, the ones who really get overlooked by everyone around them, and they don't have a chance to to better their it's really funny that a uh a channel whose name is a hillary clinton reference right and i don't know anything about these people but the best read i can get on them is, is like hillbots right they're having uh uh you know anna kasparian the tipster of turfs on and they're uh they've got a like hillary clinton reference as their uh as their channel name, right? It's really ironic for people like that to be like, yo, what do, why don't the Democrats care about the working class as much? Oh my God, oh my God, because people like Hillary Clinton use virtue signals, meaningless virtue signals, mind you, about uh, social uh, progressiveness as a way to distract from the fact that their policies are 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 far are 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 right wing are are like neoliberal when it comes to um economics right that they are not in fact on the sides of workers and they have not been uh, for a long time you know one of the nice things one one of the good things that i can say about joe biden and his administration which you know it's few and far between uh now is the the way their policies on on labor rights have been better than uh, both Obama's policies and what I anticipate would have been the policies of a Clinton administration had Hillary Clinton not failed against one of the most ridiculous ass clowns of a candidate in the the history of the American presidential elections, right? Trump is not a juggernaut. He is not a, a profoundly strong candidate. He's a profoundly weak candidate who came along at a time in which there was a sort of institutional capture on the uh, process of, of democratic primaries to, to the point where, you know, the person that, uh, you know, had the less energy behind her actually was able to win the election. Um, in the, in the exactly the wrong year, in a year where Americans were sick and tired of the establishment, somebody that reeks of the establishment got the nomination because ostensibly she had next. I mean, she had next back in 2008. She was supposed to be the president. She was supposed to be inevitable. Uh, but we had, you know, Barack Obama gifted order, um, a once in a lifetime, uh, you know, very charismatic uh, politician, somebody who a lot of people have said has a unique gift of being able to go into a room with people with very different, maybe even diametrically opposed political beliefs and convince both sides that he is on their side. He is secretly in agreement with uh, with them. Right. And and so we got Obama instead, which sadly was not that different than um you know, what a uh, what a Clinton administration would have been. But yeah, no, she definitely had set next in uh, in uh, 2016. And because of that, because of, of, of you know, the the way that the Democratic stab establishment like forced Hillary down people's throats. And also, I will grant because of some mistakes with the Bernie campaign, I, I, I you know, uh, but, you know, we, we, you know, we, it was, it was, we're with her or, or nothing. Right. And we, we, America ran with a profoundly weak um, Democratic candidate against a uh, profoundly weak uh, Republican candidate. And we found out that actually, yeah, the institutional uncharismatic shit sandwich of a, um, of a candidate uh, in, in Hillary Clinton in a year in which people were, you know, hated the establishment and wanted something new. Uh, indeed was able to lose to a profoundly uncharismatic, unpopular, um, you know, shithead of a candidate and Donald Trump. Because the every just the day to day reality is so difficult to manage. And one of those things that contributes to it is, yeah, the, the crime in the area, like whether or not they can depend on just just a general sense of safety and security when they're walking to work, you know, and, and mm -hmm. a, a broken window. There we go. A, a, a I don't even have to say it. Broken windows policing. There we go. Tried and failed policy that we're now going back to. Thanks to retrograde shitheads like Anna Kasparian. Car that gets broken into 
in a lower in a, in a working class family is you know it's it's a oh that's right i'm sorry i forgot that militarizing the fuck out of the police is exactly what lower class working class people want and need not higher wages not better housing not more affordable housing not anything like that no more fucking cops with 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 military grade equipment that's what we need real problem it can make your life really difficult if the car gets stolen if something horrible happens you you lose your transportation you're not going to be able to and, and why is that why is that it's because of the precarious nature with which the working class lives right why is something like the loss of a car so such a, such a you know something that you know essentially you know confines somebody to to poverty right it's because of the way the working class is treated it's because of goddamn capitalism it's because these people are having their labor extracted their their surplus labor extracted from them and it's making rich people richer that's why it's it's because they're getting fucked over on both ends in in terms of you know their their wage for their work is never going to be anywhere close to what they're actually producing the productivity of a worker right and the the you know obviously by the very nature of capitalism the price that you're paying for goods and services uh is going to be is going to be higher than what the value of those goods and services that you're getting are right you're getting fucked over on both ends that's why something like having your car stolen is so peaceful up here but now there are freaking communist invading radicals it's like an insurmountable obstacle for for people in the working class like question the fact that people are consigned to such a low level of living question question that but no instead we're talking about crime we're talking about more fucking tanks for cops that's gonna solve it taxi on your way to work that's very expensive it's it, those like day-to-day -day realities of working class americans i feel like are just just completely overlooked in some of the political commentariat of the left with the commentariat is more interested in the interests of Chat, we got the proletariat we got the uh -huh. Um, Omega Star, thank you for the uh, 199 super chat. Karen Brigade to the rescue, indeed. I mean, pretty much. Pretty much. The artists, you know, the artistic sort of bougie left, and that's the artists. What? That's the problem. Why I got into it. Um, so I, I, I've been the artistic bougie left. Yo, here's, here's what really sucks. All right. Art under capitalism. It fucking sucks. Who can make art? The idle rich. Yeah. Right. To make art, to go into a field, to practice, you know, a skill that's not like just getting like, it doesn't have like an obvious application in, in terms of, in an obvious path of, of, you know, um, you know, being able to afford basic necessities it in inherently is going to become the province of the idle wealthy of, of the trust fund kids. Right. Again, again, I, I, I would like I would point you to the fact that the, your problem is capitalism. Think that myself, your problem is not leftist um, Twitter freaks or, or whatever the fuck you think it is or artists. For a very long time and it's sad because i don't think the right is necessarily paying attention to these issues either it seems like sometimes yeah. it's more of a well s screw these guys they're not paying attention to the opioid yeah. epidemic but we are look at how right. much we care about the working class and you know maybe they do a little yeah, bit. yeah there's... my problem with the left i mean i'm sorry with the right is that it seems like they're more interested in using crime statistics or increasing crime for political brownie points like they exploit the issue for oh god yeah see here mark mars falcon is bringing up some points um, some good points that you're not going to hear in this discourse right according to the 2018 uh, report on good job by good job sorry uh, between january 20 uh, 2000 and january and uh 2018 walmart paid over 1.4 billion in fines and settlements over wage theft violations so you know i was talking earlier about your alienation for from your labor 
and the uh, dynamic of your, surp your surplus labor value being exploited, right? These are the things that become profits. When, when we're talking about profits, when we're talking about, you know, corporations and individuals making profits, they don't come from nowhere. They come from you being underpaid for what you're producing, and they come from you overpaying from what you're buying. But on top of that, on top of that, as if that wasn't bad enough, you've got companies like Walmart literally stealing the wages that they've agreed to pay people and, and just doing, you know, settling on it. At, at, you know, apparently that's more amenable uh, to them than actually paying people uh, what they agreed to. Uh, FedEx paid over 500 million during the same period. Whereas the left just wholesale denies that it's a reality. Mm -hmm. And when they're confronted by statistics and they have no choice but to acknowledge, OK, well, in some cities there is an increase in crime. They refuse to take any ownership of the failures of some of the reforms, including bail reform, which I think could work with some important and necessary tweaks. But they're just unwilling. But again, instead of doing a tweak, instead of taking a look at scalpel, that's what a tweak is, right? Making a precise cut and changing the policy just a little bit in order to fix some of the issues with it. Anna is taking a axe, a Patrick Bateman axe to the very concept of bail reform because she doesn't understand how political advocacy works. To, there's like this unwillingness to ever admit that anyone's wrong. And I think that it takes a lot of strength and courage to say, yeah, you know what? We tried this. It's not quite working. Yeah, we tried broken windows policing, right? Broken windows policing was going on during those periods of exceptionally high crime. Now, chat, I'm not going to be disingenuous enough. Like, I, I mean, I probably could. I could probably get away with it, right? If, if nobody knows better. But saying that, like, the, the necessarily the... um the levels of crime in the 70s, 80s and 90s are attributable to the like, in other words, I'm not going to make the claim that, you know, this this these policies actually, you know, created that uh, created the the you know, the the sort of crime wave that went on then. I, I think it's actually a very complicated uh, issue. I feel like the majority report, if you want to um, if you want to dig deep, if you want to dive into all the factors that might have made crime higher during those time periods, right? Uh, Majority Report has got a number of really great interviews um, going over exactly that subject, right? But I will say that I don't think it was effective. I, I, I don't think it was effective at all. And the one thing that would be effective would be taking some of that money, some of those bloated police budgets and directing some of that money into social services to make people's material conditions better, right? But we want to experiment with a few tweaks to see if we can get it to work. I think that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot to admire about that approach, but we're not seeing that. And, you know, to your to your point, Sarah, like the thing that drives me crazy is right now the left wing narrative is dominated by privileged people who tend to live in beautiful gated communities and are untouched. Anna, you're literally talking about yourself. You are literally fucking, you're sitting in a fabulous kitchen with marble countertops saying these words. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? They're insulated from the policies that they- Your ass is insulated. Your privileged ass is insulated. Push for, right? I mean, Rob Henderson calls it luxury beliefs, and I think it's a perfect way to think of it because- they get social capital from all of their- Oh my God, social capital! Peter Coffin, get in this chat right now! I don't know if that's where, uh, I don't know if Anna's been watching uh, Peter Coffin videos, but, you know, hey, hey, who knows? Maybe next it'll be MAGA communism. Maybe next she'll be like a, she'll be, she'll be a MAGA communist. She'll bring on Caleb Maupin and uh, Peter Coffin and Jackson Hinkle to- by advocating for these policies, but they don't suffer the brunt or the consequences of those policies. It's yeah. always working class people, people of color, marginalized people, the individuals they claim to give a damn about who suffer the consequences of their policies. And it really irritates me. Yeah. Well, you had an... We're being fed a narrative here.
Right, as much as we were being fed a narrative by Destiny in terms of uh, Daisy uh, on last week, last night's um, stream, we are being fed a narrative by Anna Kasparian. This is just a story. This is a just so story. Incident. You've talked about yeah. you were walking your dog and you were assaulted basically by two. Were they were they homeless guys or they seemed yeah. to be? Yeah. Uh, it yeah, doesn't yeah. matter because she's going to attack the unhoused regardless of, of who these guys were. It literally doesn't matter. It was a that was a life changing incident for me, not only due to what happened in that moment, but also what happened following that incident. So uh, for those who don't know, basically, I'm walking my dog. Uh, the sun is setting. My neighborhood's like a safe neighborhood. Like, I've never had any issues. But as I was bending over, uh, Queen Crimson asked me, what are your thoughts on guns and self-defense? Well, like, look, this is a complicated issue. All right. Uh, specifically because of law enforcement. So, like, as much as I hate the way that the United States leads the world in terms of things like mass shooter events, and as much as I relate that fact to our gun culture and the overabundance of guns in our society, right, I also recognize that we have a huge problem with law enforcement. What's our problem with law enforcement? Look at look at who does it, right? And look at how they police. Look at the communities that are over policed. Poor communities, black communities, and the then the communities that were that are that are under police. Well, you know, like we're not even talking about communities there. We're talking about like white collar crime that's uh, that's under policed, right? Or that's uh, that's under uh, that, that 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 people are getting away with, right? So you know, if you've got that situation where the police have a bias to look for crime in uh, you know communities of color, what are they going to do with something like you know what what are they going to do with something like uh, gun reform, right? And sadly, I think what they would do is they would heavily police uh, the possession of weapons by communities of color and heavily under police the uh, the uh, tr the guns on the uh, truck uh, rack of of uh, Jethro and Jim Bob, right? Uh, or even, I don't know, I even want to... <laughs> Like, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I feel, I feel like it just would, like, under this, com uh, under this current police regime, right? I, I don't think that, like, you know, this, this kind of gun reform uh, could work. Now, there probably are some proactive steps that could be taken that don't involve law enforcement and wouldn't result in, you know, like communities of color being disarmed and, uh, and, 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 you know, communities that are, are not seen as a threat to, law enforcement uh, being left alone, uh, there, there probably are things that we could do, but I think that that is something that gets overlooked by a lot of, um, by a lot of gun, uh, you know, reform advocates. But yeah, something does need to be done. It's fucking absolutely out of control. It's ridiculous that so much of the suffering and, and so much of the, you know, violent crime uh, in the United States is, is aggravated and enabled by um, just this these ridiculous interpretations of the second amendment up my dog's mess you know i had noticed that there were like these two guys who seemed kind of strung out walking toward me but it's not rare in la you just kind of ignore it and hopefully nothing happens something happened this time because as i was bending over one of these guys like grabbed my Ooh, good point and started thrusting at me alisa uh, says i live in a sanctuary city it's a migrant crisis because we've given texas all the money to handle the processing of individuals and they are sending these people yeah to cities that are not ready with no warning right on purpose to try to create a crisis to try to uh sell sell the narrative right that that um you know liberal cities are are the problem crime is out of control the you know the the liberal politicians who who granted they're not great people right like these are the same cities that are are not, are not doing uh, meaningful uh, policy to address the unaffordability of homes, the unaffordability, the the unfeasibility of people working in those cities where the jobs are at, to be able to also live in those cities. Yo, I am on it with these pauses. Look at this. Look at this freeze frame. God damn, I'm not even trying to do this, but there we go. There's that's like a 
That's a great freeze frame. He was so disgusting and he had like an erection and everything. And I had nothing on me. Like I had no pepper spray, no, no weapon, no taser. And, um, I felt so powerless. I didn't know what he was going to do next. Right. Cause you, there's two guys. They're both much bigger than me. I don't know what uh -huh. to do. And I'm scared. I'm alone. And, um, luckily he just stopped after thrusting at me several times. And then mm -hmm. they both laughed and walked away. And I, you know, it's like dehumanizing. I felt disgusted. I weirdly felt ashamed. <laughs> like, you know, I yeah. think a lot of victims of that kind of stuff feel ashamed. Like, but when I talked about it, people were mad at me for talking about it because, oh, well, this is going to stereotype homeless people. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, oh, you're being a Karen. Uh, again, like, I would ask you, like, what are... <sighs> Like, I feel like the way that you talk about it, like, it impacts whether uh, this is going to stereotype um, unhoused people. Or, you know, you're just talking about this because you want to give the perception that there's rising crime when in reality... I don't buy it either, chat. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Somebody comes forward with a story of uh, sexual assault. I do not buy that the left is going to tear them apart and call them a fucking Karen. Right? But I do think that it, it you know, if there's some, you know, implicit bias there... Right. It's, it's, there's, there's some jumping to conclusions about and, and, and some like laying of the blame on what the exist uh, on homeless people for existing. Then, yeah, you might get that kind of reaction. I, but I just don't believe that a description of, you know, you know like a sexual assault like that is going to result from a, was going to result with the kind of um, reaction that Anna's describing here. Everything is fine. And by the way, this was like a year where homicide rates spiked in in los angeles and it's like no that's pretty mm -hmm. sure there is rising crime mm -hmm. but uh you know the way leftists specifically reacted to that and anyone who wanted to draw attention to crime rates like that really really turned me off because it made me realize that for them it's just it's a cool little trend that they're involved in it's not really a political ideology that they're able to defend this sounds like vosh like the left is not your social club it's not a cool you know you think it's a cool little trend it's just a you know a trendy thing that yeah it's really cool to say a cab right i'm sure i'm sure it's really cool to get like <laughs> shadow banned on all social media for expressing uh leftist opinions yeah it's 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 the height of uh of coolness they're doing and uh in the meantime the lives of ordinary people are just kind of like disregarded yeah for their cute little trend do you think that they're doing it to signal to their friends that they're on the right side? Yes. Because it's a virtue signal. I knew it. I mean, we see this with the, the gender conversation, which is another thing you've been outspoken about. And the and gender I conversation. I feel like we touched on. Did we touch on it yet? We haven't really gotten into it, have we? So clearly has no clothes that there is no explanation for. Oh, my God. Was that a Janice Raymond? Was that a Janice Raymond? Um, so if you don't know, uh, Janice Raymond is like an old, old school turf, right? Who wrote a book called, I think, The Transsexual Empire? I think that's what it's called. I don't know, chat. I don't know. I know entirely too much about turfs. I do know that. Continuing this. I could be reaching. I could be reaching. Maybe it's just like, you know, just a phrase, just a phrase people use. Other than I just want my friends to think I'm a good person it's there's there's no excuse for it because it's completely illogical at this point we're getting the turf shakes so once i realized that there's no such thing as a leftist friend <laughs> i just didn't care anymore i mean i mean <laughs> that whole, whole hog i mean they don't have whole friends with each other or there's no like bull hog there's no, no, no there's it just can, cannot be a friend no such thing as a leftist friend they will backstab you they will turn on you it's a cult. Like if you are not ideologically the same in every regard, if you don't agree with them 100% of the time, like I love Jonathan Haidt's work because it it also kind of changed my perception or at least the way that I approach human behavior in. You are living under capitalist realism, Anna, right? You want to talk about a cult? You want to talk about an artificially manipulated Overton window? You want to you want to talk about alienated consciousness? You want to talk about how the way that people can more easily imagine the end of the world than they can the end of capitalism?
You want to talk about an unsustainable mode of production, which is driving this planet and the humans on it towards extinction? I would say that that's a cult. I would say that that's a death cult. In this realm. And the left scores so, so low in the- Oh my God, chat. We want to get to the Crystal Kyle and friends. So Thank like, you. You see all the infighting in the left. I think that's <sighs> part of the reason why. Like to me, there's all sorts of people on the I left. I wish they had this time stamped. That I am friends with, but I have some serious disagreements with, right? I would never in a million years go on my show. Okay, so some of their other guests, just to give you a sense of, you know, who they're uh, talking to, uh, it looks like Adam Carolla? A Adam Carolla. Go and be like, now I'm going to tear this person apart and tell you how they're an awful person. You shouldn't trust them. You know, I'm going to totally like dress them down. No, I, I, I have loyalty when it comes to my friends. And if we're going to have a disagreement, if there's a productive way that we can approach it and some someone or the audience can get something out of it, great. But I'm not going to do it, it in so this disgusting. Here, but now they're a freaking communist invading radicals. That's a thing. That's a thing. Communists invading radicals. Thank you for invading into my uh, chat. Today, Randy Greer. Like conflict obsessed way that i think is pretty indicative of what you're seeing on the left right now that's why they never get anything done and like do you, you have to build broad coalitions i'm just trying to imagine what kind of conversation they had with adam carolla things done they're not interested in that yeah at and all it seems like people on the right are so used to being reviled by the mainstream cultural establishment that they don't care like they don't expect mm -hmm like the head of the Museum of Modern Art to be their friend or to approve of them. They're they're used to everybody hating them, so they don't care. And they're they they're actually very welcoming. I mean, you know, but again, the, here's the problem that was like we've seen this with a lot of our friends in the heterodox space. Um, there's nothing that people the heterodox like. space. Oh, my God. There it is again. That's an IDW dog whistle. Not really a dog whistle. I don't think they're trying to hide it, but they're trying to make heterodox a thing. Right. It's it's like a woke centrism. Well, centrism, what's the right word? Enlightened centrism thing, right? This heterodox, like the heterodox thinking of, you know, I don't know. It's, it's cringe. Then, uh, it's, it's fish hook theory. Dis disenchanted, uh, disillusioned leftist, right? So they'll invite mm -hmm. you in happily and then, you know, sort of wait for you, you know, to see how far you're going to step in. Um, yeah, she literally didn't uh, let the birthing person thing uh, down for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Dissident right slash heterodox right. Yeah, you're on it, Shakespeare. You're on it. That's what that's, you know. So again, it's it's hard to know how to handle it. What is heterodox, right? It's a way of trying to say that your detractors, those that you disagree with, if you're Anna Kasparian, uh, people on the left are getting all of their viewpoints from the same source. And that you are not. You are heterodox. You are not confined to the uh, thinking patterns of, of one side or the other. It's, it's just enlightened centrist bullshit, right? It's just, it's IDW redux. Yeah, I just, I, I think the best way to handle it is to have a life outside of politics or news, you know, people who aren't interested in any of this stuff. And I have really close friends, a really great family, wonderful husband. Like, I feel very fortunate that I have a private life outside of TYT and politics and news. Unlike you, uh, online leftist, I touch grass. And they keep me grounded. So I'm not on the right. And so anyone who thinks that they're going to lure me into the right, I mean, they're going to get you know, a, a whiff of my politics when it comes. You're gonna get a whiff of something things like reproductive rights, and they're gonna be like, ah, never mind, never mind. But there are some areas where I think the right wing or some conservatives make decent points, and uh, I think we should listen to them. There are some areas where I think the left is right. I just don't really think I have a. Uh, LT9K says you don't have a life, Anna. Look, she would if she didn't let uh, leftists live uh, rent free. Like as much as as much as she's against uh, the, the the idea of squatting and, and has agreed with Ron DeSantis in uh, in his uh, in his policy. Right. She definitely is uh, allowing some uh, left wingers to uh, to squat in in her mind. A particular label at the moment. And I'm fine with that. And if I'd have to sum up my politics. Yeah, I'm somewhere on the left, but I definitely do not want to be referred to as a leftist. 
Mm. Yeah, there's something. That's okay, Anna. No one would mistake you for a leftist. Think about that. That's you were never a leftist. TYT was never about leftism. I would even question whether like the, the description of progressive is like, I mean, the best they were ever was lukewarm liberals friends thing. And I think that that's really good policy. That is this the TYT person? Yes. Yes. To have, just to have a life outside of political commentary. I think that that is probably that is just a good rule for everybody. Uh, and I, I, I discovered this really, really early on when I felt you know, I, oh, I'm making these new friends in this heterodox space. And then all of a sudden I started to get texts when I'd say something that. Oh God. Exactly. Uh, Jules, you might be uh, watching behind a little bit. Cause I said that a while ago, but yeah, I did say that uh, Anna Kasperian uh, at a very young age, like, right. was a role model uh, to uh, me. Right. She was like, like TYT, uh, Sam Cedar. Like the, these were some of the first political, um, you know, like a, uh, I guess you'd call it like independent, like political um, shows that that I, that I would watch. And and like because Jink Uger was actually like never good. Like, I don't know. I mean, like on some things, obviously, you know, Iraq war, he's against it generally that, that I don't disagree with that. Right. But there's so many bad takes that Jink would have that Anna would like, like people don't realize this, but the TYT has actually been transphobic for a really long time. In fact, I think you could make an argument that they were always transphobic. Um, the, back in the day, um, Jink used to regularly, like whenever a, a story about trans people came on, Jink would just get this disgusted look on his face and, and just be, just be a fucking asshole. But now there are freaking communists. Freaking communist invading radicals. What was the one about the, there was a cheerleading, um, I can't remember what it was. There was, there was some, there was some, uh, segment that they did about like, uh, let me see if I can find this T TYT cheerleader or something like that. But yeah, I mean, they, they, they've always been horrible. Like, you know, back in the day, they used to like do this like camel toe watch thing where they would like literally look for pictures where uh, people were showing some camel toe and they'd be like, oh, look at that camel toe. Oh, damn. Damn. That's some serious camel toe right there. Oh, that's like, let, let's look. Let's zoom in. Can we zoom in for that camel toe? That's a camel toe right there. That is what a camel toe looks like. They're just they're fucking trash and they've always been trash. And I feel like I just did not have the wherewithal to know uh, to notice that. And I just I hadn't seen anything like, you know, markedly better. I had very few like other than maybe the majority report. You know, it, 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 it wasn't, you know, kind enough to or compassionate enough to a specific worldview or perspective. It wasn't and then I started towing the heterodox line enough. Well, How is that mean, possible? It, well, this is like, these are people who, who it turns out are actually. The, OK, are you ready for a blast from the past? Uh, but I, I started to feel that like, oh, now I'm I'm emotionally invested. So in I don't know what this chick's name is, but I saw it independently on the Internet. When, I was like, oh, geez, I'm Lord mercy. At first, mm -hmm. I was wondering if uh, it was photoshopped, right? Uh, but it turns out it's not. She's real, right? What is up with their sound? Right? It looks photo. Where are their mics? This does not sound like a lavalier mic. Uh, this sounds like this sounds like the mic is like off stage. Anyway, sorry, I'll quit bitching about sound. I mean, her arms look unbelievable. Yeah, take a full screen on it. Yeah. Oh no. I mean, I would say those are some sick gains. And I heard there was a debate on this. There's no debate. I'm ending the debate. There's no debate. I don't have my gavel with me, but I'll use my fist. I mean, I'll end the debate right here and say that she's fucking awesome. Nine, nine, nine. No way. No way. No way. Not even close. No way. What? Like there's a Not debate. Not even a Like I I'd be worried that. She oh my God. We're worried about whether Jink is attracted to it. That's what cheerleaders should be thinking, right? Are you attractive to Jink Huger? Who's going to break something of mine during sex and and I'm much more worried that she's going to pull out a jammy. Wait, who said sex? Who, why, why are you like, who said you're having sex with this person? She actually doesn't. Oh, yeah, she does. Never mind. I was going to say she doesn't look so bad in that picture, but this one. Oh, she, no. Oh, there's there's an excellent chance. Oh, my God. Anna's in on it, too. What the fuck? No. OK, look. Now, granted, chat, like I will disclose in full disclosure, this was 12 years ago. OK, but I'm not showing you this to say that TYT it, can never get past uh, you know, they, they, can, they can never change their minds. They can never grow. They can never learn. Of course, people can grow and learn and, and change and evolve. But what I am saying 
is that like TYT just was never good in the first place. Like a lot, a lot of people like want to think that there was this like, golden era of, uh, you know, TYT is the home of the progressives, but it, it's just always been kind of trash. Here's the thing. I'm not I, th I think I just didn't notice. I'm gonna go quite Look as at far. how long her arms are. <laughs> I'm not going to go quite as far as you uh, have. I don't want to find out what's under that skirt. Okay, just go. <laughs> there we go. I don't want to find out what's under that skirt. No, okay, look. In a and as far as Jink being transphobic, this isn't even the worst of it, right? I, I don't know if these videos still uh, exist on their um, on their channel, but I, I can remember TYT segments that are just specifically Jink, like, going after trans people, just, just really in, in the grossest way possible. And I guess it was, like, acceptable at the time. I mean, you're talking about in the 2000 aughts. A very different, like, mentality, uh, you know, very different... Uh, <laughs> beliefs on 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 you know lgbt issues in general 11 months she actually increased the size of her arms by four inches so mm. there's a whole debate about whether or not she's taken steroids yes and um now there's this whole story about how she turned down a modeling contract with the fitness magazine or something uh -huh. because uh the fitness magazine would work wait sorry what's my what are my thoughts uh queen crimson is asking me uh what are my thoughts on uh xander hall's Xander Hall's abuse? I'm sorry, you're gonna have to be more specific. Um, is there is there like a... I would like to answer the question for you, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like abuse of Xander Hall or, or like abuse by... Uh, which, which old drama? Which, which old drama are we talking about? Her to take like legal steroids for the photo shoot, and uh -huh. she's like, "No, no, no! I don't want to do that to my body." But Are we sure this isn't Photoshop? That looks like the longest arm in the world. And right there, there's no way I would hook up with her. I think, no, no, no way, man! I don't want to find out what's going on up downstairs. Just calm down. You're being too mean. Look, there we go. I don't want to find out what's going on downstairs. She's so much larger than ever. If you work out too, uh, too, too effectively, apparently you grow a dick. Who knew? No, there's an issue, man. She's got a great stomach. How how large are her hands? No, I'm telling. What an asshole! What an like, he's literally being transphobic to a cis woman here. Funny, man. We're gonna find out something. I don't want to say anything. But first of you all, you guys were first, saying this well, woman first, is attractive. First, yeah, well, first of all, Jake is Jake. Acts like he's never seen a woman that's taller than 5'3 or something. Oh, okay. Like um, so, uh, Queen, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Are you talking about... Um, I, I feel like I've heard Xander Hall talk about uh, growing up and um, having experienced, you know, s some abuse, like, in his home life. Is that what we're, we're talking about? A lot of... T yeah. Um, no, I mean, I believe, um, I have no reason not to believe Xander Hall when he says he was abused, right? I don't agree with, there's, there's a lot that I disagree with Xander Hall about. Um, I, I, I don't think we've talked about him in a while. Um, I actually kind of felt bad for him in the whole Keffels drama because it just felt like he was getting, uh, yeah, like he was wrong about a lot and, uh, but, but yeah, um, I don't know if he deserved the the shit that that Kaffel's followers uh, put him through. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's a funny funny enough chat. Um, you might know that <laughs> this is embarrassing. Okay, this is very embarrassing, right? But I used to be a mod in Xander Hall's YouTube chat. All right, um, long time ago and far far away, uh, when <laughs> the very early inception of, of BreadTube. Um, I think I saw a video about Xander Hall where he's talking about his experience uh, getting sucked down the alt-right uh, pipeline, and I found it pretty compelling. Now, that's fucking cringe. Uh, if you know, like, there's a lot that Xander Hall's done since then that I have not agreed with. I've even, you know, uh, I, I've even, I feel like, been on the wrong side of a debate about, um, about Xander Hall. But as far as, like, abuse that he uh, suffered uh, when he was young, I, I have no reason to say that that you know, didn't happen. And I feel like anybody that's denying that, like, I, I don't, I don't even know where they're coming from. That's, that's ridiculous. You got seven ads. Damn it. Damn it. This is the thing with Twitch. This is the thing with Twitch, right? It's a very nice, cozy, comfy, like atmosphere to watch a stream in, right? It's got a lot of bells and whistles. You know, if you, uh, if you donate, like it, it makes cool, uh, noises and uh, like, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to like about Twitch, but yeah, one thing not to like about Twitch is the top of the hour Oh my god, I'm saying this to people who are not even watching me. I'm going to have to wait a minute 
uh, until uh, Twitch chat rejoins us to 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 talk to speak to that comment. The person that asked me the question about Xander Hall didn't even hear the fact that I have an embarrassing history of of maybe going too easy on uh, Xander Hall, and then you know, um, you know, he did some fucked up um shit to some friends of mine, and he did some fucked up shit to me, and. I, I very much uh, soured on, on Xander Hall. There's a, a lot of his takes uh, I don't particularly agree with. I've I've done videos, um, you know, uh, reacting to his content and uh, did not uh, did not like what he was saying in a lot of ways. But yeah, as far as his abuse, you know, absolutely. Like he's, uh, you know, it, it's it. I I, I don't uh, see any reason to uh, disbelieve him. I, and she hits the gym. I don't. I don't see the oh, crazy see. Jr. with the base fucking take. Jr. with the base take. I really wish that Jr. would just like do his own thing. I feel like. I feel like. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe Jr. is trash too, and I just don't know it. But um, I feel like. I feel like I've always liked. Um, the ads are still going. Wait, Queen Crimson, are you out of the ads yet? We got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. And I would usually like to talk about it before the ad break, not after the ad break. Uh, but at the top of the hour, there is indeed a three minute ad break on Twitch, right? Like I said, Twitch can has its bells and whistles. It's it's, you know, in some ways, uh, a, a, a luxury, um, you know, streaming uh, like, you know, a, a nice uh, you know streaming environment. But yeah, it's got that ad break. Um, they force uh, three uh, minutes of ads just to get you out of pre-roll ads, which would mean when you clicked on the stream, you would immediately be getting ads. So in order, in order to get out of that, we have to put up with uh, three minutes of ads. I have them all at the top of the hour to get them over with. Right. If you no longer want to see those ads. There are ways to get out of the possibly even for free, right? This is uh, I'm talking about a uh, Twitch, the, 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 the Twitch Prime program, right? If you've got Prime, you've got a free uh, sub to give to the streamer of your choice. If that happens to be me, you will no longer see ads in my chat. Also, um, you can uh, get out of the ad break for five dollars or possibly for free if you are lucky enough to be gifted a uh, sub, which that can happen. That does happen. Twitch has been doing way better as far as the gift subs go um, lately. Not so much today, but but normally. Right. So it's it's entirely possible that you could get gifted a um, a sub and get out of the ad break that way. But it's more likely if you're active in the chat, right, because that way people see that you uh, don't have a sub and they know that at the top of the hour, you're going to get that ad break uh, otherwise. Yeah, I see how you roll. What is, what is the thing? <laughs> now there are freaking communist invading radicals. Oh my God, communist invading radicals. Uh, Donald Wessels? That's awfully close to weasels. Yeah, that's one other thing I almost forgot to mention is like uh, when you get a sub on my channel on Twitch or you get a uh, membership on my channel on YouTube, that comes with weasels. Weasels are, you know, membership has its privileges and the privileges for us are spreading weasels. We like, look, I feel like we're a long way away from workers of the world uniting. I want to see that happen someday. But uh, for right now, we can concentrate maybe on weasels of the world uniting, on spreading the weasels, on giving more people weasels so that more people are able to spam weasels. Because it's 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 wholesome. Weasels are wholesome. All right. They are. um you know, creatures of lore, creatures of legend. Obviously, they don't exist in real life, but we love them anyway. They are part of our collective unconscious. They're part of the rich heritage of uh, of humanity, essentially. And we lo we love them for that. And we love that for them. Hazraid, what are you talking about? Oh, wait, it's an emote. It's an emote. I was like, Hazraid, never, never, never in a million years is 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 Hazraiding over here. But uh, anyway, I do like to steal a uh, part of his <laughs> part of his um, sub pitch because um, it's just so efficient. Uh, but yeah, this is TYT uh, back in the day, 12 years ago. I'm not showing this to own them or try to say that their opinions of 12 years ago are the same as their opinions of now. But honestly, when it comes to like trans issues. I don't see that much improvement. I don't see like like <laughs> I don't know, they weren't great about trans issues. Um, back in the day, you can see here, uh, Jink is 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 literally being transphobic to a cis woman for working out, right? Apparently, if you uh, if you if you work out too much, if you get those sick gains, you uh, you grow a penis at some point. I don't know. That's what uh, Jink seems to think. So yeah, he managed to be uh, transphobic to a cis woman. Here, uh, this is years and years ago. And if we flash forward to the present, we got Anna on a uh, on a turf podcast, be being a turf. Oh, wow. OK, so 
look, we're going to watch one more thing because we got to get to Crystal Kyle and Friends. She also talked to Crystal Kyle and Friends. But this one is the most replayed. Let's see why. This might be a turf moment. Who knows? They call that person racist, sexist, homophobe, whatever, one of the isms. And at first I was like, that doesn't happen. That's BS. And then I realized, oh my God, it definitely does happen. It happens all the time. It's Wait, what's she talking about? But what or disagree with, they tolerance on the left point that I had discounted previously, but have now fully accepted, which is to say that, you know, there's a certain flavor of intolerance on the left where if they look the 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 problem there is a certain flavor of intolerance on the left and it's the same unfortunately as the intolerance on the right right being a leftist doesn't mean that you're free from things like implicit bias and and, and we you know I, i'm having to deal with that every day um now like when i say implicit bias i'm not talking about somebody that is like you know, recognizes their own racism recognizes their own transphobia recognizes their own homophobia i'm talking about somebody who is those things without even realizing it right they don't smell their own shit and unfortunately yeah that happens on the left too that happens on the left too and there's a lot of people that want to make excuses uh for that kind of thing and i i suspect that we're about to hear those excuses from anna not everyone but some slice of the left if they hear perspectives they don't like or disagree with they just try to shut shut it down by discrediting the person saying it. And they call that person racist, sexist, homophobe, whatever, one of the isms. And at first I was like, that doesn't happen, that's BS. And then I realized, oh my God, it definitely does happen. It happens all the time. It's a great way to censor people who are saying things that you disagree with and don't wanna hear. And so he was right about that. So why did you- So in other words, like uh, forcing the label of woman on uh, trans guys or, or non-binary people when we're talking about things like childbirth. I guess that's not really transphobia. It's just these bad faith leftists that are calling poor Anna transphobic in order to cast an ad hominem on her and not have to deal with her high level ideas. That's that's what we're getting from this. That didn't happen just because it hadn't happened to you because you were so clearly on the left talking to other leftists. Probably. I mean, yeah, I just I I had not experienced it. But I mean, they got way more like 71K views for this video, 2.7K views for Adam Carolla. And that was afterwards. Wow. Adam Carolla sucks. Nobody gives a fuck what he thinks. Importantly, I hadn't. Everybody's here for Anna. Come across a situation in which I felt that someone was saying something that was true. Until birthing and, persons. Uh, they were attacked unfairly mm. uh, because they were saying something that was difficult to hear, but was true. And then all of a sudden I came across a flood of stories that made it abundantly clear that that is what's happening. Um, I think that, look, I became a paid subscriber uh, after you guys had the race to dinner ladies on <laughs> I, that was a fine that, fine piece uh, of uh, journalism on the, yeah that was, everybody's no, but, part. It was, but it was it was i know that you guys probably think it wasn't it totally was that was such an eye-opener for me and i was like i gotta i gotta be a paid subscriber this is incredible oh. i couldn't couldn't believe how they handled themselves in that interview that was, was our first time on video ever <laughs> i it was such a i there there was white woman tears afterward because the technical there was such a technical it was a shit it was, show too it was it our was, first oh time God. ever was, doing it on video and uh it was all megan's fault too it was totally was, my fault i did yeah. not have I, I immediately went out and had to buy a new computer like, that's what gave them the opportunity yeah. though because there was like in between there uh, okay so what else we got here we got another little minor bump here you were feeling about things around that time i would probably watch some of my videos from that me too era and maybe cringe at some of them i think that i got kind of wrapped up in taking i guess grouping everything together as sexual misconduct and then there was one piece that woke me up and i was really happy that we had the guts to push anna what about the sexual misconduct that one jimmy Dore displayed that, that a lot of people over on his side of things uh you know have, have completely denied like right jimmy Dore got really weird uh towards 
uh anna and and started making comments on her like outfit and shit like that i, I don't know what she's trying to do here but uh she's definitely uh not getting picked anyway uh crystal kyle and friends crystal with a k kyle with a k and friends and the friends are anna kasparian I, I'm, I wish we had more time for a special place in hell, but I feel like we've uh, feel like we've spent enough time in hell already. Wait, is there only this one little uh, clip? Wait, so OK, so uh, AC, are you in the chat? We've got we've got, you know, this like eight minute clip. I have a feel there must be more. Uh, it might be paywalled, right? I know that they have a lot of paywalled uh, content, so. A lot of people are going to a more and more paywalled uh, model uh, these days just because it's so hard in the creator in the creator economy to, to fund, um, you know, something like right to, to, you know, like look at the price of an SM7B. It's ridiculously high. Look at the price of, you know, just like maintaining a, a roof over your uh, head in order to be able to do content day after day. So. Um, yeah, I hope to not have to uh, paywall. I hate paywalling my content. I hate the idea that some of my biggest supporters, who are the people that don't have the money to be able to pay uh, at all, uh, would get would be denied, uh, you know, some of my best content uh, just because they they don't have uh, the, the ability to contribute to me financially. That's why I always try to make sure that there's a way in for people that are are not uh, you know able to be uh, subs or, or members or anything like that. Like I, I never want to shut the door in somebody's face, but yeah, I that might we might just be victims of the paywall here, right? All we got is Anna Kasparian sounds off on Ben Shapiro versus Candace Owens. I am sure that they talked about more than that. What are we live? Let's like try live. Uh, one year ago, so it's not there. Yeah, it's got to be. This is this is this or nothing, unless somebody wants to. Uh, Unless somebody wants to send me a link of the type that, you know, Trump has also trafficked in at times is fine as long as it isn't directed at the state of Israel. Oh, geez. OK, let's rewind. I'm curious your thoughts on the whole Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens thing. I know you have debated Ben in the past. You, you know, Ben. So that might give you maybe a little bit of a different perspective from somebody like me who sort of mocks on him and shits on him regularly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. just to get just to catch everybody up on the gist of it. So Candace Owens. I mean, she was defending Kanye West back when he was having his outright Nazi meltdown when he, you know, and mm -hmm. still is. He up said, to I'm, today. I'm going DEFCON. Uh, good on vibes to you, too, DJ the Jews or whatever he said. And Candace was like, well, do we really know what he means? Like, was, <laughs> then, you know, Candace also had that very famous thing that she said about like, well, you know, Hitler, if he was just trying to make Germany great, that's fine. The problem is that he was like, oh, oh. hey, this is a preview. This is a preview. This really works well for me to be able to talk about the uh, next thing that I'll be talking about. I think my next stream is on Tuesday, right? So I'll be back on Tuesday. I'm going to try to take uh, Monday off. There's some stuff I need to do in real life as well as for the stream, right? So I'm going to take a little bit of a tech day and a little bit of a, uh, you know, real world day, uh, you know, and uh, but uh, I'll be back on Tuesday. We may very well have the Ben Shapiro versus Candace Owens debate by then. Uh, ben Shapiro was trying to set this up for Monday, right? I don't know if that'll happen. I know that Candace Owens said that she was in uh, the UK and that she thought that Ben Shapiro specifically, you know, he wanted to do it in the Daily Wire studios. Uh, she has offered to meet him on neutral ground at the uh, Patrick Bet uh, David show. I'm not sure that actually is neutral ground, but I do suspect that they'll figure out something because God damn the ratings for that. The numbers would be through the roof, right? That would be a huge windfall for both of those. And um because it was we may have that to cover now there are freaking, freaking communists invading radicals you love to hear it you love to hear it uh can we finish this clip on tuesday wait why because it was so peaceful up here yo so two communists invading radicals. invading radicals yo thank you for uh following for for, for subbing on youtube i always get it mixed up because subs on uh twitch are like paid like they're the same as memberships on youtube and uh follows on t there's no such thing as following on on YouTube, but any anyway, I always want to call uh, the uh, the YouTube uh, like. I always want to call. Wait, what is it? I always want to. I, I get mixed up, right? Between anyway. Then he went outside of his borders. It's like I don't think yeah. that's the problem with Hitler. If I, like I, I don't think that's it. But um, so back then though, she would say those things, 
and you'd barely get a peep out of Ben Shapiro. And it would be like, yeah, she's a host on the Daily Wire, free speech. What are we going to do? Like, hands off. Let's go here. But then now, recently, she's become more and more vocal. She brought on a rabbi to debate the rabbi. The rabbi accused her of anti-Semitism. She's had a beef with Rabbi Shmuley. But at this point, honestly, who hasn't had a beef with Rabbi Shmuley? Mm, rabbi Shmuley's the right. most annoying man on the planet. Um, uh, Chad, I feel like I could get a beef with Rabbi Shmuley. Also, yeah, well, thanks for the subscription. Uh, thanks for subscribing, Richard uh, Moonster. And uh, thank you, uh, Doge Landison, Landisman, uh, for uh, subscribing on YouTube it seems like there was a falling out we don't really know if she was fired or she left or it was mutual um but jeremy boring announced like you know we've ended our relationship or however he mm -hmm. phrased it what do you make of that do you look at that and say oh my gosh yeah i sent out the wrong signals yeah when i talk about the next stream that i'm going to be doing it sounds like i'm ending the stream uh yeah we're, we're not gonna no we're gonna we're gonna finish this we got a few more minutes before i turn into a pumpkin uh, I, I guess I would like anyway, I'm trying to like I, I'm trying to give you shorter uh, streams, uh, both for my own uh, benefit and me being able to do stuff behind the stream uh, scenes like uh, put out videos for you all. You all have not had a video in a really long time. I've just been grinding, grinding, grinding. And for me to be able to accomplish, uh, you know, real life uh, tasks uh, as as well. But like, it's just it's really hard as, as I've got a lot to say. I got a lot to say, but the, yeah, we've been doing okay. At least we're not going to go overtime, right? Like I did last night. Even if Candace is be was being anti-Semitic, you guys, when you hear some racist shit, you say free speech. So why would it be any different in this scenario? You should still give her a platform. Or do you look at that and you say... So yeah, here's my take on this, right? Uh, Candace Owens was a known quantity in terms of her anti-Semitism before she was hired by the Daily Wire. I think it's immensely hypocritical for the Daily Wire to try to... Uh, now say that like I mean that that like we didn't know she was anti-Semitic or like somehow that she wasn't anti-Semitic until recently. She's been anti-Semitic. She has been going more mask off. Maybe you know that like I, I think most likely though like her fate was sealed when she brought uh, Norman Finkelstein on to uh, to her platform to talk about Gaza. Now that being said, Chad, I don't think that Candace Owens like did that for. The right reasons it sounds to me like she wanted out of her contract too. uh ben shapiro might have been referred to as the cool kids philosopher back in the day but unfortunately on the right the new cool kids philosopher is nick fuentes the energy is with nick fuentes and the groipers and uh ben shapiro is decidedly uncool in no small part due to his Jewish identity, right? The right is becoming more and more um, openly anti-Semitic. And uh, that's, uh, you know, Candace is, is reading the writing on the wall. She doesn't want to be part of the Daily Wire. She doesn't want to be connected uh, to Ben Shapiro. She wants to be able to dunk on Ben Shapiro. So, yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot uh, at play there. I don't think that a lot of her support for Palestine is really uh, genuine. I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, if you actually look at what she's saying, she's not even like advocating that strongly for uh, Palestine. She's she's kind of her her take is just more of a fence sitting. Well, you know, October 7th was bad, but so is like what's like she's not she's giving kind of like a, you know, She's given to both sides. She's not really giving like strong support. So, but she's getting credit for it. Unfortunately, too many people, even people on the left are like, we got to hand it to Candace. We got to hand it. No, you don't have to hand it to Candace. You don't have to hand it to Alex Jones, right? Their, their support is not genuine. Jackson Hinkle too, right? These people are full of shit. Yeah, there are some things outside the Overton window and they should be outside the Overton window. So, you know, Ben has every right to do that and should do that. I actually have some interesting insight on this because I I keep I watch some conservative content creators uh, who are very small in terms of their audience and a lot of people don't know about them, but they're they're regular people and they just express what they genuinely think and it helps me to have a better idea of what trends are emerging within um, you know the conservatives within the Republican Party and one thing that was really fascinating to me is yet yeah, there's a lot of backlash toward Ben Shapiro for firing her, uh, even though I agree. I mean, she has absolutely said some pretty gross and anti-Semitic things in the past. I wish that she just focused on criticizing the Israeli government because she did have some moments of clarity where she had criticism. Like TYT is another example of this, right? They're getting so much credit right now for being on the right side in terms of Gaza when they took their sweet time to get there 
in the first place. They've uh, ridden the fence. You know, you've heard, um, you know, Jink have a, have a take essentially um, you know, like like a, against the uh, idea of, of Palestine uh, being free. In fact, chat, you want to know, like, I don't know if I'm going to cover this because this is spicy. It involves another content creator on the left, uh, on the left, too. But Cat Black um, was actually banned at least temporarily uh from live streaming on tiktok because it was so peaceful up here but now they're spence ream invading radicals thank you for the sub yeah we are we are swiftly uh growing chat we're at uh 2.4k now we're uh grow like I'm, I'm you know incredibly uh grateful uh to people uh for uh subscribing to the stream if nothing else than just for the uh the ego <laughs> factor of when i deal with other content creators and i have a higher uh sub count but um but yeah so uh cat black is at this event right and uh she's live streaming and uh people start chanting uh free palestine and apparently she gets banned from streaming on tiktok on tiktok on tiktok right supposedly the uh tiktok is the uh lefty uh the the, the hard left uh space that's uh that, that that's that's changing that's making all the children uh pro-palestine if you listen to people in uh the united states you know uh congress and, and senate but but yeah they ban you for uh for for having somebody else say uh free palestine on your stream but yeah that that being said like right i feel like uh tyt um, you know, and, and a lot of people are getting too much credit uh, for coming around to the right perspective on uh, Israel, Palestine, when they took a fucking long time getting there. And if you wanted to stop what was happening, if you wanted to stop the tens of thousands of deaths in Palestine, you needed to be on that shit and you needed to be in support of Palestine, regardless of the consequences from the beginning. And TYT was not there. Uh, you know, it, a lot of these people were not there. I thought TikTok was pro-Palestine. That's the, um, yeah, that's what people, yeah, the U.S. Congress uh, scared them into towing. Maybe that's what, that's what I'm thinking. We'll look into that. We'll look into that. And there's unfortunately another uh, controversy uh, with, with Cat Black involving a, a content creator that I, that I kind of like and respect, but uh, we'll, we'll have to take a look into that with no great pleasure, understand, right? For the government of Israel that I agree with. And I think she could have been an effective um, communicator if she focused on that. But I guess her anti-Semitism got in the way. And I don't begrudge Shapiro for just not being in favor of that and not wanting that. At Can you please at least call him out for knowing what the fuck was he for, for knowing what she was about when when they hired her? A media outlet that he co-founded, right? So. I understand where he's coming from, and I don't begrudge him for the decision he made at all. However, the fact that he made that decision, and let's keep it real, she was fired. Her last oh, yeah. the Daily Wire. Uh, uh, they Love Judas says a lot of content creators of color have been about free Palestine since day one, but white people don't have to care about. Yeah, I was just talking about this earlier in the Alex in the Alec Gunter uh, segment. The the fact that um, you know not only do you have a uh, debate with uh, with uh, the jubilee debate of uh white liberals versus uh, black conservatives which is you know slanted going to be inherently you know slanted in the favor of the black conservatives but you're also denying um the people who could speak up meaningfully against um a against those conservative uh black voices that being uh you know uh li like uh you know black leftist voices right that that aren't getting a platform that aren't getting noticed and instead we've got you know instead we got dj mule meets mr girl versus the the black conservatives which is a complete train wreck uh she signed off by saying i'll see you tomorrow so she was under the assumption that she would be back tomorrow to do another show and then all of a sudden she's gone um but in regard to what i'm hearing from conservative content creators who you know watch the daily wire you know there's a growing number of people of color who are now identifying as conservative. And now they're looking at the Daily Wire and they're like, wait a minute, you didn't have a problem with Candace Owens saying some pretty terrible yeah. things about black people, brown people. Yeah, good point. They love Judas. Muslims, yada, yada, you get the point. But the second she said things you didn't like about Israel. OK, OK. Her, right. All of a sudden, wow. your free speech absolutism doesn't matter 
It just falls by the wayside because you're so offended. And so they see it as, oh, Ben values Israelis more than Americans and is totally fine with Ho saying terrible things about Americans who might be, you know, politically minded, minded in a way that they don't like. But nonetheless, there's still various minority groups that, you know, Ho say terrible things about. And that's totally fine. It's totally above board. But once Candace criticizes the government of Israel, you get rid of her. Right. And that's the way that they see it, you know? Well, that's the way I see it, too. Because, I mean, yeah, the things she said about Hitler, no problem. The things she said mm -hmm. about Kanye, no problem. But then it's when she's critical of Israel, that's when suddenly she's fired. Because you're... You don't have to hand it to Candace for having a lukewarm, uh, you know, take that's that's compared to the mainstream media, you know, reads as somewhat uh, pro-Palestine, just in the same way as you don't have to hand it to Ben Shapiro or finally recognizing that, you know, Candace Owens is is anti-Semitic. And for all we know, you know, her firing might have had everything to do with her, uh, you know, statements uh, with her platforming of Norman Finkelstein and her, um, you know, statements on. Uh, on, uh, again, lukewarm, lukewarm support uh, for uh, for Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> wrong button wrong button we got back to the tyt uh clip from 12 years ago let me see if i can press the right button all right if he had a blanket across the board non-discrimination you can't say racist things about anybody and this was applied consistently and it was applied to candace you know as and when it occurred that's one thing but it does sort of speak to this weird dynamic on the right where mm -hmm. sort of like blatant anti-Semitism of the type that, you know, Trump has also trafficked in at times is fine as long as it do isn't directed at the state of Israel. Because then you also come in contact with actually the biggest supporters of the Netanyahu government as a demographic group in this country right now are not Jewish Americans. It's white evangelical Christians yes. who, of course, make up, you know, the most lockstep support for uh, Trump and a key and very influential part of the Republican base. So I think that's why you get this sort of weirdness where flirtation with out and out Nazis, you know, blatant anti-Semitic rhetoric, that's all right. Uh, got a question from Gaston in uh, YouTube Shorts. Uh, what is this? Uh, I believe the answer is it's the unknown. Moment you have a critique of the actual Israeli government that's where we draw the line. And the other piece with Shapiro that I think is a big problem for him is, you know, his platform, part of why it's so successful and why he's so wealthy is because his positioning as this like free speech warrior. And so that's fine if you're not that. But, you know, don't tell me about the Overton window when it comes to your platform, but then have a critique of the New York Times when there's a backlash over the Tom Cotton op-ed calling for, you know, military response to crush protesters. Like if you're a publisher and you've got your Overton window and you're allowed to do whatever you want, then you don't really have a voice. You don't have a say when it chat. It's the unknown. Comes to New York Times or NBC firing Ronna McDaniel or whatever other free speech controversy you want to bring up that he was on, you know, the quote unquote free speech side of. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, you should remain consistent, especially if you've been making this argument about the value. Oh, of great. Speech YouTube. For so, so long. But again, at the same time, it's just so fascinating that all of the, I mean, Candace Owens. There we go. Some of her worst anti-Semitic statements. Sorry, chat. Aren't even from this year. Like that's, that's right. the thing that's so mind blowing <laughs> right. about all of it, right? So, so, and, and look, I really do think. Okay, so surprisingly good take from. Uh, exceptions, I think. I do think that there are. Surpri surprisingly decent take from Anna Kasparian in uh, in this uh, Crystal and Kyle segment. It sounds like they had a larger interview uh, with her, a longer interview. And I don't know if we'll get that. I don't know if that's paywalled or, or what. Uh, but yeah, I guess. Few people who so far. There you go, YouTube shorts. I got the unknown for you, too. Have been consistent in their uh, free speech absolutism. I However, agree. I think. I think most people. What is Vosh on your screen for? It's the unknown. People who claim that they value free speech are full of it because the second the speech touches a sensitive, you know, a sensitive issue for them, all of a sudden, no, we want to, we want to silence them. You know, holding up a mirror to Anna, and we see Vosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that's Elon Musk syndrome. 
Or uh, yeah, what, was totally, it South yeah. Dakota that passed that, like, you know, here's the things that are anti-Semitism law? And it was like, I don't know. Somebody asked me, what is this? And like, that's I know the answer to that question. It's the unknown. Criticizing Israel. There was like 12 things on the list. Yeah. yeah. And Florida was doing so. Texas was doing some stuff. So, too. Well, Anti-BDS laws, too. Those are all. Yeah. Oh, my God. I know. I, the BDS laws, Absolutely. how are they constitutional? How are so those? they're actually not. They, are. They, they get slapped down when they go through the court system. They get slapped down pretty quickly. I know Abby Martin. So here's what I'm getting from this, right? There's a lot of Anna's viewpoints that Crystal and Kyle would be expected to push back on. Like, there's a lot of Anna's viewpoints that if they didn't push back on, uh, it, it would be, you know, It would be really problematic, but instead we're we're talking about it. It almost feels like to me, chat. This is the one segment where they didn't markedly disagree with Anna. I, I don't know. Does that does that come through? To court over, she was going to give a speech at some university, In Georgia. and they yeah. were like, "You got to sign this thing saying you won't criticize Israel." And she's like, "No." And then she took him to court play. one. Yeah. Hey, y'all, do me a favor, and there it is. Okay, so. Yeah, I don't know. It feels it feels like they're uploading the one clip uh, that's not going to make waves. It's not going to cause them an issue. Uh, you, we talk about access journalism sometimes here. Uh, if we ever get to go over the Matt Taibbi and Brianna Joy Gray uh, debate, we're going to be talking a lot about access uh, journalism. What I mean is journalists who go easy on a source in order to have access to that source. Um, I don't know if this is an issue of that. I am assuming that at some point in their conversation with Anna, they must have butted heads with Anna, but it sounds like they're keeping that behind the paywall. That that way there's no like, you know, riveting drama uh, from a, of a clip of them, uh, you know, calling Anna out for her, um, you know, turfy viewpoints or, uh, you know, bad takes on your tough on crime bullshit or any of the other shit. I, I don't know, though, for sure. I, I'm only guessing, uh, you know, Crystal and, and uh and, and and Kyle, I haven't heard a lot of, of bad shit from them uh, lately. I know that Kyle's, you know, had some some iffy uh, takes in the past and, and maybe Crystal, too. But um, recently, you know, not not so much. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I can't tell. I can't tell you for sure. Anyway. Um, we made it, chat. We made it. There we go. We got rid of the unknown. That's uh, if you don't know, the unknown is an evil uh, chocolate maker who lives in the walls, an evil chocolatier who lives in the walls. Uh, that being said, I mean, that's about it uh, for the coverage today. I want to thank uh, once again. All of my members on YouTube. Now, I am working on something for. Wait, is it not here? I'm working on something for uh, for Twitch and for uh, Patreon as well, but I, I did the. Um... Why am I not seeing this? There we go. Weasels of the world unite. That's what we're talking about, right? Uh, these are people that as of uh, as of sometime last week were supporting me on uh, on YouTube through uh, membership. Uh, membership has its privileges. The main privilege is the ability to post weasels and we want to get weasels in as many hands as we possibly can. Um, thank you to all of you who have either uh, become members yourself. 
or um, who have gifted weasels to other people. Uh, thank you also to uh, all those on Twitch who have become subs. And that's another way you can get weasels. The weasels on Twitch, like I said, it's kind of a premium experience over there in the the uh, emotes. They move around, right? They're animated, right? So if you want animated weasels, if you want weasel wigglers, oh my gosh, it's not showing up on. <laughs> Let me let me make sure that we're showing it on all um all screens right now. YouTube members, boom! There we go. Weasels of the world unite. Weasels of the world. Uh, but yeah, the weasels on Twitch they actually they actually wiggle around. Um, so that's pretty cool. If you want dancing weasels, um, get them on Twitch through becoming a sub, uh, through using a uh, Twitch Prime to get yourself a sub. Or uh, possibly even by being gifted a sub that can happen. That does happen. YouTube has been coming back. They have been mounting a comeback. I got to tell you, uh, though, uh, sorry, Twitch has been mounting a comeback. I got to tell you, though, it's going to be hard to overcome. Hard to overcome all the weasels over on, on YouTube, which of which there are many. And uh, thank you uh, to everybody who supports me there. Thank you to everybody who also who supports me on Patreon or uh, through uh, gifting to my throne account. Those links are down in the description as well as the direct donation uh, link. Uh, this you're, you're literally helping uh, me to be able to bring this to you uh, day after day, week after week, because yeah, um, otherwise, you know, like uh, otherwise I disappear and I turn into a pumpkin and it's really bad if I don't have, um, you know, enough money to make uh, ends meet. And you've been helping it happen. And uh, just I want to everybody to know how much I appreciate um, all of you who contribute to me in any way that you contribute, whether it be on Twitch, whether it be on YouTube, whether it be on Patreon, or whether it be by just hitting that like button, which is more powerful than anyone realizes. Yeah, that's 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 another way that we're going to spread the weasels, right, is with more likes, we get more views, more views equals more weasels, more weasels equals weasels of the world unite, weasels of the world unite equals one day workers of the world right but first we got to get that class consciousness because right now we're all stuck with our heads up our ass in capitalist realism and uh there's not a lot of uh there's not a lot of there's not an easy direction forward from that so we're trying to um spread class consciousness through weasels who knew who know like you know people say these are mythical creatures uh people say that class consciousness in this day and age is a mythical creatures people say that it's easier to conceive of the end of the world than it is to conceive of the end of capitalism. But I hope that one day we can make the weasels real and we can make. We can make the rich shake in their uh, designer boots. Anyway, uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Much love to everybody on Twitch, on YouTube, on YouTube shorts. I will be back on Tuesday unless something crucially important happens and necessitates me streaming on monday i'm going to try to take at least one day off um but yeah i should be back uh to you on tuesday um right now though i feel like wait how much time do i have left oh i got like 15 minutes i think we're good i think we're good uh let's give some love uh to wait a minute let me just make sure um Yeah, I think so. We're going to send uh, we're going to send you over to uh, Adrian Vixens. If you are uh, watching me on uh, Twitch, we're going to go over there. It looks like Adrian is playing some uh, Sea of Thieves, which I actually have chat. I don't want to get your hopes up. All right. But you might you might actually uh, I've, I've been invited a couple of times to play uh, Sea of Thieves with uh, Adrian and the rest of the crew at Transcend. I, I might actually. Uh, I might actually uh, show up. I, I might try to do that because I think I've got the so I've got the software. We can make it happen. I love playing uh, pirate games. So anyway, raid ahoy, ship ahoy, right? Raiding in to Adrian Vixens over on Twitch. Wait, is that happening? Did the raid hit? Oh my god, I'm supposed to give them. Did that work? Oh, I should have waited for more people to get in. I'm sorry if you didn't get raided in. I'm sorry if I didn't give you enough time. Oh my god. Oh no, oh no, oh no, chat. What is that? What is that? It's the unknown. 
It worked, yes. It Welcome in. Eat, pizza. Thank you so much for the raid. That's me talking to Mel. That's what a long time ago. Mel blocks me now. I don't know. Audio is weird. Like, I don't know. It's probably my fault, chat. It's probably my fault. Anyway, no hate to Mel. No hate to anyone. All of um, but of yeah, that's the clip that played. It's that's the clip little, that played. Yeah, that's forever it's, ago. It's, it is all a little janky. <laughs> I made the mistake of like letting uh, you know Shark three hundred zero get in to uh, debate Mel, and I feel like Shark was a little bad faith. That's probably what uh, you know pissed. Uh, pissed her off so anyway uh you live and you learn and you realize that uh you know people like uh shark zero three oh zero who used to be a friend of mine are not as uh not as nice as they seem unfortunately anyway enough chat go enjoy adrian uh vixen on uh twitch or uh, whatever you got planned for your night and i will see you